Yeah. All right, XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington, not here. Uh, it's the best of. You've been voting in all week, sending your emails. So here's the clips that you wanted. So let's take us back a few steps, Carl. What, what's, what's the story? Right, so I did some research. Right. Let, let's just recap again. The guy, there was a guy you read about who had his head chopped off, he was guillotined. Yeah. He had said to the people around him, Count I'm blinks. going to blink once I've had my head cut off. So the brain life, can still. Or the brain yeah. can continue to work after, yeah. after yeah. death. Okay, so yeah, we queried that. So you, you weren't having any of it? Well, no, possibly for a few seconds till the, the oxygen stops being fed to the cells because the blood has drained away. But, you know, no, nothing spectacular. So right, go on. Well, along the similar sort of lines, right? This is quite a few years ago. Um, this fella sort of upset the royal family doing something, right? Uh -huh. So they said that this isn't good. It wasn't Ben Outen at that Jubilee thing, was I it? Can't, I can't remember really what it was. And they said, right, <laughs> that was terrible. We're yeah. going to, uh, we're going to cut your head off. Um, you know, oh. you gotta, you gotta show people that you can't be doing what you've been doing. What was this, in the, the 1970s? <laughs> <laughs> what what you said a couple years ago, you mean maybe sort of... Was it the olden days when the phones weren't very good? Ages ago. Yeah. It was ages ago, so. So, um, so, so yeah, fair yeah. enough. Yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> very philosophical. <laughs> yeah, imagine that yeah. when you were near story. Yeah, this was enough. literally ages ago. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, go Simon Sharma's History of Britain. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so, and even before that, which is young, <laughs> yeah. before, when it was all mental and different. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Carl, go on. So he's having his head cut off and he's, but no, he's resigned to it. It's, it's the day before, he's kind of got it into his head now that I'm not gonna have my head, uh, much longer. Sure. So he said, let's, let's make use of this. Yeah. <laughs> He said, uh, <laughs> I wonder how long, like, the body can stay alive yeah. without the head on it, <laughs> right? So they were like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, who were? So, the jailers? <laughs> whoever he was. The asking. These jailers with one eye. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. get that. Time. So he said, no, well, wait a minute, I've got an interesting scientific experiment, jailer. Well, yeah. fair enough. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, he said, what I want to do, right? He said, um, you know, surely it's, it's my last right. You know, I'm gonna mm. be I'm gonna be dead tomorrow. Sure. So um, let's he do didn't a test. draw it out this long, did he? Yeah, and he said let, let's 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 test this out. You know, okay, he said do yeah. us a favour. He said you know it's my last day. Um, what I want you to do is you're gonna cut my head off. Let's put a white line on the floor, right? And see if you know because there's no point asking how far he can sort of walk without an head if there isn't a line because you, you don't know what to count do you know what i mean if it's just if he loses his head and he's running around all over the place you can't yeah, really count that's that. not impressive enough yeah so so they said let's make a white line sure yeah who said this he did all they did i think they started to join in with him and say well let's make yeah. this a yeah. sure you can say go on so uh, <laughs> so they got norris mcwurry there <laughs> <laughs> the guinness people oh yeah, yeah. so they said Let's get this white line. Yeah. And, uh, Dedication's all he needs. We'll, we'll do this. We'll do this tomorrow. He said, "All right, then, yeah. I'll see you in the morning." Yeah. See you in the morning. I'll see you in the morning. <laughs> night, night. Sleep tight. <laughs> bye, bye. Uh, I love the fact that God knows exactly what was said. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. He doesn't know the story yeah. or what order it's in yeah. or when but it he was. Knows exactly what was said. Is what, but he knows the interview. <laughs> all right, then. See you in the morning. <laughs> bye. Little kissy, kissy, kissy. <laughs> oh, I'm not. I'm not like that. Oh, you joker. Oh, don't let the bed bugs work. Yeah. Anyway. So uh, he gets up. Do you want a paper yeah. tomorrow? No, I'm all right. Go on. He gets up mm. and they say, right, you know, today's the day and that. And he said, well, you know, I've got, <laughs> got used to the idea. So yeah. here's, here's a white line for you. Got <laughs> used to the idea. <laughs> go on. So, uh, so they go, right, are you ready then? And he said, I go on. And they cut his head off. And the body walked 32 steps without a head. <laughs> wow. 32 steps. Incredible. And that's, that's, that's the lesson, really. Did it get as far as the it walked along the white line, did it? Yeah, it stayed along the white line, did 32 steps, and then started to stumble a bit, and it just fell over. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, you know, it was a test that your body can still keep alive for a little bit. Yeah. When, when you've lost your head. Absolute twaddle. <laughs> Absolute twaddle. <laughs> what, what do you reckon you can do, then, without an head? <laughs> how, how many steps? Nothing. There'd be muscular spasm, right? Yeah. It would twitch a bit. It would, yeah. You could not distinctly take 32 steps. Mm -hmm. The body could- well don't- Yeah. Yeah. Ah, is yeah. the doctor still on the line? Yeah. The fellow that bought six parrots. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you could have 32 steps. Right, so, so you don't believe that- doing a bit of line dancing. Right, you don't believe that, but something that you do believe that a cockroach can live a week without an head. It can. Hmm. Slightly different. Slightly different kettle of fish there. Why? Well, mm, insect to 
uh, human, <laughs> is is, the, is what I'm thinking. Yeah, that difference. There's not that much difference in well, some instances. Do you know that a snake has a heart and lungs and kidneys and stuff? Go on. No, well, I'm just saying. So? You're making out as if, like, they're a totally different, like, species. <laughs> I am. I am making that. I mean, call me old-fashioned. Do you know what you're talking about? Though? I don't want you embarrassing yourself, Rick. <laughs> yeah, I am suggesting they're totally different beings. Yeah, that is. Yeah. Um, now, Carl, uh, the, the the cockroach is is a very different thing. The interesting there is that it lives. It lives by its head because a lot of it's on. Uh, 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 that there's some of them are phototropic, chemotropic. Some of them just literally have uh, irritation and muscle memory. I mean, they do have a central nervous system, but it, it, it's it's very different. So if you lose the head, it bypasses a lot of that anyway. All this is running around. The reason it dies is because it can't take on water. But it's very different to a man, <laughs> right, having consciousness and then losing that. And the body's still going, no, I remember, I think I remember what I was going to do here. Yeah, so I'm going to carefully walk 32 line. steps along this white line. I imagine he's looking down going, oh, missed a bit. Yeah. Um, maybe the head was in the corner going, left, <laughs> yeah. left, yeah, <laughs> left, oh, he's not, oh. Well, let's just put it out. I mean, if, if, if anyone listening has, uh, has maybe had a relative <laughs> beheaded, maybe in a ho horrendous car accident, <laughs> but they got up, maybe they, they went for a walk, uh, they, you know, they, they, they had a little chat before oh, they passed dear, on. Carl. Get in touch. You know, oh, get, Carl, you, 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 you are my favourite being. You are my favourite species. Now, you, Carl, may not be particularly different genetically <laughs> from a cockroach. <laughs> <laughs> you are. Why do cockroaches speaking. do that? Why are you ever made them? Get when? Let's play a record. Do you know what? When I told him this, like, I send him little facts on text messages just to inflame his, you know, interest. I just sent him a cockroach can live for nine days without its head. Mm. He texted back, "What's the point of that?" Yeah. What's the point? They're of that? not doing experiments. These cockroaches. <laughs> <laughs> it's a boring last week to have. <laughs> <laughs> And he went, oh, I'm top of all that, you're thirsty. <laughs> so yeah. it's the worst week of your life, isn't it? That week without your head. It's XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Jamais, with me Stephen Merch. Hello. Uh, you're listening to the best of, basically, Carl Bilkington. <laughs> Carl's all flustered because there isn't a, a, a record set up and he's getting all tizzy. He's been more worried about his competitions and sorting out putting records on, ready. Uh, what? I'm, I'm asked to start Steve's song for a love. Well, I'll tell you what, you, uh, why didn't you carry on with your, uh, educating Ricky section? I'll have a look on the, uh, on the CD. We'll keep it going, Steve. Yeah, Cover. you can go, go on. Go on then, right, okay. We've right. had, uh, we've had a, a few emails. Uh, anyone got it right, Carl? Anyone um, got it right? Yeah, Ricky, educating Ricky, that's the final one. We've got to get that out of the way. We've got to get Rockbusters as well, then. Go on, then. We've only got five minutes left. Come on, just oh, do yeah. educating Ricky. Right. Oh, God. The, uh, the last one that we haven't done right. is, um, he's a bit of a nuisance. Go on, then. Um, again, not, not really, not really that interesting. Thanks. Um, no, like, again, I talk, spoke to him in the week and he had much better things, like when I told you about Brian Blessed climbing Everest. And for some reason, it made him uh, it, uh, played havoc with his belly, and what? he followed through, and he had to clean up. Shut using, himself. Yeah, using um, using ice and stuff. Why are you telling? Why are you telling me that Brian Blessed? What? Wh in what way is telling me that Brian Blessed shit himself once in any way educational? Because I was saying how he, he, he was climbing Everest, right? Right. I'd give it to him. He's an actor and that, but he, he gave that a go. Yeah. Right. He played. What's the know, point of that? You'd say, wouldn't you? You'd say, God, he's, he's, you know, he's Oh, good. so he's all right. Uh, me, me doing the boxing match, there's no reason he's rubbish, but him climbing Everest and shitting himself... Yeah, he did is, that. ...is commendable. Right, and he's only gonna, like, go and do it again. He's gonna climb it again. Yeah, but he might not shit himself this time. Yeah, what's the point in going? Nothing's changed up there. <laughs> yeah, it could <laughs> probably, yeah, it could, been? Well, it has. They've probably, uh, have uh, probably cleared uh, out by now. Right, but, uh, <laughs> it, it slip on it. I can't really go just telling you this one, cos- Come on! To just do it, or do it now! Steve, how we doing? Look, no, no, never mind that. Look, just tell me what that means! Uh, oh, he's a nuisance. Oh, this is so annoying, Carl. I'm gonna go mental. Right, Talk. Right, right, listen, I'm just putting right. this in here, right? Right, nuisance is a bit of a nuisance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently, yeah. the old fella who used to hang people- <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He used to be able to tell somebody's weight just by looking at them. Right? Um, that's a bit of a bonus fact. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be the judge of that. The, the, thing, the thing that I wanted to tell you yeah. is, um, money for old rope, do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I can't, even, I can't even be bothered. <laughs> yes, you're gonna tell me now. Come on, Carl. Well, I mean it. Basically, money for old rope yeah. came from the t right. What was all that about? 
not. He can tell someone's weight. What's <laughs> that for? Fact. And blind blessed, shitting himself. What are you? What? No, tell you. No, tell me that now. You nearly made me swear. Then just I'm getting really annoyed. <laughs> I'm getting really annoyed now. Tell me this fat girl. Or I'm gonna go mental. <laughs> Come on, girl. Time's running out. Not that people years ago when people used to be hung. Right? Right. If you didn't like the person who's been hung, you'd go, God, I really don't like him. And, to, and so you never forget the Because you wouldn't have being hung. We take that as red. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. So they never forget afterwards to get the hangman to get the rope and to cut it up into little pieces and he'd sell them. He'd sell a little piece of the rope to people. And See, that, so, Carl, that's the most interesting thing, if it's true, that you've come up with. Right. Okay. And so what's, what's, you, so they, they sell the rope. They sell the rope and it's money for old rope. Money for old rope. Meaning, like, you know, God, it's easy to make money, that, that all I have to do is cut it up and sell it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm cynical. <laughs> I'm not so convinced right, listen, though. We're, we're really tight, we haven't even got time for a last talk. We've got an ad break and we've got to give out. Okay, give business. your answers then. This is right. ridiculous. So, come Steve, on. Do you want to pick a winner? Uh, I've got oh. a winner when you give us the answers. Okay, so the first clue was uh, that army has got some well nice trenches. Yeah. That was DW. Who's that? Dandy Warholes. <laughs> It's brilliant. <laughs> it's brilliant. Right. It's good, yeah. Uh, the okay. second one. The top of them curtains are wrecked, all yeah. the material is worn. Yeah. HV, yeah. that's uh, Holly Valance. Oh, he got a phone call for what was saying, I haven't heard it. And she went, she was, he was talking to her off air, and she went, and what is it? Uh, someone says, oh, them curtains. She went, all right. She said, you know the thing around the top of the um, curtain is a palmet, not a valance? And he went, cut her off. Yeah, but. <laughs> My auntie's always making balances on everything. I'll tell you about that next week. Right? <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. Right. Is this the one that farted for five minutes? Yeah, yeah, the very same. <laughs> yeah. Right? So, we'll talk about that. Uh, I was in Texas, I tripped up, I landed on my knees in a puddle, WH. Yeah. Uh, wet knee Houston. Right? Wet knee Houston. Yeah. So, You're a maniac. So, who's a winner? We've got Pete, Catherine and Laura in Newcastle upon Tyne. They're listening uh, online, I assume. And uh, oh, they're going to get digital. There's great places. Remember, they've got loads of stuff. They've got uh, the DVD here. They've got Linda Green. They've got Stone Roses. They've got another compilation. And Executive Decision. What did you read about Brian Blessed? Is it actually true or have you uh, lied with no, someone it was else? An, it was an interview with him, innit? And what did he say? Oh, Come on, what did he say? He said I, I climbed Everest and uh, I played off it with me belly. Uh, Let's talk about it next week. We've really run out now. Oh, you're a fool. Email in your address. Um, Songs of Phrase. It's the mighty return of Songs of Phrase. No one has uh, requested that. It's uh. not, not, not due to public opinion. <laughs> 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 a lot of people have requested some swearing. They have indeed. But a lot, we had a lot of emails for that, but go on, Carl. And uh, <laughs> remind us again what exactly Songs of Phrase is and why we should care. It's just a phrase <laughs> that we take from the show, make up by taking words out of a song, edited it together. Right? The phrase that we're doing is no more cheeky freak of the week. No more cheeky freak it of the week. Sounds like this. No more cheeky freak of the week. <laughs> right? So. No, that's nigh on impossible. Play again. Got, you Play got again. Email I didn't in, hear that. You got to email in with all the songs that you can hear there. Right? There's, I think it's five songs. And we in just total. want the names of the songs? Yeah, that'll do. Okay. Alright. Do we just hear it again? No more cheeky freak of the Right. Yeah, it's it good. It's probably one of the best you've done. It's very tricky, though. There's a, I mean, uh, uh, that's not too tricky. Play it again. No more freak of the week. How many have you got? Do you think, Rick? Just uh, uh, well, I've I've noticed the same person singing twice. Is that a, right? In a band and solo. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, and I know one I track think, straight away from uh, the word. Can I just say I do think naming the, the songs is a bit tricky. Let's just name the artists. Is that right? Just the artists. Just, just the artists. Just change the rules slightly. Yeah. Um, before we play it again, just let you know what the prizes are. We've got on DVD later with Jules Holland louder. Lots of the alternative acts he's had on there. Um, Brilliant. A DVD. A couple of DVDs all, with Boogie Piano over the top. <laughs> Let's hope so. Brilliant. I can't. We can't Jason wait. Mary on this Stereophonics. We've got Sonic Youth, Ash, Hole, Queens of the Stone Age, Foo Fighters. Quite good. Um, once again, Cruise of the Gods on DVD, starring Rob Royden and Steve Coogan. That was on at Christmas. It's not bad. It's not the um, same one. They, they haven't been sending that back. <laughs> We've been giving out different ones each we week. Indeed. Uh, this is an album just called quite simply "I Love You," yeah. and you'll be pleased because there's the likes of Mel C, Cliff Richard, and the Hollies on there. Brilliant. Excellent. The best chill out album ever. We've got the Beach Boys on there. Obviously, Costello, Pink Floyd, Coldplay. That's not bad. And this is the one that's most interesting. I think the American Song Poem Anthology. I've not heard it yet, but apparently, I think what it is is an anthology of um, recordings that were made apparently in the, I think maybe 50s or 60s America. You could there was a particular organisation you could send in songs 
or lyrics that you'd written at home, and they would oh, send right. it to music and record it for you. And this is a compilation of them. So obviously, it's there's some quite uh, idiosyncratic and odd little things on there. I think it's probably worth a listen. So not bad prizes at all, Carl. Let's play it again. No more well, that's what we got. We started that going. Just the artists <laughs> then. Ricky dot Gervais at xfm dot co dot uk. Ricky dot Gervais at xfm dot co dot uk. Once more, Carl. No more See, we're just great. Yeah, not bad at all. <laughs> uh, Rick, um, I can tell you now <laughs> that the the answers to songs of phrase are quite literally dribbling in. <laughs> um, I think there's two, may maybe three answers so far. So we're uh, very excited about that. So, who's the winner? Answers, well, let's give us, give us the answers first. <laughs> right, well, this was, uh, rock, it it's, not, it's not rock, I'm calling it rock, but it's because no, I, well, I, I, no, I, well, it's always they're all interchangeable. Right, Paul McCartney, Cheeky Girls, Sugar Babes, Space and Beatles. Okay. Right? Brilliant. You've really, I mean, if you're not interested in it, Carl, <laughs> seriously, mate. Um, anyway, we're going to give the uh, prizes, which are pretty good this week, to uh, James Waters from Colchester. Well, we've got Songs of Phrase, right, haven't we? Songs of Phrase, then. Um, okay, let's uh, just have a look at the prizes. Let's just remind us again what exactly Songs of Phrase is, because I know a lot of people put it out of their mind week by week. It's a phrase that's, you know, been said on the show a few times, that mm -hmm. night. Oh, um, but you remember classics, like, uh... What was, what was, what was... We had hairy Chinese kid. Yeah, there's, there's this hairy Chinese kid. Stop squeezing me, head. Stop squeezing uh, me. Carl, you're an idiot. Carl, you're an idiot. Yeah. Uh, you know, some cl cl classic phrases. Some classic phrases. And so you use various old-time songs and you put them all together and that spells out the phrase. Uh, before we, uh, we, we play that, let me tell you now, you can win. <laughs> Look forward to this. What's this? The new album from the Star Spangles. That's called Bazooka. Is that out, is it? Never heard when's of it. When's Bazooka out? <laughs> never, never heard of it. Never heard of it. <laughs> uh, the best summer holiday album in the world ever. We've got th the treats on there include the Fast Food Rockers and oh. uh, Last Ketchup. Yeah. I'm waiting for their second single because I, I don't know what that's going to be about. Sure. <laughs> uh, uh, is it going to be more fast food? Maybe like Pret a Manger? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, lovely. Uh, this is very good. Yeah, two discs out, the best of David Bowie. Um, in Spiral Carpets, the best of them. Still don't know how they spin that over over three seasons. <laughs> no idea. Um, <laughs> Bowie's is one. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, we mentioned it last week, the American Song Poem Anthology. That's kind of a kooky collection of, uh, of songs. And uh, we've also got a couple of DVDs here. Stephen King's Rose Red. I've never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> Straight to video. <laughs> yeah, made for television. Yeah, yeah. And we'll never be seen at the cinema. And I know, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of nerdlingers listening, so they will be loving Richard Dean Anderson in Stargate SG-1. Yeah. Uh, free inside, there's a collector's card, plus you can win some exclusive memorabilia. Brilliant. So I think a pair of, uh, there Right, all you've got to do it. is listen to these, like, 13 songs, probably, <laughs> to write a well-known stupid phrase. It's only seven, seven different songs, right? Well, just get the most you can, just get me rough, artist or song, it do, it do, right? And the and phrase is, um, about me dad nicking from, uh, telephone boxes, right? You've got to give them a clue, because they've got to get, they've got to know what they're listening for. It's, it's hard enough when you know. Daddy's never gonna stop robbing from telephone box, is that it? Yeah. Right. So what are these, what are these songs then? Oh, go uh, on in. It doesn't matter that some people don't know what that's about, do they? Doesn't matter. No, they're not, they're not, well, well the, the your father's are, a thief. <laughs> email only, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Let's hear it. Alright. From... Alright. Also not, um, grammatically correct, <laughs> no. but, so it's... Daddy, Daddy, never gonna stop robbing from telephone box. <laughs> Rubbish. Unbelievable. Play again. We, oh. I think we just need the song. That's all we're after. Yeah, yeah. just the songs. Right. Just again. Well, this is a must. desperate feature. It isn't really it? is awful. See, Rick, if we took more of an interest in this show, we'd have come in, listened to that, we'd and said, said no way. We'd have said, no way I don't we care doing how long you spent on it. We've got a reputation. Yeah. We've won awards. We've won major awards. We're not putting that tat out. But, yeah, no. You know, we, that's what that's what. But happens. we're just giving the listener what they're used to. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, I think more fool them for listening. Ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Now then, uh, we were playing earlier Songs of Phrase. Um, we have had... I mean, the, the, a the, the answers, I could literally count on the fingers of one hand. <laughs> um, now, the right answers, 
Even less so. But, um, do you want to play it once more, Carl? Oh, God. Daddy, from there was uh, <clears throat> seven songs in there. Right. Read them out, go on. What are they? It was, uh... Oh, have you ever got it written down? No, I can remember them. Daddy Cool. Right? Bernie M. Bernie M. Yeah. Uh, Never Gonna... Give You from Up. Rick, Rick Astley. Astley. Yeah. Uh, Never Gonna... Um... Write them down! Stop. Sam Brown. I think right. Uh, Robin was, uh, Miss Robinson by Simon and Garfunkel. Mrs. Robinson. Yeah. Uh, hang on a minute. That's not Robin. Oh. From, From Russia with Love, Matt Monroe. Right. Telephone. Telephone hanging on the telephone, Blondie. Right. And then Box. Living in a box. By <laughs> living in, <laughs> in a box. Well, listen, no, Brilliant. I don't think anyone got them all right. No. If you did get them all right, I'm sorry, but I gave up checking the emails a long, long time ago. <laughs> so, um, I'm gonna give it... <laughs> I'm gonna give it to Michelle Flower, cos she got a few of them right. Yeah. Okay, so quiz time. I know everyone's been looking forward to this. Which quiz is well, it Well, we're gonna play along, because he's done, uh, Songs of Phrase, where he, uh, cuts up, um, uh, bits and pieces from, uh, uh records, you have to guess the title or the artist, and, uh, makes a well-known phrase, i.e. a phrase that we've said a lot, and, uh, the challenge is that me and Steve have got to try and work out what it is, as well, before we tell- we will tell you the phrase, but let me just see if I can guess. Play it. Tell me why, tell me why, tell me why. Right, I know what that is. I didn't hear it. Can you play it once right. more? For me? Right, <laughs> I know what that is. Right, it's why don't they play the game of swing ball? Because that's what he said when he turned on and saw people in wheelchairs playing tennis. <laughs> and his point was. Tell me why, tell me why, tell me why. <laughs> play the game of swing. <laughs> 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 Oh dear. <laughs> that is so naughty. This show's been a bit naughty, I think. I don't know what's happened to us. I think it's, it's like, um, sort of end of term sort of madness. But yeah. I think we've got to calm down here. We've been a bit naughty there. We've, uh, we said, you know, bloke with two dicks. We said Chinese people don't talk properly. Which is a little bit... Offensive. Yeah. You know what I mean, Carl? Well, they don't know. Right, okay, let's leave it now. Okay, stop there, Carl. Carl does not necessarily reflect the opinions of XFM or any yeah. other human being. If you think that me and Steve have been offensive, we are strongly behind the guise of irony, satire, and ignorance. Carl only has ignorance yeah. and yeah. hate. <laughs> <laughs> what do you make of the first genetically modified baby? Oh. Are you worried about this? Do you know what, what did they do? What? Oh. Let me see what it says here. It well, says, isn't it uh, just choosing, it, choosing the, you know, eye colour well, or- Well, this, this is the- this is the concern, isn't it? That in the future you'll be able to decide, uh, whether it's a boy or a girl, what- how intelligent it is, what it looks like, is it handsome, is it ugly? Obviously no one will choose an ugly baby, and so on and so on and so on. And so, it means that, you know, where will it lead? Where will it end, Carl? Are you concerned? I've thought about this a lot, cause- What will us three look like in the future? If listen. they're being, you know, genetically modified beautiful people, what will be- we be like? How will we be considered in That's society? True, yeah. But we've talked about this before, haven't we? About, uh, the cloning thing. Yeah. That's no, a bit weird. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> I don't think it matters because at the end of the day, right, you might look like some other kid, but it's the way you've brought that you brought up that will change your features and the way you are, you know, your personality. If you lie, you get a long nose, don't you? Well, no, well, listen, right, because I remember when when we, you know, I was growing up on this estate. This is gonna be good. Go on. No, no, it's not. It's just a, an example of how this doesn't work. Go on. So, so we don't need to worry, sort of thing. Sure. Right? Okay. So I'm growing up on this estate, and there was a there was this woman about four houses down, right? It's a bit rough. Right. Didn't fancy her. Oh God, no. Right, but she had a <laughs> baby. Well, tell me about her first. I'm interested in this woman. Why was she? It was a very. So, like, a man in a dress. I mean, I didn't grow up in a posh house or anything. And I'm sure. Not, I'm not saying that if you live in a bit of a rough house, mm. you're a bad person. What did she look like? But anyone can Tattoos? clean up. Look like make... Tony Green with a fag on. They didn't clean up much, right? Oh. Which, even if you've not got a lot of money, you can still try what, and make it place look nice. Yeah. Right. But she didn't, and. A kid used to take a horse into the house. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> whoa, 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 Neddy, whoa, whoa, Neddy. What do you mean a kid used to take a horse into the house? Where did he get a right? horse? Must have nicked it from somewhere. <laughs> Mustard on. Is using water? <laughs> no. What, is that from outside the saloon round the corner? Was <laughs> <laughs> it just tied up with a bit? Of... <laughs> right. I'm, um, oh, that's great. I did Big out. Jake. <laughs> I'm looking <laughs> for it. I, I been out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, sorry, let me get this. This was before the lynching stopped or. <laughs> <laughs> 
Where did he get a I'm, horse from? What do you mean he must have nicked it? His mum said, where'd you get that from? I bought it. All right, then. But we'll keep it out of the kitchen. I don't want you going Catelyn, rustling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where did he get a horse from, Carl? Just... And how long did he have it for? Until... Was he leading it or riding it? <laughs> Mum, open the door, I can't stop! I can't stop it! <laughs> open the patio door as well, I'll be... Looks like we got us a runaway! <laughs> what do you mean? I don't know, but the oh. thing is, they couldn't afford to buy one because they're not cheap. So I'm just guessing. Maybe that's wrong of me. But I think- He had a horse? Yeah, right, so- That's I, why the family didn't have any money, they'd spend it on the horse. No, I exactly. don't think, that's what I'm saying, I don't think they would have bought it. So anyway- Yeah, it's always to whisper, Carl, in case they're listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and They could not, be in the room next door. It's not buying it, it's keeping it as well. Oh, well, so, I, so I was like in the car with my dad, coming yeah. into the avenue, and you used to have to drive down it to turn round. And, yeah. Uh, and you know, sort of go back to, to our house. You had the traditional method of transport, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, the horse was in the lounge. <laughs> Reading a paper. Just, just like walking around. <laughs> oh God! This, what? And when I, when I was doing it, I, I tried to earn myself some money once by flogging little flowers in, in plastic cups. What? This right. is tri and genius. <laughs> it just keeps coming. What do you mean you're trying to flog little flowers? What do you mean? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Let's, let's play a record. Let's play a record and come back to this. Wait a minute, it's always going to just unravel and unravel. It's going to go on for hours. Let's play a track, Carl. It's deeper and deeper. It's like an onion, isn't it? We've created a whole world here where there's a man living with a horse. Just walking around the land. I come from the West Country. I've never heard anything like that. I just think of a big sort of like orange carpet and it's got a rediffusion telly and this horse going, I'm fed up in here. Exactly. This is really. I am not taking the rubbish out again. Yeah. Right, play a record. Let's have uh, Velvet Underground. We've got that lined up. Oh, right yeah, God. the classic from the first album. Uh, I'm waiting for the man. Let's come back to the horse in a second. Little flowers in pots. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh. Classic first album, Velvet Underground and Nico, which apparently peaked at a disappointing 171 in the US charts. Think of that. And that's obviously Louis de Velvet Underground and uh, Waiting for the Man. Yeah, great track. So we were talking, uh, we were doing White Van Man, and uh, we got on to. Uh, um, we got on to genetically, uh, genetically modified babies. But and somehow then Paul started telling a story about someone with a horse. And then he got onto. He was trying to make money selling flowers. Just do the flowers. Briefly. Well, hang on. I just want to recap slightly. So there was a family, and who had the horse in the family? It was because you lived on a, an estate in Manchester. The, so the, yeah. the mother, the mother was a right pig, apparently. Well, I don't know if that's relevant. You don't need to go that far. But, but you. But well, well, what I'm trying to do is like make a picture for you so you understand. What, what, what a picture like? it is. Who did she look like? Um, bit of a. I know this respect to her. <laughs> bit like Pauline Quirk. <laughs> Quirky, yeah. <laughs> Right. Okay. I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. I knew it was going to be poor. Did you have any tats? Did you have any tats? I never got that close to it. Okay, alright. So, and so who had the horse? Was this her son or her no, husband? No, her, her daughter. Her daughter had stolen a horse? Yeah, from I don't know where. There was a, I think it was some stables down the road or something. And they, they kept the horse in the house with them? They kept it in the house. Did they, they get didn't caught? have it for long. No. So, and you said you were in the house one day and you saw the no, horse No, no, what happened was I was, um, they did this thing at school about raising money for charity. Right? For some local charity. And they said you can do anything to, to raise money. And they came out with all these ideas and I thought, that's good. What was the charity? Well, forget, well I don't know. I thought, forget the charity. Yeah, that's I'm just a the good money making either. over so, <laughs> You're a charity. So, um, <laughs> so I asked my mum for some, uh, cause she used to have a lot of flowers around the house. Sure. I said, can I just take some snippings of them? And, uh, I'll go and buy some plastic cups. And, uh, got some soil out of the garden. Planted the, the, the bits of plants in them. Yeah. Got a tray. Yeah. Had about 25 plants on it, selling yeah. them for 25 pence each. Excellent. Did you sell any? Yeah, so loads. Did, they, did you just cut, you didn't just cut them and stick them in yeah, the soil? Yeah, they wanted to survive. Oh. But I think people sort of thought, oh, good on him for trying. But anyway, so I went round to theirs, because I thought their house could do with a bit of colour and stuff. Yeah. Because it's a bit rough. So as I went- The horse went, thank God for that <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> they've, been, they've, they've been feeding me kitty cat. Yeah. So I got up to the door, and they opened the door, and it was one of them houses where no carpet. <laughs> yeah. A horse in the living room. <laughs> you know. We've all been there. And, yeah. and the horse was walking around the living room. Oh. I looked quite happy and everything because I always say that about animals. That beauty right? was on. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. Well, think about it, right? If you were a horse, where would you rather be? In a little wooden hut with a load of hay or in like a house with a, Central you know, heating. Three piece suite and sure. a telly and that. <laughs> telly and that! <laughs> no, but I was saying this the other day. Right? And an Atari. Right? <laughs> 
<laughs> I was walking through London. Commodore the 64, yeah. rubbish. Exactly. W walking through London with Suzanne, right? Yeah. And do you know, like homeless people always have dogs. And yeah. she said, oh, I hope, I hope she looks after it. And I said, they've got, that dog is happier than most dogs. Right. Because people always walk past and give it a pat on the head. Yeah. It's with its owner all the time. Yeah. yeah. It's out in the open, it's not locked up in a house. Yeah. It doesn't you know eat, I mean? but other than that. <laughs> no, it does eat though, they're always alright. So that's what I was saying, I think this horse, was was doing all right for yeah. itself. Do you know what I mean? Well, not many horses have got their own house. Exactly. For a start, yeah. But anyway, that's that's what, that's what by the point. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, this family, who's a bit, what were we talking about? It was about cloning, genetically modified kids yeah. and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Right now, what I'm saying is, you could say, you know, right, Steve, you could have a baby, right? Mm -hmm. And Ricky could see it and say, God, I want one that looks like that. Yeah. <laughs> right. It could happen, Rick. <laughs> So come on, work with him. So you take it to your doctors, <laughs> and I don't know what they do. They, they inject it with something or whatever. Yep, that's how yeah. it's done. Yeah, and uh, get a little baby, and there it is. It looks the same. Now the thing is, you separate. You both go off and do your own things. Yep. Right. Yeah. Now, you look at Steve, Stephen. This is you look after your baby. Yeah. You treat it well. You give it good food and all good dad. all the vitamins and stuff. Mm. Yeah. Ricky just gives it cheese. <laughs> right. So then it changes its looks. It goes a bit fat. You know, it gets tired easily, and that sort of thing. <laughs> now, when this family- Why am I just feeding a baby cheese? Right, this, this, um, this, this, this family had a horse in the, in, you know, in, the, in their house. Yeah. They had a, a little baby. And my mum went round and said, you're not gonna believe this, but it's a beautiful looking baby. Right? Yeah. And I was like, well, you know. And, uh, the weird thing is, it was a good looking kid, but as time went on, they didn't really look after it. And I'm not saying like abusing it, but he used to run around, he used to play out till like 10 at night. Yeah. Uh, he used to chase cars. <laughs> right. It was a bit. <laughs> Did it have hooves? <laughs> yeah, no. No. <laughs> Chase cars! Right? What sort of kid chases cars? <laughs> oh god, now, was it called Rover? The weird Did it catch sticks? <laughs> it's Liam it was called, right? Right. Now, the weird thing is, it was a good looking kid, but as time went on, and all that like, not eating properly and its hair was all patchy. <laughs> it's not Liam Gallagher, is it? <laughs> And chasing cars on that, and it became an ugly kid. <laughs> it's definitely Liam Gallagher. <laughs> and that's, uh, that's what I'm saying, right? You can uh, clone, you can clone all you like, but at the end of the day, it's yeah. how you brought up. Brilliant. Wow. Whoa. 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 Life. Wow. That was a hell of a point. Oh God. <laughs> but am I right? Uh, you're always right, Carl. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, last week uh, I was walking um, uh, home with him, and I went. Uh, I got a, he was saying so it was stupid. No, I've got a competition for next week. Let's do a phone in, and it's called Carl Pilkington, genius or fool. Yeah, right. And he went, no, no. I went, why not? He went, well, uh, it'd be confusing because they say there's no difference between genius and being a fool. <laughs> Do they, don't they? No, that's, that's no, no. But that? it's rubbish, and people say there's a fine line between madness and genius, and yeah. you know it's a ridiculous soundbite. Uh, they don't say there's a fine line between a genius and an idiot. Well, the people who do are idiots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what what would you do there though, just to sort of wrap that little thing up? What would you do? That lad loves his mum's. His mum's milk. What are you what are you asking me to come up with? <laughs> no, I'm a just a title <laughs> for the the story. No, 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 no. It's what? just it's just what would you do? Right. What I do you mean, what would I do? Well, it's causing a bit of a problem in the area, right? <laughs> what area? In, in America, I think it was. Oh, America a problem, are they? George Bush is worried about this kid well, who's no, breastfeeding right. at eight. Imagine it like this, right? Right. But, so, Carl, what are you asking me about this spurious story you saw on the internet? I saw on the internet, there's yeah. an eight-year-old lad, he likes his mum's milk, yeah. and it's saying, is this right? Should it no, be No, it's not. Around? But what, 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 what do you want Ricky to do about it? It's not his responsibility. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, but, but the little town that he lives in, they're all yeah. causing an uproar, right? <laughs> Going, this isn't right. You know, no. I can't let my kid play out in case he's in the garden with his mum getting a bit hungry. Right? Yeah. So, oh, God. what should they do? Because his mum's saying, well, he likes it. Yeah. And he, you know, what, so what do you do? I don't know the laws. <laughs> No, but I'm not asking you to sort out the laws. I'm just saying, if you lived in that neighbourhood, what yeah. would you say? If you went up to him and said, "Look, everyone's getting a bit fed up with this." Look, I'd say, what, 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 what would I do? What do you mean? What would I do? <laughs> what, what are you asking me? <laughs> right, it doesn't matter. No, 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 no. What are you asking me? What are you asking me and Steve and I'm, the public? I'm just saying. Say, if you live next door to this woman. Yeah. Right. The kid's hungry. Eight years old. He's out playing on his bike and he goes, Mum, I'm getting a bit peckish and he goes, Alright, son, 
she whops one out, <laughs> um, and he starts having his having his milk. Right? <laughs> you live you live next door. You're putting your washing out, and you see this going on. <laughs> you're getting a bit sick of it because it's gone on for months. <laughs> Eight so, years, I see. Why is it your business? Just why are you me... why are you such a nosy neighbour that you're concerned? What would you do, Carl? Let's turn it back on him. Yeah. What would you do? What's your solution? What would you do? Well, I thought I'd say, right, why are you doing this? And she'd say, um, because he likes it. <laughs> and I go, all right then, put it in a bowl first. <laughs> Genius. <laughs> so and you think that would sort that out? No, because I, I was thinking about the whole thing, right, and. You do that when you're a baby, and everything's all right, innit? Yeah, yeah. No one bats an eyelid at sure. a little baby having, having a bit of milk from its mum's no, breast, right? Yeah. You'd almost say it was natural. But you grow out of it. <laughs> it's like, you don't see. It got me thinking about things you don't see, and you don't see... <laughs> Did you put this into a computer? Show me things you don't see. What else no. don't you see? Well, you don't see, like, an old man having a Twix. <laughs> <laughs> you never... So what? Uh, no, no. <laughs> you, know the, you know the terrible thing about all this, Steve, is he's right. You don't see it all No, man I know that's a but, terrible but, thing. So what they have got, right, they've made old man toffees, haven't they? They've come up with rovers. <laughs> is, is that a song? Oh, oh, God. You don't see it all. <laughs> so they've got their worthers, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> You Forget think he's it. giving a lecture Forget at Oxford? It's, it's not going anywhere. No, go on, sorry. Go on. I'm what? just saying, right. you grow out of things. Yeah. And the old man, I'm sure when he was a kid, he'd have a twit. <laughs> yeah. And now it doesn't look right, so he's having... <laughs> it doesn't look right! So... Right. I don't think were those originals were specially designed for old people. I think they were sweets that just happened to have been made for years. Mm. That's why old people eat them. Yeah. They didn't go, hang on, there's a market here. I've <laughs> noticed old people aren't eating Twixes. Quick, let's make some yeah. s old man sweets. But the, the, the little yeah. advert, he gives it to his grandson as well, doesn't he? He goes, I have a Werther's original. Oh, I so think it, it cuts though before he throws it back in his face and goes, <laughs> get, get me a Twix. <laughs> Did you see the stylish? You've been voting in all week, sending your emails. So here's the clips that you wanted. You've got a real problem with Rick Waller, haven't you? I just- he's, I, he's, he, he, he turns said, my stomach. I know, but don't- Cos he's arrogant that. as well, exactly. though. Exactly. That's the problem. Don't, don't explain to people that- No, he know, is a bit arrogant. It's his- it's his, his whole thing that you- it's the whole package, so yeah. to speak, that you don't Well, there's like. another thing in this quote, because, uh, it's he's not just the fact that he eats too much. He, uh, he, he tried, apparently, to lose some weight, and, uh, it says- he said, The first month I lost eleven pounds, the next I lost a stone, but in the third my body did somersaults and I put on nine pounds. I had a slip up. Mm. I can't say when, why, or how, but it just sneaked up on me. Yeah. I don't believe it. Yeah. Don't That's believe quite, it just sneaked that, up on that him. That body's never done a somersault no. in its life. No. It just, just sneaked, sneaked up, up on him. him. Yeah. I know, I know, it that. was the cakes again. Yeah. <laughs> it was the same old cakes as before. It was exactly the same thing. Sleep eating. Yeah. It's called. It was the KFC bucket again. Oh, it was a family dear. sized KFC bucket oh, for breakfast. Dear. Poor man. The other thing is that the, uh, I don't think that's a very good shop tactic for a doctor to tell a twenty something. Well, to be honest, you've got twenty years to live. Yeah, that's not. You know, uh, when I was 20. twenty, the thought of dying at forty was fine. Yeah, I didn't want to live to forty. Yeah. I just thought, oh, what can you do when you're forty? Yeah, just laying around <laughs> doing nothing, <laughs> eating, eating cheese. cheese. And then you got there, <laughs> and you discovered. <laughs> no, but someone said the dream came true. Sophie here sent me something, and she said, I, I realise you're not Graham Norton, but I had to send you this, and she sent me the top of a little cream cheesy thing, and it's, it's, the brand name is Gervais. Oh, what well, that so, is? Have you been, they've named a cheese after I think, you? I think it's a big French company, and this is from the Czech Republic, it's all over Europe, and so it's- That so would be a dream come true, it, wouldn't it, if they named a cheese after no, you? No, I think it's, I think it's, uh, probably, you know, ancestors, and so I've cheeses in my blood. Sure. Quite literally. It literally is, yeah. yeah. It, Another it, heavy Friday it, night, was it? It, 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 it comes out of pores like those Play-Doh things. Yeah. I can squeeze out different shapes. Jay, I bring the Stilton in. <laughs> it's Friday night. <laughs> oh, this isn't Fry. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, so, um, we can't really have a go at Rick Waller. I, 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 I eat too much, but, but I, you, I, Yeah, I, but I you're not big. I mean, one of the other contestants on that, on the, uh, Fat Club, Celebrity oh, yeah, Fat Club, is, uh, another one is Jono, Jono Coleman. Oh, we love Jono. Now, Jono, he's, he, I don't know, you know Jono, he's oh. that guy who does, um, he used to be on TV and I think he does a breakfast show on a rival station, doesn't he? He's happy, isn't he? He's, he's so true, and he's a really nice bloke, Jono, it's but- It's funny, cos he does a breakfast show on Heart, which is, is wrecking his own. There's a bit of irony. Oh, I love Carl! 
Thanks, Carl. Do you know I, what I mean? Yeah, I love yeah, you. I can see where you're coming from. Yeah, that's good. But we've met John yeah. a couple of times. We saw him at a couple of, not wishing to say not uh, to show off, but a couple of awards dues. Yeah. And like that's showing off. But like people would have seen dead there. Well, yeah, but yeah. we <laughs> we went to one where everyone was in like tuxedos oh, or yeah. suits and ties. Not John O. <laughs> Jono was wearing a pair of Bermuda shorts. Big Bermuda and a shorts. Hawaiian knee length Bermuda shirt. shorts with just these little. But I saw him again Time another feet. time and he had shorts on at yeah. a similar event. And I've seen him since in the street and he's all. I don't think. I'm wondering if he can wear trousers. I don't think he can actually wear trousers. I don't know if there's a medical reason for that. Whether he's just. His no, legs th are too fat. I think the material is a waste of money. I think it's just yeah. that you can get shorts that big and they're comfortable and, uh. You know, why do, I mean, to be quite honest, well, why, I don't want to squeeze into a tuxedo anyway. Mm. So, uh, if you can go, I'd love to turn up to those things in Bermuda shorts. Well, of course. Flip flops. You but know, do you but think he started off by wearing, maybe he just had the upper half as a tuxedo with the tie and, and then the thing, shorts for And the shorts underneath, and he would just have to come in, kind of sneak behind, you know, a, a sideboard. Potted plant. Or a potted plant, or his kids, bring his kids ahead of him. Yeah. You know, you're always close, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course I am. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. In you yeah, go, yeah. in you go. Kids move a bit. Well, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, of course I won't tell them. Why <laughs> would I? Like wearing trousers. And they just thought that this isn't fooling yeah. anyone. So uh, now I'm going to make a wacky effort to sort of, you know. The next zone is, I've heard he's going in the grass skirt and a mm. garland around his, and he's yeah. going gonna to come in limboing. But you you did ask if you could go to the BAFTAs in a dressing game, <laughs> didn't you? <laughs> just for ease. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, um, right, is this talking about diets and stuff, right? Go on. They've come up with a drug that, um, they, they tested it out on a mouse, right? They said, they said, you know, it's a problem that weight, weight is a big issue in the world and, you know, a lot of people are depressed and that, probably like Rick Waller. Well, right? I'm depressed looking at Rick Waller. Well, you know. No. I mean, you could, you could sort out Rick by, you know, Jono is an old man, he's got loads of money. He's not old. No, but he's getting on a bit, right? He's about no, my hang on a minute. Is... What I mean is he does his own shopping, right? So, I bet it's Sorry. hard. Sorry, what do you mean? Because he's like, uh, how old is he? Thirty-five. Right? Oh, he's got loads of money, he does his own shopping, so when he yeah. goes to the supermarket and he passes, you know, the, the sponge cake section, it must be tough when you've got loads of money to burn that you go, oh, just one more. Yeah. One more. Uh, uh, so just, sorry, we are getting close to libel here, I think. No, 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 <laughs> I'm saying how it is, because I've, right. I've tried, like, losing a little bit of weight. Have you? And it is difficult when you, you know, you're in Waitrose and you see a little chocolate muffin and think, well, <laughs> one more and I'll do without... Do you like a little chocolate muffin now and oh, again? Well, yeah, right. Is that your favourite thing? So uh, the thing a is, let him finish his point. So the thing is, right, now with Rick, he lives at home with his mum, so why doesn't his mum just say, I'm gonna buy less this week, and if you eat it all, you're not getting any more? Yeah. <laughs> That, that sort that Does out. he live a with short, his sharp shop? I bet he does. I bet he does. <laughs> so you, you don't actually know if this is <laughs> true or not? No, but, but anyway, right? So this, this drug they've come up with... <laughs> they've tested this on mice, haven't they? They've tested <laughs> it. No, I'm just, I'm worried that they haven't tested it on mice. <laughs> Thank I'm, God for that. It's definitely been tested on mice. Definitely. They, they fed a mouse a load of cake. <laughs> yeah. Right? <laughs> and it went a little bit chubby and he said, right, stop a minute. And then they gave it this drug yeah. that makes you lose weight. Yeah. Oh. And it, its weight went down, but the only bad so side effect was its eyes were popping out. <laughs> <laughs> well, that seems, that seems to be fine then. <laughs> let's give it to Jono. <laughs> there doesn't seem to be any problem. Oh, let's, let's, uh, yeah, it's Rick should get some I of that. Love. Yes, Drew's doc, look at these. Oh, <laughs> Jesus, Jono, your eyes are popping out. That happened to the mice. Mm. Sorry? That happened to the mice. Mm, but what, <laughs> what do, do you mean? That's the option. Well, like what do you mean that's the option? So, so I love the fact that your choice is either be like a fat, happy man who has the odd sponge cake, or a stick man with eyes on stalks. I mean, Steve's <laughs> chosen that. All right, calm down. Oh, sorry, I thought we were slagging off Rick Waller sorry, and fat mate. people. Sorry, let's mate. have a go I, at the fat people before yeah, we start on me, Rick. Yeah, no, I didn't. I thought yeah, I mean, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I got some issues and body issues. I you know. know but I mean, Rick Waller's grotesque, you know. Yeah, sorry, I'm just a little bit weird. I mean, do you know what I mean? Yeah, she play a song and well, sort of just a little bit offended. No, 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 but as long <laughs> as you say something good about someone, you can also say something bad about them. Go on, how does that work? Go on, give us an example. Well, Chinese. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Great people, right? Good. That's really, the, that's the, the women, bit. women, really good looking, as, as, as younger people. No! <laughs> what are you older. doing? I'm, ju I'm just saying, as long as you, you know what I mean, there's good and bad and everything. For every well, what are the old negative. ones like? They, are, they, they don't age well. <laughs> what no, do you mean? The fellow in Karate Kid, the teacher, was only about 36. <laughs> we started this! We started this! Oh. oh. Fact. Uh, so, songs of <laughs> phrase, email in ricky.gervais.xmn.co.uk, right? 
I mean, I have to say, Carl, it's very tricky this week. You've got some very obscure sounding songs there. Yeah, just all we want is the artists. Right? I think just the song, Carl, mate. I no, think that's, that's hard. hard. I no, think no, that's hard. Yeah, the artist. Just the artist. I know. Okay, so these are the prices this week. Well, We've let's got... let's play it again so they can hear it. Try okay. and work out all the different artists. Yeah. Why don't they play the game of the game of swing ball? Right. <laughs> it is tricky. That is tricky. That is good. But there's some great prizes, um, <laughs> including Carl, I can't help but notice, torn from the current, well, I think today's issue of the Daily Mirror. What is giving away a it's, giveaway? It's a free CD from the Daily Mirror, which you can buy it, you spend 30p on the Mirror, you can get this anyway. <laughs> but it's still in the piece of plastic <laughs> that it came yeah. in. I love it's that. It's ripped. Anyway, there are some other treats. <laughs> oh, oh, you'll be loving to get that through the, uh, <laughs> the door. <laughs> so there's a, uh, the jingly jangly sound of summer. Good vibes, a two CD set featuring music from Crowded House, R.E.M., Simon and Garfunkel in the beach. Boys. I'll tell you what, I, I've got the thought of another game. We can put Carl's into theory, right? I can, I can tell him a sort of like a, a, a person or, um, you know, a, a people or a place, right? Uh, or a, a profession, and he's got to come up with a good and bad. <laughs> a good and bad thing. This, this, it's, it is dicing with death. Yeah. Are we ready to do this? Well, listen, if we're quitting in the next couple of weeks, then who cares? Okay. Um, good and bad, right? Well, hang on, whoa, let me just tell we're on the prizes here. All right, okay. So now 55. I know okay. there's a lot of XFM listeners who are going to be looking forward to the likes of S Club 8 and the Fast Food Rockers. They're all on there. <laughs> I can't wait. What is their second single going to be about? <laughs> the Smashing Pumpkins. This is quite a good little compilation of um, sort of B-sides and live performances and stuff like that, which is, uh, which is not bad. The best summer holiday album in the world ever. I think we've given that away in the past. All sorts of stuff on there. Plus the director's cut of True Romance on DVD, the uh, Tarantino scripted. Oh, it's a great film. Tony Scott That's some directed oh. movie. Oh. So there's some quite good prices. Just play it once more. So email in Ricky Dot Gervais, Why Why don't they play the game of swing ball? Just, just the artist, yeah. That's all we're after. Yeah. Very tricky. Brilliant. Very, very that is brilliant. All right. Put the uh, song on. Put a song on now. What? Let's put a song on. Bit of uh, Farrell, Farrell Williams. Yes. Good and bad. Good and bad. Um, old people. Darkness. I believe in a thing called love on XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Carl set the ball rolling with um, songs of phrase. Why don't they play swing ball? Referring, of course, to uh, people in uh, wheelchairs who play tennis because he was disappointed they weren't getting around the court quickly enough. So why didn't they play swing ball? Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> Someone just emailed in saying because if they hit it to the top, they wouldn't be able to reach it to unravel it. Exactly. Which is a good point. Yeah. But I mean, nonetheless, good and bad in people in wheelchairs? Do you want to do that? Good and bad. Good and bad things about people in wheelchairs. Um, good and bad. Yeah. Um, I suppose, I don't know really, they, they take up less room in cinemas, they've got their own seat. <laughs> um. Good. That's good, is it? That's, that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, well done. Well done. That was bad. Uh, don't know, I'll have to think about it. Okay. But, uh, well, let's leave that, eh? <laughs> <laughs> you started it. Songs of phrase. We've had very, very few entries. I really think people aren't interested. They really have just given up. I mean, seriously, Carl, That's the one thing, that's the one thing you contributed to this show, Carl. And it's, it's the, the weak link, it's I the think. Missing link. In the chain. The missing link. Oh, do you reckon there is one, Carl? Do you reckon they'll ever find the missing link? Wandering around Manchester. Wait a minute, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> um, the stats then. Let's have the answers if we can. Right. It was a uh, well, special. Play it once more. All right. Tell me why, tell me why, tell me why. Special. Yep. Play the game of swing. Oh. Right. It was a uh, play the game of love. Uh, I think that was Wayne Fontana and the Mindbenders. Right. You right. think? But you're not sure. But Louis Armstrong was the uh, don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Queen, don't stop me now. We're having a good time. No. We're having a ball. We're having a ball. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, considering you yourself weren't entirely clear, I think it's only fair to give it to Paul Brown, who got some of the answers right. Uh, we're going to do songs of phrase, by the way, where uh, Carl picks out a phrase that he might have said once, mm. uh, tries to find words from songs to 
put it together, you've got to guess as many as you can, song or artist, I can't remember. Um, but even though you might look at it and go, that's mental, I don't know any of them, you might win if you get two, right? I mean, I think the winner last week got about three out of three. Well, I have seven. to be honest with you, I mean, last week, I mean, Rockbusters, surprisingly, was a very, very popular quiz. Yeah. It just happened to be po awful. Yeah. This one is pitiful. I mean, it's truly atrocious. Yeah. And it really doesn't even have a fan base. I mean, there's no one championing this one, Carl. Last week, seriously, mate, I got a bank. Oh, Carl's seven, face. Seven or eight replies. That, is, that, oh, God, that's terrible. That was like when you told a kid that you couldn't afford a Christmas present this year. Look at his face. Yeah, it is a bit distraught. Carl, it's, it's like Chris Evans' face when they said they were cancelling girls and boys. <laughs> <laughs> But I can- I can come up with great TV things <laughs> like that. No, you can't, Chris. Not anymore. Ah! Oh, his little glasses slid down his yeah. nose. I'm the guy who don't forget your toothbrush. Yeah. What well, that money you owe me? No, <laughs> you owe us. Oh, for- <laughs> I can't believe it. Alright. So, will I just play it to you and- Whatever, you, Carl. Try and work out what phrase is. Um, so it's a phrase that might have once been uttered on this show. It was said last week. Oh, right. Alright, okay, brilliant. Alright. Here you go. I know you're just 16. But look at all of who you are. Right, I right, can't hear right. it. Right, I know what that is. That's ridiculous. <laughs> what was right? it? What it is, is it's something like, right, <laughs> you're only 16, but you look 26, and the Chinese look older than they are or something, because he said that the Chinese. It's the age route. That is mental, Carl. <laughs> it's the most convoluted, ridiculous, racist <laughs> piece of material ever to be uttered on radio. Play again. <laughs> I know you're just 16, but look at all of who you are. That's And look at all the 21. That's because the Chinese look older. <laughs> Carl, you've got a mental. All right. Oh, that is amazing. So, there you go. The well known phrase <laughs> you're, you're 16, look at all the 21. That's because the Chinese look older. Well known phrase there, sweeping the nation. <laughs> that's uh, that will be up there with was up. Um, and shut that door. <laughs> if they do a poll. Right. <laughs> Oh, okay, play it once more. We're after, we're after the artists. Just yeah. the artists. Yeah. I know you're just 16, but look at all of who you are. That's... Look <laughs> older. <laughs> Unbelievable. Alright, let me tell you what the uh, prizes oh. are. We've got, uh, I assume this is the new <laughs> album from Mower. <laughs> uh, everyone's going crazy for Mower. <laughs> I've not heard people stop talking about <laughs> Mower. <laughs> so there it is. We've got the new album from the Webb Brothers, um, which might be quite good. Uh, the Polyphonic Spree album. The best dance album in the world ever, which is ideal perhaps if you're having a barbecue and you've got lots of eight-year-old children <laughs> coming. The Polyphonic Spree, I look at them and I think, well, you know, a pretty good band. But, um, if that album sounds like a million, you're gonna make about 40 quid each. I know, it's extraordinary. <laughs> I mean... They're the sort of indie equivalent of the So Solid crew. <laughs> yeah, you're not gonna make any money. The manager's getting 20%. Exactly, yeah. And, um, and also on DVD, uh, Red Dwarf Series 1. So, um, some absolutely barnstorming crew. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and if you can identify what artists are using this well-known racist phrase, <laughs> that's because the Chinese look older. <laughs> Play it once more, Phil. One more time. I know you're just 16, but look at all of who you are. That's... Look <laughs> 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 Oh, God! Dot Gervais this at is... xfm.co.uk. This is... Radio. Just a couple of emails just to update you on what's coming in here. Go on. Um, Natasha has emailed us. She says that she's of Chinese origin, and at 27, she often got mistaken for 24. So your notion that Chinese people don't age well is obviously uh, factually incorrect. Yeah, well, we didn't need... Uh, thank you for saying <laughs> but I mean, uh, honestly, trust us, Natasha, we didn't need you to tell us that. We what? know Carl is talking absolute nonsense. Wait till you get to 30. <laughs> 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 oh, dear, now this is, uh, this is quite a nice email from Paul. He says, uh, let Carl know that I have a Chinese friend called Oi. Imagine the confusing and amusing situations we're getting into. 
out and about in yeah. busy Soho. <laughs> <laughs> Is your surname come here? <laughs> Lightning wit from, uh, from Carl. Wait till you're 30. Yeah, I know. Brilliant. I know. But no, um, actually, we've had a surprising response to uh, Songs of Phrase this week. Despite the fact everyone has agreed that it's a racialist, <laughs> they've but nevertheless they had a go. Yeah. So uh, keep your answers coming in. Um, Good. Because we may as well. You're a hit, Carl. Right, play right. it again and give the answers. Here we go. Songs of Phrase. Songs of Phrase. Name what? the artist. Name the artist. I know you're just 16. Good looking old. Oh, you cry. That's. Hang <laughs> on. <laughs> 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 right, it was. That was Roxette. The look. Yeah, yeah. Right, we had, uh. You and Cry started yeah. off. Yeah. Uh, in 16. That was Dean Martin. Because. Oh, yeah. Jane. Jane's addiction. addiction, yeah. Cars, yeah. Chinese Philip Bailey. Philip Bailey, that's second out in his ad. Uh, last one, um, we used him for Chinese <laughs> with those as a hairy Chinese kid. He's never got so many royalties being used <laughs> in racist uh, game shows. Brilliant. Then Roxette and finishing with George Michael. Oh, right? yeah. So, brilliant. Who's right. the winner? Well, the winner, actually, uh, it looks to me like he's got all of them here. Mm. And I had been discussing with um, this mate of mine, my housemate, that we should maybe just start doing some exercise because mm. I'm putting on a little bit of weight, right? He's quite a thin, tall guy. He has a belly. I don't know how to summarize it. Have you ever seen the film Junior with Arnold Schwarzenegger? Uh, yeah. It looks like that. Really? It's like grotesque. So the two of us, right, so we suggested, we decided that we were going to do some exercise together, right? This is what we're going to do. We, each morning we were going to get up, we were going to exercise together. That won't happen. Right. Well, no, but wait, Rick. You see, you're wrong because. A couple of days ago, I said to him, listen, what we should do is get one of those, like, health videos, you know, those kind of training videos, what they're called, like, um, I don't know, they might have an aerobics thing or a yeah. sort of hour-long workout. And I said to him, get one of the ones that's hosted by, like, um, Pauline Quirk. Oh. Elle McPherson or Cindy Crawford, you know, w you know, someone like that, someone sexy, right? So, uh, I swear to God, we went down this morning, we put it on, right? Just want you to picture this scene, right? It's me and my mate in our shorts, right, nine o'clock in the morning, working out- You didn't actually do it. To Helen from Big Brothers. <laughs> video, right? That was it. Was the cheapest one, Steve? You told me. <laughs> Thanks very much, mate. We saw that advertised as yeah. well. We're working out, right? And the two of us in our shorts. She's there, like the, you know, she's the closest there is to a living Homer Simpson, right? Shouting out stuff. I just wanted to be reassured, Rick. There's nothing gay about that, is there? Um, There's nothing a touch kind of fruity about that image. No, I mean I th the ones you'd avoid would be to uh, Liza Minnelli right, workout. Share. Um, uh, uh, Graham Norton, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Um, Del Winton. Gay Burn. Right, sure. He's not gay. No. But, I mean, the name's a little yeah. bit gay, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. So, I think, I, I think, Helen from your brother, you're probably safe. Mm -hmm. Um, who else? Who else? I don't know what, what else to tell you, really. Um, but, I mean, because I know you've got a personal trainer. I'm obviously not in that kind of state. There's kind of states at the moment. I don't have that kind of cash. No. But, um, you know, I'm obviously quite excited. What have I got to look forward to? Do, do I go through a my, my, barrier? My, uh, my trainer, Pink Eric, we call him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, well, uh, I, um, I sort of box a little bit. But what I'm saying is, do you go through a pain barrier? What, no, 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 I stop way before that. <laughs> right. And I sit okay. down and have a beer. Right. You don't, there's no, there's no point in going <laughs> through the pain because it, it just put you off. Sure. So, um, if, if, if you, you know, start feeling any sort of pain or, or any, um, breathlessness or any aches, <laughs> yeah. sit down immediately. <laughs> now, is it right that he's worked out a special routine for you where you don't have to get up? Yeah, well, he actually said, I remember the first, was, uh, I got my food diary and he was looking at it and I could see he was, he, he sort of feared it. He feared taking on this challenge. And this is a true quote. At one point, uh, he, he said, right, um, okay, cut cheese down to five times a week then. I must have haggled from four. <laughs> cheese down to five times a week. <laughs> and it, it's sort of like, I'm my own worst enemy. Because if I cut out cheese and beer, I would just lose weight. Like, it would drop off me in a month. So what I'm doing, I'm, I'm just, I'm fighting it all the time. I'm, yeah. I haven't changed my sort of eating and drinking habits, but I now work out three times a week. It is an uphill struggle, Steve. Yeah, of course, of course. It's just so that, you're just keeping it an even keel. I know. Well, I, I, yeah. So I can live longer to eat more cheese and beer. Do you exercise, Carl? Do you do any exercise whatsoever? I, I used to go to a gym in town, but it wasn't the sort of, the hard work of doing the, you know, the stuff. It was just like, it was like 60 quid a month. Yeah. I thought, well, crazy, yeah, isn't it? That's not good. So I just got out of my way to sort of walk everywhere. Do you know what I mean? Instead mm. of jumping on a bus, like a nice day like today, walking to work, or, uh, you know, run up the stairs. You're uh, skinny, though. <laughs> you run up the stairs. What? You're really skinny, though. No, but I, I do eat a lot of, like, crappy food. So yeah. I reckon, I mean, what did they say? When you get to 30 years old, just. 
You go mental, don't you? Yeah, you they say I mean? that. Play records. That's is, who's that? That's the philosophers, oh, isn't no, it? Just... When you get to thirty, you go mental. No, oh, Descartes. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. play records. Better Bowie. Oh yeah, oh, I brought this in. You'll love this, Steve. Oh, you know this, I think. I'm sure. This is uh, uh, a great Bowie track off Aladdin Sane, one of my favourite albums. And this is Lady Grinning Soul. It's it's beautiful. Badly drawn boy, silent sign on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. You can do your own. Oh, right, okay. My name's Steve Merchant. Yeah, I'm Carl. I'm Carl. Yeah. Exactly. You've, not, you've not lost interest, have you, Rick? Uh, no, of course I haven't. Okay. Go on. They said he just. Uh, I've said it once. Uh, I, get, I was a bit bored with just saying your names. Okay. I don't mind saying mine because I'm sort of interested in that. <laughs> yeah, sure. But the other ones are sort of more of a chore. Do you okay. know what I mean? There's okay. nothing in it for me. Yes. <laughs> There's no actual. I'd rather game. not mention either of you. Okay. So if you want to do it from yeah. now on. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, well, listen, um, obviously, still got plenty to come. We've obviously got uh, some great music, Rick, and that's uh, well, I've got, um, a bit of Nick Cave in the Bad Seeds. Um, actually, an album you introduced me to, and I'm gonna play, um, Into My Arms. Looking forward and to you it. know how beautiful that song is. That's true enough. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I was just, obviously, I was talking about this little bit of acting I was doing yesterday, and, uh, not wishing to be disrespectful to anyone that was involved, but there was, um, obviously some extras or supporting artists, as I believe they know, and, you know, all good, good lovely people, really putting the effort in, doing good work and everything, but there's this one guy I stood next to, and, you know, he's quite a tall guy, uh, not quite as tall as me, but tall guy, you know, quite a good looking bloke, whatever, and, uh, I just sat there, and he, he obviously gets quite boring, because there's a lot of just hanging around, and people waiting and stuff, fixing lights, I just stood next to him, and he just went, oh, he was looking for something to say to me, obviously, and he went, looking forward to the new Guns N' Roses album? <laughs> And I went, I didn't realise there was one on the way, actually. He went, yeah, yeah, obviously they, uh, it, uh Slash won't be in it, because obviously Slash is no longer with them, but, uh, <laughs> bloody a sweet child of mine. One of my, one of my favourites. Just started singing some of the songs. <laughs> I went, oh, okay, great. Without went, yeah. irony, I Absolutely assume. without irony. He was just wanting to get onto a discussion of Guns N' Roses, but I'll tell you this, he did not look like a rocker in any way. He looked like a bloke who would work in, sort of, an accountancy, Barclays. uh, agency, uh, yeah, or Barclays, yeah, behind the counter, or something like yeah. that. Very well scrubbed, well groomed. I was say, there's yeah. nothing wrong with Barclays or the people who work therein. <laughs> That's true, though. Okay. So he goes, yeah, I mean, I, I got into them with uh, Appetite for Destruction, the classic first album, um, but I even, you know, I enjoyed the spaghetti incident as well. I mean, I like all of them. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, right, okay. And he goes, I said, um, uh, I said to him, have you ever seen them live or anything? He went, I have not seen them live, no, but I was lucky enough to be at Donington, Monsters of Rock, <laughs> and, uh, Slash's Snake Pit was playing, <laughs> which was Slash's solo effort. Yeah, you know? yeah. And he went, I've never been, I've never been to uh, those live gigs before, and, uh, I was down in the mosh pit. Oh, man, and I was down there, and I'll tell you this, have you been in the mosh pit? I went, I'm not, you go, oh, it's crazy down there, it's wild. A guy threw a punch at me, I punched him, knocked him straight out, he knocked me out, someone's this fight went off, oh, it was amazing, it was amazing, amazing. I went, you're gonna go back? He went, no, I won't, because once you've done something like that, you can never repeat the, um, the experience. You know, I mean, I was, they, everyone there was dressed in black. I think I was the only guy wearing a white t-shirt. <laughs> I was like, okay, I could just imagine him tucked in as well. That's, why, yeah, that's why I attacked him. Exactly. It's like ants. <laughs> yeah. They, they Slash always... himself again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's a termite in the nest. Exactly. And they just turned on him. But so the very song I'm going, okay, so, so, do you go to gigs often? He went, no, I don't think I'm ever going to go to another rock gig. And I said to him, why? And he went, I don't think any gig I go to will be able to top the experience of seeing UB40 live. <laughs> <laughs> and I... Do you know what I mean? And I, I almost know, did what you well, did. Well, that's why I've never seen him live, because I don't want to end my life. But I almost laughed. No point I there. thought it was a joke. I thought he was making a joke, and I was about to laugh, and I realised he was deadly serious, and I went, You be I went, 40. Oh, good were they? He went absolutely blinding. Um, one of the sure. most incredible live experiences I've ever seen. I imagine. Um, did remarkable. they do songs in a sort of mock reggae style? Apparently for they two did. hours. And then he Excellent. began to tell me which, which of his favourite, he went, I, I don't know if, I said, have they done anything recently? Have they brought anything out? He went, I don't think they're gonna be able to top, um, those classic albums, Bag of Rhythm, and yeah. Right in the Kitchen. I remember once when I went to sign on, Okay, and it, I don't know what year it was, it must have been like 1979 or something. And, uh, I'm a third of left school. And, uh, um, tell me if I'm wrong if it wasn't out then, but this bloke was at the back with sort of like a ghetto blaster and he was playing one in ten. <laughs> right. Obviously making a point, he was in the dole office. <laughs> yeah. Everyone ignored him, and when it finished playing, he turned it down. <laughs> 
<laughs> and oh, he took, wow. took a number and cue. The days when they were a protest. <laughs> when was that? What year was that? What year oh, did I? I uh, someone can pinpoint that for me. Phone in. Oh eight seven hundred eight hundred one two three four. I know it had just come out. But um, but what was amazing is when he said that about you before him being the best low experience I've ever seen. I th it was one of those moments where you thought I never thought I'd hear someone say that. Yeah. You do you know what I mean? I don't know why that. I can't understand what kind of person you are. I suddenly realised at that moment there was such a chasm between us. Is there anyone out there whose favourite band is UB40? <laughs> Red Wed Wine, maybe. UB40. UB40, yeah. Oh, they're, anyway, they're a great bunch of blokes, though. You see them, they, they, they crack me up when I see them interviewed. They're really funny. But, um, once you've heard one, that's pretty much it, yeah. isn't it? Absolutely. I imagine. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm a Philistine. Maybe there's some hidden depths to them that we don't understand. Uh, Maybe some great tracks that you could yeah. know if you're a big fan. Well, I'm never going to go and see him because why, <laughs> why? No, no. Why sort of like top your experiences? Exactly. You no, know? because you never give it a better. It when when I know I'm definitely dying. Yeah. I'm going to go. You'll summon them get to me play for you. Yeah. Get me here with do, Get me labour of love live. Do do right in the kitchen <laughs> now. This is a little bit of a treat, but I thought I would uh, charm you with Rick. Uh, from The Cure's Greatest Hits, this was this double CD that they brought out recently, including 18 acoustic versions of their greatest hits. Yeah. And this is the acoustic what version. What have you gone for? I've gone for, glad you asked, just like heaven. Wise choice. Anyway. I woke up this morning, yeah. Feeling fine. It's not a blues song. And, uh, I turned my phone on, and it, it was from Carl, and it went, forget it, I've made my mind up. And I thought, wow, what is that? And I Forget it. it, I've made my yeah, mind. Yeah, I went, Carl, what is it? He went, oh no, it's about the text I sent you last night. I went, well, what, what was it? I just got this text. He went, ah, oh. oh, I was just wondering, I was just thinking last night. He said, supposing you had to have your hands removed. Sure. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and the doctor said, well, you can either have them stay like that with stumps, or I can sew feet there. <laughs> what would you have? <laughs> and I was bleary eyed and I went, the stumps? He went, yeah. <laughs> I went, all right? He went, yeah. And then and what that, was his follow up text to that? And then I got the text, it was obviously before it, and it went, and it was like quite serious. What, what would you do if surgery's not removing your hands? Would you have stumps or the feet? Right? Now, the way, uh, when I said he's made his mind up, and I went, the stumps, he went, yeah. I think secretly he decided on the feet, <laughs> but he was too embarrassed to tell me. <laughs> There's a little, little bit of what would you do? Because it's it. But why night, did you think of this? Why did you think of this? Girlfriend's this away, right? Yeah, no, that's not why you start thinking bizarre I'll, surgery I'll tell you devices. Now, right? I'll let you into my little mind, right? Last night, I um, <laughs> I had some beans on toast, right? <laughs> She was away. It's good already. Right. She was away. She had some beans on toast. Right. She went yeah. wild. Yeah. Right. Now I was stood up. I live on like a on a high street, right? So I'm, I'm washing up. I'm looking out the window. First thing that had me attention is I can I can look into other people's flats, right? Yeah. <laughs> and it was weird how all these different lives were going on. I was watching them, and everybody had the telly on and was watching Volcano, right? Which was on last night. Right. right. And I thought, oh, that, that's weird, right? I can see them all watching it, and it was like a little Chinese lad who was dancing around in some underpants. Yeah. And then there's a little old woman who lives downstairs who was reading a book, and she's always reading a book every night, and it's like, I have a better life than her. And then there's, a, there's like some sort of bouncer who's always getting ready to go out late at night yeah. with all the black on. He looks like a bouncer. So I was watching all this life yeah. going on, I thought... Did you witness a murder while you were doing this? <laughs> yeah. It was like, it was like that sort of sliver film where that bloke had loads of tellies watching yeah, people's sure. lives. So that was going on in my mind. And then I was washing up and I picked up the plate and I thought, oh, it's amazing, isn't it? The, the human body, the way you can just sort of, you know, I want to pick that up and you do. Yes. And the way your hands work, right? Yeah, You've got five little digits, but it's, it's just the right amount to do what, you've, <laughs> yeah. to do what you've got to do, right? So... <laughs> So I'm, I'm washing, I'm cleaning the plate. <laughs> Sorry, Carl! Stop! It's just the right amount. Might be one of the most genius things I've ever heard said. I would love David Attenborough to phone you up and say, Carl, how do I word this about the evolution of the mammalian front uh, limb? Just go, we'll just say it's the right amount. It? But it is. It one, is, one of course it is. One extra would get in the way. Yeah. And one less would just make it that little bit more tricky when picking up a, a bit of a slippery dish. Sure, or, <laughs> buy, or buying gloves. <laughs> yes. Yeah. A slippery dish. So then, I, I was thinking, oh. right, imagine like going to the doctors and he's saying, yeah, everything's alright, your heart's good and everything, but 
Your art's good, what your Larry's or... Yeah, you, <laughs> your heart, your heart, yeah. you're in good form and what sure. have you. It's good news, you know, I had Giano in earlier. He's not looking good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, fast baller. But yeah. you're, you're all right, but your hands need to come off. <laughs> right. Blimey. But, That's bad. Like, I'd get a second opinion initially. <laughs> But a better good news, I've got a nice pair of feet I can sure. sort you out with. Yeah. And he puts them on, and then I was thinking, right, first of all, <laughs> washing up, what would that be like? I thought, Steve! I, <laughs> that'd be tricky. Right. Yeah. And then the second thing was, it'd probably ruin the, the, sort of the shape of your jumper. Because <laughs> you had to keep putting the feet through there. Yeah. And then I thought, but I could still cycle in. Okay. To work. You could run in. Well, that's the thing. You'd be was, like, you'd be really yeah. fast. Well, well, that's what I was thinking. I thought I could still cycle because I could balance, and then I thought, but the only thing is, I probably couldn't pull the brakes. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Because of the little short things. Yeah, yeah. And then, like you, I thought, but then again, you're running in half the time. So that's what was going on in last night. Right. That's what I was thinking about. Sure. Did you? Did you? How long did this take? <laughs> Well, how long does it take to wash up? Right, because I imagine you just being there for like all night. <laughs> Probably twenty-five minutes. How long did the little Chinese fella dance for in his pants? He's always doing it. Last night he was at it for like ten minutes. Just yeah. And his girlfriend never sits in the same room as him. She's always sat in the bedroom. <laughs> She's going, you you dance in pants again. I go in next yeah. door. Well, she was in the bedroom. She's always in the bedroom, sat on the floor, on the mobile phone. Right. All the time, yeah, it's weird how people's lives are just like, it is like that Groundhog Day thing, it's like, you know, he's jumping about in his underpants, the old woman's sat there reading a book. Yeah. And that's what got me thinking about my life. Do you think she ever goes... Are you sure she's not dead? <laughs> 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 Every time you look down there, she's just flicking through it, she's just reading this book. The pages never turn. She never seems to finish it. Oh, she never moves you, from her chair. Are you sure, are you sure the Chinese her girl's going... Her cats are dead around I, her. I, I, I'm going into the next door again, that little yeah. round headed fella's smell. looking in. He's looking in at me, the bouncer goes, don't worry love, I'll go and beat that's, him up. But he's true. always getting ready. That's true, they're they see, they see you staring at and washing up going, I could have feet here, and they get yeah. scared. The old woman's dead! <laughs> oh dear. Carl, can you tell us roughly which neighbourhood you live in, so, so that we know? It's central. Central, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Wow, imagine if that little... D was he a Chinese fellow, did you say? Yeah. Imagine <laughs> if he was listening now, I'd love him to call in and explain these actions. Well, he, he might be on some other radio station talking about a lad who's always washing up and <laughs> yeah. looking at his hands in a mysterious way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> but, do we have this doctor, this doctor that would go, well, all right, Carl, I've got, you can either leave him with stumps, or I've got every little pair of feet. Why, uh, I, I mean, I t told Jane this, and Jane went, did, is that the only choice? Is he, could he say he could have some dead man's hands? <laughs> have you got any, have, if you, where do you get the feet from? Where do you get the feet from? Can I have, can I have, what would you rather have then? Human feet or monkey paws? Well, I mean that wasn't an option last night. That if the doctors no. said No, it wasn't an option last night, but don't forget it's in your head, Carl. <laughs> this didn't happen. No, this but I'm just saying at the time that's all the doctor had to offer. But you know it's your head, you can go anywhere. No, 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 it wasn't a real doctor to offer. It's in your head, you can go anywhere. You're not trapped. Yeah, but if you can do anything, then you'd say we'll sort us out some other hands. Fair point. The fair so, record. So. <laughs> Hello. Uh, you're listening to the best of, basically, Carl Pilkington. Right, you ready then? So, uh, just in case, uh, you haven't heard it before, I give you some initials of a band or an artist. We're not doing rock buses now, are we? Yeah, I thought, well, we've just... Oh, then we, we keep that going, then we got... Well, I, I love educating Ricky, that's my favourite thing now. Well, what, what do you want to do, Steve? I oh, mean, it's, it's just, it's just, let's hear the clues. It's just different. like you've, it, it's, it's sort of bigged up the prizes. And, and so this be... is only by email. Give the email address out now for people to write it down now, Carl. Right, it's ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Only entries on email. Yeah. You're going to get three clues. You've got to get them all right. And you win all the You stuff. win all those prizes you said. Okay, Carl, go on then. Right, and just a quick example, uh, the f one of the first ones we did, it was like AK and the clue was Exploding Pet, yeah. and it was Atomic, Atomic Kitten, kitten and, right? Yeah. So you understand how it works now. These right. are your clues. The first one, um, <laughs> that army has got some well nice trenches. <laughs> that army has got some well nice trenches, excellent. Yeah. <laughs> and the initials there are DW. Do you okay. write some of the questions for 15 to 1? <laughs> Go on. So that army has got, got some a similar well, phrasing. Nice trenches, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, the second one. Um, what were the initials there, Carl? On that person. D D W. D W. Yeah. Right. Uh, the second one. 
The top of them curtains are all wrecked. All the materials all worn. <laughs> <laughs> he acts it out though. Clue. We've got to get him on telly. We have got to oh, get him on yeah. telly because his little face and his so his gestures. That's and the second one. The initials being H V. Okay, the top oh! of those curtains are wrecked. All the materials all worn out. Right, H V. And the final one, um, <laughs> here's the final clue, um, I was in Texas the other week, right? I tripped and landed on my knees in a puddle. <laughs> <laughs> what's the, what's the initials? W-H for that one, so I was in Texas, I tripped up, landed on my knees in a puddle. So that's W-H. Incredible. <laughs> I've got it! Is it right. great? It's Okay, time to join the record. Time to join the record. Remember, you're playing for uh, these uh, compilation albums. We've got the Fat Boy Slim DVD, Linda Green on VHS, and of course, uh, Executive Decision, starring Kurt Russell as well. Playing 104.9, Wicked Javay, Steve Merchant. We're not actually here. Um, it's the best stop. Okay, what's the next yeah. one? What's the next Educating well, Wicked? I don't know. Uh, see, like I say, I was lo looking around, and this stuff that is interesting. Right, I was looking on the web, but there's no point. Well, it's just that I found one about. Um, what's the point? About a lad who, uh, eight years old, yeah. but he's still breastfed. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't know if you can get anything out of that. <laughs> Is that what his mum said? <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you mean I don't know if I can get anything out of that? You don't need to. No, it's, it's just that, you know. Where did you read that? That was on the internet. Oh. oh! Well, yeah. Um, You're always unspe unspecific when you mention it. It's just it was on the internet. Well, yeah. I'm trying to think what I put in. I think I put in Y to see if I'd confuse a computer. Ah! <laughs> 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 Go! Then, you are... No, I did, I did, yeah, no I, honestly. I did a search, put in Y, and I ca he came <laughs> up with funny things that, like, why is this person doing that? Why is that? And it had a picture of this eight-year-old lad, sort of, you know, <laughs> on his mum's nipple. And, um, it was saying, you know, oh, is, is, is this healthy? <laughs> Ooh. Mm. You sure that wasn't asking you that question? <laughs> uh, what, you, I put in why? <laughs> Just to confuse the computer. <laughs> like, we were going, what do you mean? Yeah. Stop it! Yeah. Right. Yeah, what is it this week? What's the, what's the phrase? Where, um, remember the story I told you ages ago about, uh, about my neighbour having horse in the house. Oh yeah. Having a yeah. horse. Yeah, a horse. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, what's happened with that? Lenny Henry doing it as a series. So, uh, uh and people are nicking your ideas left, right, and centre. Well, that's that's the phrase we'll be using anyway. What? Um, my neighbour had horse in her house. How many words is that? Six. My neighbour had. So, there's no grammar either. My neighbour had horse in the house. <laughs> My neighbour had horse in house. <laughs> what is- wait, what is the phrase? My neighbour had horse in her house. Adult- ad- is there- oh. are there any <laughs> prepositions? Wait, we, uh, are there any prepositions in this sentence? Look, don't judge it beforehand. You see, okay. I'm turning over a new leaf. I think this is a great idea. I think Carl's a genius and I look forward to hearing this enormously. Yeah, okay. And I won't be sick on your leg or squeeze your head or make you jump when you're making a cup of tea. <laughs> what have we got then? That's that right. whole, That's the silly side now. Let's get on with the proper show. Right. <laughs> song- song's a phrase. Yeah, let's yeah. redo that. Um, on to the classy stuff. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to do the prizes first? Right, uh, no then, right, here they are. I haven't seen these, but I'm excited as ever. Alright, we have a t-shirt there, arbitrary t-shirt that you have probably stolen off of someone. What does it say? Duh, duh, duh. Is it the red hot, the red hot chili peppers? So oh, that's, right. that. that's not too bad, it's a big t-shirt there. Um, oh, do, 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 do. On DVD, this, uh, should you be giving this away? This looks like it's the film Don't Say a Word. Yeah. And it's, um, it doesn't have all the proper packaging, it's literally the, uh, the disc, the DVD disc, just loose. So enjoy that. The current album from Oasis, uh, Heathen Chemistry, uh, DVD, on DVD, The Life of Mammals, the complete series, the David Attenborough recent DVD, uh, that. Walking with Caveman, which I think is a DVD, it's all currently on TV, isn't it? And, well, there um, you go. And also bad. the X-List, which is a good new compilation, double CD compilation from XFM with loads of stuff on there, including Nerd, Snoop Doggy Dog, uh, Athlete, all sorts. Go on then, Carl. So not bad, actually. Nice one. Well right, done. so, uh, yeah, it's a phrase that, that's been said at some point, or said a lot on the show, we've had, like, Airy Chinese Kid. We went back to, uh, my mum had wind for five minutes and that. Uh, today we're looking at, uh, my neighbour had a horse in a house, right? Yep. If you remember we were talking about that. 
probably about a year <laughs> and a half ago now. Yeah. Yeah, of course right. people, of course people remember. They've been talking about it ever since, Carl, I imagine. Yeah. Well, so it's famous, it's, the, it's a world famous phrase, my neighbour had a horse in her house. <laughs> right, so this is, uh, this week's song's a phrase and what I've done is I've got songs with those words in that make up that sentence. Yeah. You get our email in ricky.gervais at xfn.co.uk. There's six different songs, right? You email in with what? I what don't know there is six. Me neighbour had horse in house. Is it really that sentence? Me neighbour had a horse in a, a, a house. It does work, honestly it works. Okay, yeah, right. okay, don't bother explaining it, just play it. Right, yeah. so here's the, uh, here it is. We're just gonna do it. Head horse in a house. Right? <laughs> what <laughs> in <laughs> God's <laughs> name <laughs> was that? Yeah, name the six songs. Head horse in a house. Huh? <laughs> Are we naming the artists or the songs? Either. Uh, artists. Anyone who yeah. gets anything can get a prize. What's Jeez. Walker? Artists, here we go. Head in a house. Whew, that's tricky, Carl. That's very hard. Once more. Head in a house. <laughs> Email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. I'll give it. Another letdown. Another letdown. Let down. It's brilliant, this. No. No. How can you just say that after I've just been stuffing grapes in my face and that? Well, you found, you found, you didn't get one burger in, right, even when you tried to, to chop it up, there's three, right, so that's it. it Steve, out of the goodness of his heart, went to McDonald's, okay, I got some grapes, you, at 62. That's got nothing to do with this, though, this is my uh, game show here. Bob Olness didn't say, yeah, Blockbusters is good, but I never see him eating grapes. <laughs> So this is a different thing, forget that. Right? <laughs> Here's the clips again, here's the clips. <laughs> oh, you know I said I was gonna turn over a new leaf and not criticise your ideas? I think it's the end of this one, mate. We should give, um, the prizes away. Yeah, well Carl. this is, this has been dreadful, that, this thing. We started <laughs> off well with him trying to put four burgers in his mouth, and then he'd come up with this tat. I mean, this is, this is the end of this, cos it's, I mean, it was shoddy to start with, now that it did a couple, well this is, uh, yeah. not only, well, uh, 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 I'm just saying, this is what I was saying in the pub yesterday when you try to be sick on my leg. I was saying, come up with new ideas if you don't like them, but you diss them on air. Well, it's just disappointing, isn't it? And I was in my name. Right. What's that? I was disappointed when I was choking before. <laughs> <laughs> we were disappointed as well. Yeah, you didn't try, you didn't try with the grapes. You were just like, right. chewing on that. You meant to just throw them in and swallow them. Songs a phrase, it was six songs, it yeah. sounded like this. Boring. Head boys in a house. Well, what are they? Just give you six answers. Six songs there. We had, uh, Lionel Richie, My Destiny, for my. Tricky. Neighbour. Oh, that's XFM. Ooh. My neighbour was, uh... Space. Space. Yeah. Neighbourhood. Mm. Had. Uh, Ari Connick Jr. Had to be you. Yeah. Right. Had. My neighbour had. A horse. Horse from America. Really? America, yeah. Uh, a horse. In, in, in was Lisa Sansfield with, uh... <laughs> pathetic. In all the right places. Oh, <laughs> pathetic. Did anyone get that? Did anyone get that? And no one got that. No one got that. Animals. So that was pointless. Alright, well the most, well, any, the most anyone got was three, yeah. and so uh, we're gonna give it to Deborah. Uh, okay, prizes to give away this week. You've, uh, excelled yourself again. We've got, once again, Scotland Rocks, the very best of Scottish music, Texas Deacon Blue. Brilliant. And, uh, Jerry Rafferty. Proclaimers on there or not? <laughs> Proclaimers there, don't worry, Delamitri's well, like... on there as well, don't worry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sweet, don't sweet. worry. It's oh, based on there, it's based on there. I'm right. just checking to see if Midjur and Hugh and Gry feature, but they do, thankfully. I don't know. Uh, the Rosillos as well. Oh, and Gun. brilliant, brilliant, that That's is brilliant. Great. So look forward to that. Is Lulu on there or not? Oh, is she not on there? I can't no, see is her on there. Is she not on there? But, uh, the wet, are the wet on there or the wet or not? Fairground attraction. Brilliant. Brilliant. That's on there, so... Uh... Is we Hooty McToove <laughs> on there and is, uh, is, uh, Jamboree? <laughs> uh, what's this? This is another arbitrary compilation, uh, called Brilliant. Strange and Beautiful. The Brilliant. Exodus album, which is quite good. Yeah. The new album by The White Stripes. Uh, the DVD Walking with Cavemen, that TV show that's on. On VHS, uh, it's, it's still got the price on there. On VHS, in case you haven't seen it. Uh, Fight Club and the best-selling book from Michael Moore's Stupid White Men. So, actually, some quite good prizes there, Carl. Not yeah. bad Alright, Carl, what's this, what's this competition? Right, song's a phrase. It's where I, uh... Get a line that sort of s is said a lot on the show, or has been said on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but what we're doing is um, my favourite. Uh, the Elephant Man's my favourite film. Is that the phrase? Yeah, that's the phrase that we're looking at today. The Elephant Man's my favourite film. It is as well. It's yeah. His favourite film. I know. I know. Why yeah. is that again? So because it's funny and sad, and it, it's uh, you know exactly what you're going to get. Yeah. They promise you an elephant man, that's exactly what you get. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen it, Steve? I have seen it, It yeah. is good, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, Do you remember at the beginning of the Think of that, having the, that as your favourite film, oh, of yeah. all the hundreds of amazing films. I mean, yeah. uh, the, uh, I mean, I mean just it's a good film and it's yeah. a moving film. Yeah. But I can't imagine it's a film I would watch endlessly again and again. I don't care about a bloke with an no, elephant's head. I watched a little you know? bit of it again huh? the other night. It's one of them that, you know, just sort of reminds you. You know what annoys me when he goes, yeah. I am not an animal? Mm. He is. Well, yeah, but, I mean, he speaks like one. <laughs> and what does an elf? He's got, got he looks like one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it was a bit unfair because they never let him look in a mirror because he's a bit odd looking and it upset him. Yeah. So his hair was always a mess. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. that made him look worse than he actually was. Yeah, 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 yeah. But good film, get it out if you haven't seen it. That's the phrase today. Do you uh, know, um, my, uh, I remember my friend introduced me to that film and if you remember at the beginning there's a big montage because he is, uh, working in a, in a zoo, isn't he, or he's been kept in a zoo. And there's a sequence of, uh, of various, of elephants, I think, actual elephants kind of rampaging and it's just quite a sort of moody, atmospheric mm -hmm. montage. Is he king of the elephants? Can well, he my friend, my friend said to me when we watched this, he said, what happens is he gets trampled on by some elephants and that's what makes him look like an elephant. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, right, and I watched it I thought, that's not the case, and I tried to explain it to him and he's, to this day, still convinced that the elephant man, it's like a, it's like when Spider-Man gets bitten, bitten by a spider. Yeah, yeah. It was his man, wasn't the it? The elephant man. <laughs> the power of an elephant. <laughs> Wait, was, was it his man who got- He never forgets. Anyway. Be careful. Is it, his man what? Wasn't it his man who was pregnant and then they ran over her and- No, I don't think so. That's the impression I got from it. No. You are joking, aren't you? <laughs> no. <laughs> I thought, I, I honestly, th anyway, right, so the phrase is, my favourite film's The Elephant Man. Oh, well, I like yeah. Uh, there's five songs make up that, that sentence. Yep. Yeah. Right, this week. Have a listen, see if you can work out the songs. Email in, uh, ricky.juvase at xfm.co.uk, right? Mm. And you win all that stuff, mm. Steve just said, so, uh, mm. right, here we go then. The Elephant Man <laughs> that was mostly done. Genius. Right. Let's hear it again. Yes. Here we go. The is my favorite <laughs> Five songs there. The it's Elephant not, Man not is so hard, this my favorite film. Well, I thought we'd make it a bit easier. Make it a bit easier. Yeah. Yeah. Just, right. just one more. The Elephant Man. Uh, email only <laughs> ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Brilliant. Have we got the result of the uh, quiz, Carmel? Yeah. Uh, I'll just play it one more time. It was Songs of Phrase. Is this <laughs> the last time we're doing this? Oh, I thought so. I thought it worked better this week because it was actually doable. Yeah. I think that makes a difference, Carl. We haven't done Carl's an idiot yet. Carl, you're an idiot, have we? Oh, well, that's a reason to keep it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can end with that one right. when you come back. Right. right, well, the five songs that made up this little thing here was Mysteries, Beautiful Blues, Eels. Innocent Man, Billy Joel, in my favourite waste of time, Owen, Owen Paul, Boom Rhapsody, Queen, mm -hmm. Girls on Film, Duran Duran, it sounded like this. The Elephant Man is my favourite film. Hang on, was Bohemian Rhapsody in there? Yeah, yeah. it is. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Right. Well, we're going to give that to uh, Piley. He just calls himself Piley, Ian Pyle. Uh, good work, Piley. What's happened to Anders? Well, I, I was just gonna say, actually, we've not had correspondence from Richard Dicky Anders for some time. The Dickmeister, Dickmeister yeah. General, oh, with yeah. his, his naughty, naughty, insulting ways. Yeah, Anderson used to email regularly. Anders, to get on your computer! Get in touch, mate. What just do you think of, think of the show? Uh, hold on, though. To be fair, um, he was listening w when we were pretty shoddy. Yeah, uh, if he's listened to the last three weeks, I think we are owed a little apology from you, Dickster. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, listen, Piley, um, we want to send you all those goodies, including Scottish rock, um, but uh, we don't have your uh, address, so uh, email in your address. That was the Travis and some flowers through my window. <laughs> this is uh, XFM 104.9 of a Saturday afternoon, just gone six minutes past one. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant. Hello hi there, hi. Good to see you. Uh, Carl Pilkington is over there. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Keeps it real. 
<laughs> yeah. Respect, Carl. Oh. Rick, um, I just think, you know, we want to lift off the show straight away. Yeah. Into the, uh, stratosphere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah. the best way to do that, it seemed to me, was to resurrect a game we used to play when we first began the show in old XFM days. Do you remember oh, the really? game, do you remember the game Make rub, Ricky rub, Gervais Rub me laugh? hard. Rub you hard? No, no. No, no. no what that was only in the pilot. We never <laughs> actually did that on live okay, right. Um, no, it was the game Make Ricky Gervais laugh. Oh, I remember, and yeah. We used to get people, like, Carl, you probably didn't hear it, we used to get people to sort of send in pictures and, uh, jokes and stuff. And if I could make Ricky laugh, on air with those. He won a toffee. Things, then they won a gift of some kind. Yeah. Anyway, um, a lot of, a lot of emails actually say people love your laugh, Rick. So I was, in a sense, we're giving they, the public what they we want. They must be taking the mickey. But this is a picture I found in today's copy of the Sun. So if if uh, you're listening at home and you want to know what the picture looks like, rush out and buy a copy. Only forty p. Yeah. And uh, it, are we sponsored by the Sun? <laughs> <laughs> we do white van man. Exactly. <laughs> it immediately <laughs> straight away this because bear in mind, right? It is one of the world's biggest rock stars. Okay. Just check out the face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fantastic! Look at that. Oh, that is Michael Stipe. Oh dear, with sort of glass, I'm looking like I don't know some sort of Nazi officer. That's not libelous. <laughs> that's not libelous. Mike, you, in your opinion, Michael Stipe. Yeah. He's outside there during the press conference yeah. for Peter Buck's. It's not a good picture. I love. I think I love R.E.M. I and mean, I love Michael Stipe. I think he's a lovely man. But that's a bad picture, isn't it? He's, he's got just, big glasses on and yeah. stubble. Obviously, he's got bald He doesn't appear to be looking at anything. He's <laughs> no, looking right he's beyond like, everyone else. Can yeah. you see that? Carl? I tell you, what he looks like he looks like Zig. I think from Zig and Zag. <laughs> It looks like well, he's a muppet go. made of foam. Oh, love it. Nice the, to see that game the, come back. Yeah, the, 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 the medium success. of radio. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what a good picture that is. I hope you enjoyed it. Coming up soon, we've got <laughs> Sir David of Bowie, <laughs> Nicholas Cave, uh, <laughs> and Travis Flowers in the Window again. <laughs> Play a song. Uh, Aerodynamic on XFM 104.9. It's all right. Right, yeah. Uneventful, wasn't it? Really? <laughs> so, like, I left a sequencer going. A <laughs> yeah, <while. laughs> popped out for a coffee. Yeah. I don't want to diss the funny little French lads. Sure. But, uh, you know. Try harder. Are they French? Yeah, oh god, yeah. Sorry. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Do you speak much French, Rick? I speak un <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I can ask, where is the Tourist Information Bureau? And, um, are. Uh, I like, I can express my preference in music tastes, yeah. and I can order an Orangina, and that's all I can do. I, I know, um, yeah, blonde, press the on, I think, that means, um, draft your friends. <laughs> <laughs> to, to Emily Music Folk? Oh, that's <laughs> filthy. So <laughs> that means, Carl. No, go on. Really dirty. <laughs> really dirty. To Emily Music Folk. Yeah, you dirty. <laughs> you, <laughs> you, you, you filthy little f <laughs> Frenchy. <laughs> All right. But, um, do you know? Do you, want, do you know much French, Carl? Um, have you got any fromage? <laughs> <laughs> That'd work. That That's cheese or fish? <laughs> it's, it's cheese. cheese. Or it's cheese. Would you not care which one you were given? You like both. I it's think. The, I think that's a whole different kettle of poisson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just think when you're in, in a country, you should have a, have a little go. <laughs> yeah, well, well, that's a very little go. Yeah. You, you mean like football hooligans have a little go? What do you mean? <laughs> you know, try and have, have a go at their, uh, yeah. their language. And well, what I do is I go in there and I point and talk a bit louder than usual in perfect English. <laughs> and if they don't get it, I go mental. <laughs> exactly. Securing the fact that I've tried my best and now I'm in a laugh. <laughs> and oh. that is, the, that is the, the prerogative of all Englishmen. Or just yeah. point. Point and shout. Yeah, yeah, point and shout. Don't forget, you, you know, because you can never be foreign if you're English. Anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. No, they're speaking funny. Just remember that. Yeah? Yeah. God save <laughs> <man. laughs> Sorry, go on then. You were gonna say something else. Yeah. Um that's the picture you showed me. Yep. Is that I wish we could post one on the website of Carl. Remember we won that we won an award ages ago. I, what is it called? The British Radio Authority Award. Yeah. And um we made Carl get in the picture and he was a bit medicine, a bit it, it came with But his head is perfectly circular. <laughs> I put a coin on it, and it, and only the ears popped out from behind the coin. Isn't it perfectly round? Isn't I mean, it? W when you've been saying I've, I've got a round head, I was a bit like, yeah, everyone has. Stop having a go. Yeah. And I saw this picture last week. I thought, God, he's right. Can we? Can we? Can't we just pop it on the XLM website? I'd rather not. I'll go on. Just Steve, get someone. Have you seen that that man in a jar without a brain? <laughs> 
Sorry, you have, you have, is that something? Is that a product you can buy? Is <laughs> <laughs> in like Sainsbury's? Uh, is it a dream you had yesterday? And you wonder if you can. Can I? Uh, yes, hello. Um, could you make my dream into <laughs> reality, <laughs> please? <laughs> oh, we can't actually, sir. <laughs> in uh, plastic would be good. <laughs> Sorry, what, what do you mean? In I'm the going, future, you'd be able uh, to download your dreams and then just like act them out again, probably in the year two thousand or something. Mm. Yeah. Soothsayer. No, there's some museum somewhere. Yeah, that's got this little fella who was born without a brain. And he's in a jar, and it's just like he's got a really round head. Right. <laughs> and when I saw this picture, I thought, God, it, it, it just reminded me of this little fella yeah. in a jar. Oh, and <laughs> what do you mean he's born without a brain? He was born without a brain. So it's a baby. Uh, he's not a little fella. <laughs> yeah, but it's weird. Do you know the difference? Do you, do you have conversations with like people in prams thinking that fella's little and he doesn't talk much? Yeah. You know babies aren't like little people. Well maybe... Well they are little people but I mean they're not, they're not very small adults. Oh. They're not like midgets. They don't do a job of work is what we're <laughs> saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're very, there. What do you mean? I didn't read about it, I just saw the picture. And this is where you're going wrong, Carl. This is always your mistake. You see the picture, you don't read the little caption. But what do you mean? How do you, you think guess at what you think the meaning is? But how did you know he didn't have a brain? He said something like the brainless man. <laughs> Yeah, but people say that about you. It doesn't mean you, literally you haven't no, got no, a spinal cord. I, I, I bet somebody's seen it and, and knows what I mean. It's a famous picture. Alright, right? call in 08700 800 1234. Once again, uh, you win a prize if you can tell us what Carl is talking about. <laughs> Just in general. It's an ongoing competition. <laughs> We're trying to find some CDs to anyone who knows what Carl is talking about. <laughs> Stereophonics, Vegas, two times. Well, we've had calls confirming that there was indeed, um, a fetus or, or a stillborn child. A pickled born, baby. A pickled baby. No wonder it died. Uh, born without a brain. Um, but everyone has, um, you know, pointed out that it wasn't a little fella. <laughs> it certainly wasn't a little fella. <laughs> oh, no. But because it had been in the jar for a long time, I think it had aged a bit. <laughs> <laughs> what are you basing you, that on? You do carry on growing, yeah. 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 Well, your ears and your nose. Your ears and your nose. And your eyes don't grow, so, uh, yeah. you could probably, uh, yeah. I'll dig it out for you. Yeah. Imagine if, if, like, there was an experiment where they were raising a child just based on the information that we said on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. kind of a person it was like would they download, be? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what it kind just, of information would they And have? it took everything literally. Exactly. And I think, yeah, there was no, there's no irony or, uh, yeah, it was just. They just, everything we said they assumed was fact. Everything and, and that Carl said. And they any question, was fact. any question it had about the world, it could only ask Carl. Exactly. And it was. See, now, his... this worries me because without wishing to be disrespectful in any way, Carl, you know I think you're the best man on earth. When you have a child, we could be in a situation a bit like that. Do you know, is it a concern for you, do you think, that, like, when your son's growing up or your daughter and they're asking you questions, you're conscious, I mean, you yourself have admitted that yeah, you, have a, you have a sphere of knowledge which you are an expert on. Ask your mother. You say, ask your mother. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> that's great, fair enough. That's good. And I'd play with it. I think I'd be a good dad. Yeah, cool. I think you would. But I wouldn't be the one who's shouting at it. No. No. Who would you get to shout at? Probably Windsor Davis. <laughs> <laughs> He'd be good, wouldn't he? You are a little man! <laughs> well, you know, I'd tell it the rights and wrong. You don't have to be a really bright person to know the rights and wrong in the world. Yeah. No. I think you are bright, Carl. You are. And at what point in their, um, in their life would you tell them about the evolution of the baguette? <laughs> <laughs> Which you told us. Or the story of the bee. Yes. That you sco <laughs> scored once. Or the two it. children. Would you ever get them to meet as <laughs> yeah. maybe like that they could be godparents? <laughs> the, uh, the, the, the friends you had at school. Yeah. With webbed the, hands. The, <laughs> big heads and big weird heads. hands. They weren't my friends. That weren't friends. Oh, I wish we could track them down. Oh, that'd be great. I imagine they're in a zoo. <laughs> 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 oh, wow. Oh, yeah. two big That's jars. Part, yeah. Two big jars. Industrial strength jars. Oh, dear. Man. Guess what? Go on. Um, this is one of our last shows. We're going away, I'm afraid, on the, um, 4th of May, isn't it? I can't remember. That's our last show, the 4th of May. Um, yeah, not forever. I, I brought a downer on the whole thing then, yeah. didn't I? There's people cheering. Well, guess who's taking over from us? And I found this out. I was watching Liquid News the other night. Right. No one had called me. Zoe Ball. Well, she's a good presenter, but is, is this confirmed? I don't know. How should I have said that? Is this true? Uh, yeah, I think so. Well, yeah, you've done it now. Could yeah. She was in the other day, you watched it on the telly, so... Yeah. But what annoys me is, this is rather like when we got, according to last week's uh, Media Guardian, we got wrapped for, uh, saying the word cock on the radio. And, um, oh. what we never did, did we? That was, we had to read that on the internet. We yeah. never, never told us. That, that. that just slipped out of your mouth, didn't it? What's that, cock? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so anyway. And, um, now we don't even get told face to face that Zoe Ball's gonna take over. Yeah, but it was only, like, sorted out the other day, and then uh, when I saw you. We're allowed to say Ball, aren't we? Yeah. When I saw right. you yesterday, I said, yeah, it's. So we're not allowed to say 
Oh. No, no. I'm not going to say the word. And we're not going to say the, we're, we're not allowed to say the, we are allowed to say the male bird is a cock. We're not allowed to say the other yeah. one. But we are allowed to say ball. Yeah. What if her and her dad, Bobby, uh, would they be, would we be able to say a pair of balls? Would we be able to say that? And uh, I don't know. I don't I think he's part of the deal. <laughs> so you don't need to. In fact, if, if she's listening, call in and confirm it. We'd let her on the air, won't we? As long as she doesn't swear. Yeah, don't be rude. Yeah, don't be rude, Zoe. No. Yeah. <laughs> don't I mean, be cheap, basically. Better warn as well not to leave too much, nothing lying around. Cos it'll be gone. <laughs> Especially if it's scag. <laughs> Richard Ashcroft, Science of Silence. Steve, if there was a record of the week, that would be a record of the week. You're a big fan, I know. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Let's make it record of the week. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's record of the week. Richard Ashcroft. Excellent. Science of silence. Brilliant. No one gives us anything anyway. Are these pluggers, they come in. We get things like homemade bands that they've pressed it in their garage. Yeah. You can hear their mum in the background going, what are you doing? <laughs> exactly. Mum! <laughs> recording this for XFM! <laughs> yeah. 104.9, which is your way, Steve Merchant. Carl Pilkington. Carl, what have you got for I us? I was just thinking, the irony is, we're the only people on this station, I think, who play their own records, aren't we? I know. Oh, there's loads of people who do. Rubbish. John Kennedy plays what he wants. Yeah, he's on, in yeah, the he's on, yeah, he's on he three o'clock in the morning, no one's up. up. Zoe, on drive, she plays some yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, what do you mean, what does she play? Yeah. Fat Boy Slim, probably. Here's another remix. You know. I won't say who it's by. Christian <laughs> plays some of his own. Does he? Yeah, so. Yeah, but they're probably novelty songs, aren't they, buddy? <laughs> right, listen, right, um, yeah, New Year and all that. Um. <laughs> <laughs> He's great, isn't he? Rock really? Busters, rock Busters is on the way, we're getting some good stuff coming in. I have so. to say, I'm, I'm amazed. Every answer I've had so far has been correct. I listen to the clues, I've got no idea. And I know you, Carl, I spend time with you. Have I you know seen you the XFM listeners? <laughs> well, of course they're the same as Carl. Sure. Of course they've got the same mindset. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Right. Uh, so what did you do for New Year, incidentally? Well, I met, I cocked it up a bit. <laughs> You're joking. Go on. You're joking. Go. You're joking, mate. Go on. I went and, uh, booked the <laughs> You table. got the wrong day. No, I went. <laughs> <laughs> booked a table at a restaurant that was shut. <laughs> right? What? I booked a, a table at a restaurant, and the one that I called, it wasn't the one. The call had been diverted. So Suzanne said, call them up and see what they're serving, right? Because I forgot to do that when I booked the table, right? <laughs> That's so, great anyway. So got, because the thing is, right, it's a restaurant in Covent Garden, but they've got one in Victoria. But when they answered and they said, no, 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 Victoria, I thought that was the person who was answering the phone. Do you know how some people say the name? Right. Right? So then when I called them up and said, what you, you thought, saying? You thought he sounded a bit funny. Right? <laughs> so, uh. I'm confused, Carl, but probably not more. Well, no, it was no a brother knew would have been okay, on the It was a day. branch of a, um. All right, all right, all right, 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 you want to give the restaurant away. So he phoned it up, there's one in Common Garden. They answered the so phone. It's not, the restaurant's not called No, 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 No. No, no, they, they are, they, they said, No, 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 Victoria. Why can't we <laughs> name the restaurant? I don't know why. <laughs> are we it's scared? not libelous. Are we scared that, like, are you scared people are going to sort of see you in there because it's your regular haunt? <laughs> no, it's just that, you know, you got to pay for stuff, haven't you? Right. I mean, it's. Okay, anyway, so you've I got- I mentioned it before New Year, but it's not- So did you go all the way to the restaurant to find out that it was closed? No, no, no. What happened is- I Was that the name of the restaurant again? <laughs> <laughs> right. The restaurant's <laughs> called Christopher's. They've got one in Common Garden, they've got one in Victoria. He right. phoned up, he went to book, it's a lovely restaurant, I've been there often, I recommend it to him. He phones up, he says, can I have a table for new, uh, new Year? He said, no problem, sir. Right? And then, uh, so then I said, oh, you better call up to see if they'd, to see if they've got any haddock on the, <laughs> uh, menu. And he went, hello, and they went, hello, uh, Christopher's. Victoria went, Victoria? They went, yeah, he went, oh, no. That's it, innit? So then, I just said, no, forget it. I'm not going all the way over there. Right. So I cancelled it, right? So, <sighs> when I called up Suzanne, said, look, I made an error. Uh, the place was. we were going to is shut. Was she so, surprised again, or? So I'm not going, <laughs> so she said, oh. Try some other places, and I did. They were all booked up, yeah. right? I was fed up anyway. I ate New Year. It's always like this, isn't it? So, <laughs> so uh, I said, look. You know the common factor in all these stories? <laughs> you hate Christmas, you hate Christmas, it's you hate New Year. It is you. Right. Yeah. So, I said, I'll sort something out. Yeah. So I went to Tesco. Leave it with me. Went to Tesco's, boots went to were Tesco. shut. Yeah. Got, a, got a lovely plate of condoms. Did you just stay in and play with the, her birthday? <laughs> <laughs> just blowing them up. Yeah, all I've done, look, looks, I've done some balloons. <laughs> well, it, it was, I think we did stay in. And I watched, uh, that thing that, you know, 100 Greatest Moments, which was annoying me. Did you see, um, there was a nudist on it. You know how I feel about them. Mm, yeah. Right? Um, did you man, see him? Man with two knobs. There was a man with two knobs on it. And, uh, a nudist who, uh, 
just like wanders about the house. But it said, it said, uh, and when he visits people, uh, they, I was thinking, who, who lets him visit? I go, exactly, yeah. But, yeah. But, but he must go there with trousers on and go, hello, lovely to see you. Can I just pop all these off? <laughs> well, not really, no. And I'll tell you what, what annoyed me the most, he had a white sofa. Hey, if you were a nudist, you'd get, you'd get a darker one. <laughs> right? So anyway, right, so we ended up watching that. That annoyed me. And then, um, I was tired by about 11 and I said, oh, let's go to bed. And she said, you can't. And that annoys me, the fact that, because it's New Year, you've got to stay up. And it's like, well, why? Can't we just, you should bring it forward, so in case you want to- To quarter to ten, quarter to ten. <laughs> well, you say, yeah, well, you stay up and it's like, my eyes were dead heavy and I was like, oh, I, I want to go to sleep. So just stay up and then it's midnight and you go up in New Year, then you go to bed. Yeah. Well, not everyone, Carl. Uh, Some people have a little party. Uh, um, so- So it's over with anyway. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So- oh, yeah. Are you 86 years old? <laughs> 86 <laughs> minutes. Do you ever enjoy- okay, you never seem to have any fun, Carl. This is what disappoints- this is what worries me. I feel like you're gonna die- You're here, young, you're, right? you're here, Carl. With us two, we've got three, as I was just saying to Steve, three of the greatest comedy minds ever in one room, and Steve pointed out since the goodies. True. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I mean it should be party central. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, right, so this is when I spent time thinking of new ideas. Right. So that's when I came up with, uh, what did I come up with? Rituals. Yeah. Ah, uh, this is about, uh, it's good to have a flathead in India. Hello, yeah, just for yeah. us, past Just for us, yeah. It's good to have a flathead in India. Is that it? Um, well what they do is they put wood round your head and sort of clamp it and the flatter head you've got apparently the more attractive in some part of India, can't remember. So that's like a, that's a ritual. So I don't know where to start with this. No. Well leave it, leave it. Um, we've, we've, we'll be doing that, well we've done it. That's, that's so that was the this first week. one, wasn't That's it? part of this week! <laughs> right, we've uh, also uh, got, um, we've also got the Do We Need Em, which yeah. we carried on from last year, okay, which is finding out, thing. you know, what animals we need in the world, which ones we can get rid of, I'm talking to experts and that, finding yeah. that out. We're doing Rockbusters, that's on the way, we're getting emails in. And, uh, what do you think of that then? What do you think of that then, of course? <laughs> I love this that he treats this show like it's a checklist for what he's got to pack for holiday. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's, you just go, sun cream, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's all like, it's done. Look, look at his face. No, but I try and come up with stuff that people will remember and go, that's interesting, I'll tell my mates that in the pub. Another one I'm, I'm thinking of doing, do you know the film Around the World in 80 Days? Ooh. Around the World in 80 Gervais. And yeah, what I do, I give you like little, uh, things like little bits of information about countries, so that if you go, you go like, oh, I don't want to go there. This is terrible thing to say, and I apologise. I, I, I can't think of the PC word for it, but I think Carl is slightly retarded. Yes, I was just going to think. I was just thinking the same. Yeah, yeah. Is there something we can do about that? Is just play a record. Just keep the. Could we get ourselves registered as a charity? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Badly drawn boy, born again. On XFM, one hundred four point nine. I was just sorry. I was just looking to see if that's a new single. It looks like it probably yeah, is. Yeah, if that's of interest to you, it's a new one. Yeah. There we go. So our first of our um, regular features with Carl, we've got Rockbusters. That's rolling. There's uh, people coming in. They're, they're getting them right. I don't. I don't understand well, myself. Well, as ever, Rick, you'll be uh, you'll be amazed and confounded. So I don't know the answer, and I haven't looked at the answers. I, I just like that moment. It's like when you go down Christmas and you're excited about a present, and it's like some condoms. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I love that that, <laughs> yeah, that moment. Yeah. Um, I, right. just, I don't know how he's going to top that next year. I don't know how he's going to top that. All I can think of is some <laughs> corn plasters. <laughs> um, right. Yeah, it's all right, love. The batteries are included. Got you a pumice stone. <laughs> right now. Do we need them? Do we need them? It's something we started a few weeks ago, uh, we're always talking about animals and insects and that, and um, it's like, you know, if you took an animal out of the world, would, would we have problems, right? Would it That's make any difference? difference? Yeah, would it make any difference? We That's did jellyfish what? last time, didn't we? Yeah. We sorted that out. The woman said we've got to keep them. We do uh, need them, because turtles eat them. Yeah. Um, so, I've moved on. Octopus. Do we need the octopus? Yeah. Let's find out. Working through um, a load of animals, right? That uh, and finding out whether we need them or not, right? Right. Because like jellyfish, to me, I'm a bit puzzled by them. I don't really know why we need jellyfish. And I spoke to some experts. Eat them. 
What? Turtles eat them. Yeah, I know, but do we need turtles? Do you know what I mean? It, it goes on and on, doesn't it? We need humans. Well, you know, I mean, that, I might get to that bit, but yeah. I need to sort out the animals first. I've got all that on. So, the thing is, I've, I've left the jellyfish. We know we need them, right? right. So, octopus. Yeah. Right, I know they're pretty brainy. Incredibly brainy. Um, a story that I heard, I don't know if it's true, but uh, there was some science lab somewhere, right? Yeah. Where they had some octopus in it, and they had some crabs. Yeah. And at night, the octopus... It was like getting a bit bored on its own in the dark and that, and they, they sort of come alive in the dark, don't they? Yeah. They like the dark. Yeah. And the octopus had, like, had its eye on the crabs, and at night when it's dark, it was getting out of its little cage, crawling along the floor, getting in the crab's cage, getting them out and eating them. I don't doubt it. We put jam jars with the lids on with crabs in, and they'll open the jam jar and... You're joking? Yeah. You and I sometimes struggle with them. <laughs> yeah, we don't do it. R well, well, you don't do it really, really tight. But all oh, right, so they're not that clever then. Well, they would if they were strong enough. They'd open it, but just not that strong. Oh, that's mad. Right, I also know that uh, if they get hungry, they they eat their own legs. Yeah. 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 Uh, they death. No, I don't know. I'm, yeah. I don't really know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. They don't live very long. Um, they can squash themselves into small jugs. Oh, yeah, they can go in a demijohn through the narrow neck and that. Why Why do they need to do that? Because they're the sort of crevices and holes that they're hunting for crabs and things through. So, would they be better if they were smaller? Do you know what I mean? Well, I don't know. I really don't know. If it's... Yeah. But octopus, then, if, if Noah said to you, you know, we're, we're, we're having a clear out, yeah. We've got too many animals to look after in that in the sea, taking up too much room. Right. Do we need them? I think there's other l less useful things in the sea than octopus. Limpets, they could go. Limpets? Just, yeah, they just sit on a rock and do nothing for 50 years. But they're not getting in the way, then. How big are they? Well, not very big. Yeah, you see, I, I might come round to them, but I, I, I never think, oh, you know, I'm sick of seeing these limpets. Whereas octopus, you know, crawling about, opening jam jars and that. You'd never see them, though. They're pretty, really rare. Well... If we get two or three caught a year, it's, a, you know, it's quite amazing. Do we need them? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Well, we'll just have to keep them, then. What is your favourite word? Uh, I don't think I've got a favourite. Because you only use them when you need to, don't you? I don't just go about saying the same word. So, uh Well, alright. Yeah, it's not my favourite, it's just that it does the job. It's, it does the, the necessary job for that time, doesn't it? <laughs> it's like, how are you? I'm alright. It's a greeting. What about, um I think serendipity was voted England's favourite word. Never used it. No, stupid word. Who decided that? I don't know, it was a poll, but I've ever suggested things. I'm, I can't believe people coming up going, um, very well, mm, so <laughs> Thanks for asking. So, yeah, but, yeah. but the thing is, say if it meant, oh, I'm fed up, would it still be the best word? Is it based on how it sounds and how it's put together or what it means? I think it's... everything. But then loads of words are being left out on, you know, which are probably brilliant words and they're not getting a look in. Such as? Uh, well, like that one, fed up. I'm fed up. It two, sums two it words, up, doesn't it? Two well, words. two, you know. Uh, it just sums it up. When someone goes, how are you? You go, I'm fed up, me. Sick of it. It's another good one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we get to it. Come on, to it. Some of your other favourites, right? I've had enough. It's just all stuff. These like aren't words. They're <laughs> phrases. <laughs> they're uh, all negative. They're yeah. all whinging. These aren't exactly. These aren't words. What's your favourite thing? My favourite thing to do is moan. Yeah, that would be the. Well, it's not one word. It's loads of words. Fed up. Sick of it. Ah, oh, enough. Ah, oh, <laughs> jeez. Whinge should be your favourite word. Yeah. Whinge is a good word. I like NGEs. Mm. Lozenge. <laughs> whinge. Flange. Yeah. What is your least favourite word? Uh, it might be serendipity. <laughs> that would be up there for me. I'll tell you what, that would be up there for me. Uh, probably that like a... French words that have made it into the English thing. Blamange. Just, just... There's an unge, there's an unge there. <laughs> so, you know... How would you dislike it? How would you dislike a blamange? <laughs> but just, just, you know, as if we haven't got enough words in our books. 
Go on. Like... I was thinking about, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Alf alphabet, right? Why have we got that many? When other countries get by without that many letters in it. We got more words than any other yeah, language well, as well. but that's because we got more, le more letters. Well, I don't know So if we've created a headache, I reckon you could at least half it. Well, you probably could half it. Well, you only use about half a dozen of them. No, but stuff like an X, you look at words that have got X in, and they're always words that you go, what does that mean? How's someone come up with that? <laughs> That's how it comes across to me, and it, there's loads of big words, it's like dinosaur names. It's like, well, look, nobody was about when they were knocking about, so let's You've make up some- You've learned that, Let's make up some names for them using the letters that hardly get used. They've all got Y's and X's in them. <laughs> yeah, they have, yeah! That's what I'm saying, it's like, well, let's use it for that. Yeah. <laughs> So you, 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 you just, it's not so much what is your least favourite word, you just don't really like just, most just, of the words. Just, say, just cut down the words. Stop adding. Stop adding new words. I get by, I don't know how many words there are in the world, but I reckon I hardly use any of them. Well, I'll tell you what, this year's word must be podcast. Yeah, but it's- That'll be in the dictionary and uh But it's made up, innit? It wasn't here before, it's just another one. This is what I'm saying about- But what else would you call this? You know, just there broadcast. is a new concept called podcasting. It yeah. is a podcast. But it's also a broadcast. We had a word for it. It's still a broadcast. Yeah, but they go, oh, you're a broadcaster. Oh, what, what radio station? No, I don't work on a radio station. I, um, I, um, I do a radio show, but I don't understand. Well, I do a radio show and I upload it on, I don't understand. It's called a podcast! Done! <laughs> Here's another idea. Go Add on. a new one, get rid of an old one. Last one in, first one out, or whatever. Do it that way. That's a good way. What would you get rid of then? So we brought in podcast this year, but what, <laughs> but what uh, word would you lose? Well, uh, what's the name? Those birds that died out. Dodos. Get rid of it. <laughs> if the bird's gone, the word can, surely. <laughs>
Unless it's really That is sensible. Dark. That is very good advice. No. That's brilliant advice well, for anyone is, listening. Never go to the doctors. Unless it's really bad. But that's why a lot of people, particularly working class people, you know, um, die because they don't want to bother the doctor or they're mildly embarrassed or they don't know, um, symptoms, bad symptoms. Go to the doctor if, 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 you, if you're not sure about something. Like, you were terrified to go and have your prostate. Still not been. Not doing it. Why not? I wish you wouldn't talk about it, because now Suzanne will listen to this, and she'll go, oh yeah, you haven't been, and start dragging it up again. But why are you worried about a, a little, uh, a, a qualified I doctor? I don't know what they're doing up there. What? They what just pop the- What are we in? They- <laughs> What are you talking about? They pop their finger up. That's what I mean, though. Why? Well, it's 2006. Yeah. Why are they still using the index finger? <laughs> what, would, would you prefer the forefinger or the thumb, would no. you? No, what I mean no! is, we've got- Or a thumb on a stick, some kind of thumb on a stick, you-, you Yeah, would you prefer it to a be- A mechanical thumb, a, a robot thing. thumb. Why isn't it just a little camera? Or something that- They have- Well, they well, put the camera up if, if they initially discover something. But just put the camera up straight away- if No, they don't the need visit. to. They pop the finger up, feel that the prostate isn't swollen, and wiggle it around a little bit, up your- uh, 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 your back passage. They- What I are you worried about? I, I don't think- they, they need to do Are you embarrassed? Are you embarrassed about being in a room with your trousers around your ankles and a little fella popping A his... little bit, yeah. Why? And the other thing is, it's not just that, is it? So, <laughs> you go in there, they check your heart out and that, which to me is the most important thing, because that's what keeps you going, isn't it? <laughs> yeah! Right? You've got to go there, you yeah. sat on the bus, stressing out, thinking, oh, in less than half an hour I'm gonna have a finger up your ass, <laughs> right? <laughs> what is the problem And you go though? in, they check your heart, they probably- <laughs> Check your testicles and that. What's up with that? They check your testicles, yeah. That's yeah, but it's all building, and you, you've sat there going, oh, soon that'll, that'll be happening. Yeah. And that's what puts me off. So if they just came round when you were asleep, <laughs> Suzanne just let them in and goes, he's over there. Right. Yeah. And they crept up and went, <laughs> bang. You, you go, what are you doing? That. I just don't understand why they don't teach you how to do it yourself. How can they- <laughs> Wow! can <laughs> they Imagine you, squatting in a corner, with one hand on your bollocks and the other finger up the arse, going, it seems to be alright. Carl, you don't understand the phrase a stitch in time saves night. I don't think you should be doing any kind of invasive medical research in your own human body. But, but then- Who knows what trouble you're gonna cause? No, but then at you least- You would get stuck. Yeah. You would get stuck. If Susanna come out, your fist would be up your own arse. <laughs> XFM 104.9, lovely that one. Brilliant, isn't it? The acoustic version of Just Like Heaven from yeah. uh, The Cure's uh, like double it. CD. I'm loving it, loving it, loving it, loving it. Now, again, I broke the rules in the week. I met up with Carl. Oh, I had lunch with him. And uh, we were chatting and having a, having a cup of tea. And it got onto one of Carl's favourite programmes was The Tales of the Unexpected. Ah, oh, of course. And all I can think is that he's probably the only person in Britain where they were unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to him, when that, that twist came in, he'd go, gee, I can't- Yeah. Oh, God. Kurt so it was the tree that did it. <laughs> and I mean, he was probably the only- and, I, and we were telling all these stories of horror and he liked horror stories. And I, and I told him this story, um, and I don't know if this would come across in the way, but I told him this story, um, it was a, it was a short, it was a horror short. This was a, a film you saw, was it? Yeah, yeah. And, um, what it was, it started off just there'd been a car crash, you see it's a horrendous wreck, and you saw it from the point of view of the person in the car, and he was calling for his mate and he was going, Dave. And he sort of he, he sort of looked over and saw a body without a head that had been thrown at. He goes, "Oh no, Dave, Dave!" And then into the f field of view came Dave, his mate, and looked at him with a look of horror. And then it sort of went black, and you realised that he was just a head, and it had been his body. Oh wow! Right? Yeah. And I said, then, then it came up at the end um, uh, at the uh, uh, executions in the French Revolution. Um, people experienced consciousness for you know, and he went, he went, oh. No, he said, you wouldn't, it wouldn't be for that long. And then he went, if it was a chicken it would work. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine remaking that film, but it's two chickens in horrendous car crash. <laughs> <laughs> Their would, own fault for driving me. <laughs> <laughs> it would work, no. No, he wasn't having that, yeah. no, it was too long. I think he said, how long was this film? Went oh, about five minutes, he went, no. <laughs> it would work if it was a chicken. <laughs> I like the way that Carly and something like when you t relate an incident like that, he's appalled and offended and annoyed by the people that made it, even though he's yeah. never seen oh, it. Oh, he's, he's, get, he, he's annoyed, yeah. Like, I, you have it. I wanna see it. I think it's a good idea. Yeah. But they should have thought it through a bit more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you have a favourite uh, Tales of the Unexpected, one that you remember particularly that shook you up? Yeah, we were talking about the one on, um, where uh, there's some woman in prison. Have you seen that one? I can't remember them all. Right. 
This woman's in prison. Yeah. And, uh, she gets a bit friendly with the guy who takes the dead bodies out. Right. And, uh, he says, I can get you out of here. So what you've got to do, right? You've got to, uh, I don't know, at midnight. When you, when you hear the bow toll, you know, that means there's a, been a, yeah. a dead body. Yeah, yeah, there's been a dead body. So what you've got to do is go into, like, the, uh, place where all the dead bodies are. Get on the, get in the first coffin on the right. And then I'll come along and carry you out and you can run away and escape. Yeah. Right? So she goes, yeah, all right then. So she hears the bell go. I'll, no, I'll, I'll, I'll bury you, right? And then I'll come, I'll come back later and dig you up. Right. Yeah, but That's that, the that point. It doesn't matter. It does matter. Trust me, Carl, it right, really okay. matters. Listen, I, I don't right. know if I'm gonna ruin this for people at home. Yeah. Can I just skip to the end? I would imagine that she gets buried and he doesn't come back and she has to get no, buried alone. Be better than yeah. that. Okay. Yeah. She, right. she, she does it, she gets into the coffin. Yes. Yeah, Go on. Right. So she gets in the coffin. And, uh, she's lying there for ages. She's she, buried. She can feel a bit of movement going on, so she's obviously, you know, being carried somewhere, so she's thinking, this is it, I'm getting out. And, uh, I mean, she's lying there for ages and thinking, why isn't someone coming and lifting the lid off this? Do you know what I mean? Letting me get out. So she's really bored. She gets a lighter out, right? Lights it to have a look at who she's lying on. It's only the fella who said she'd, he'd help escape. Oh. How bad is that? That is- <laughs> How bad is that? <laughs> So it is quite important that she's buried alive then, isn't it? In retrospect, you realise that the jeopardy is that she is buried alive yeah. and can't get out. Yeah. 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 It makes it so much worse, doesn't it, than just like lying in the morgue and going, actually, I'm getting out of here. Yeah. This isn't gonna work. Look at Carl's face, having told yeah. that, he's so pleased, his face is lit up, he's beaming like yeah. a child. Is Have that, you seen any? Is that your favourite horror thing ever? That, that's a good one. And um... Let's see if anyone knows what the finger is. When that bloke oh, was yeah. underground, wiggling we're, his finger. We were talking about one with, uh, some fella who's stuck in the ground or something. <laughs> There's a, this is a motif I noticed in the, your particular <laughs> favourite ones. Yeah. Right? People no. stuck in the ground. Go yeah, on. right, so she's, she... Uh, it's a fella, see, it? Yeah, it's, yeah, a fella stuck. Now, I seem to remember it just being his foot, to be honest, being stuck in a hole. And no, he was under the ground and he had a, he got a little thing out of the pavement and he put his finger up and wiggled it to try and attract attention. Then you see a woman come along and her stiletto hill just knocks his finger off. You see, I'm wondering if it's the same one as I saw. Yeah, it could be two like that, couldn't it? <laughs> it's a, it's, it's a, they were running out of ideas by the last series. It's a, it's a big theme in Hollywood. <laughs> or, um, what was that one you told me about with the, uh, with the porn? That was a good one. Oh, this was fantastic, right? <laughs> right. There was this, there was this, uh, Sorry, can I just check now? We're just remembering classic episodes of the Tales of No, the this, is, now, this is, this is, this is important. Well, I saw one, <laughs> right? I saw one, um, on Tales of the Space, right? And it was, um, uh, this, these two gents, um, uh, what they used to do, they look, look down the obituaries and they'd blackmail, um, the, the wife or the son of a, a dead eminent person, like might be a priest or a doctor or something like that, and they'd go and they'd say, he bought some, um, erotic, uh, um, stuff from us, um, before he died and he owes, a uh, uh, hundred guineas and all this sort of stuff. And, uh, and they'd pay up because it'd be so embarrassing. They just didn't want to say, just pay him, yeah. you know? And this one bloke said, um, who are these people? I'll meet with them. And he goes around there and he goes around and, uh, they go, your father, he goes, my father could not have bought any erotic material from you. And he did, he goes, he couldn't have, he's blind. <laughs> right? And that was the twist. And Carl went, so it was magazines, not videos then. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> now think about it, Steve. Is that so stupid? Well, presumably it was set in olden times because yeah. people, oh, the professional right. pornographers don't tend to call it, you know, <laughs> erotic material. <laughs> yeah. They tend to call it, you know, juicy jugs or whatever. <laughs> but more than that, I don't understand how a video is going to be any use to a blind person either. I know that you can hear the sound, yeah. Carl. <laughs> yeah. Look at him nodding like yeah. you caught me out. Yeah, what sound were you here? Do 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 Your meter needs looking at? Yes. Car. What's then? What's that? Then it's just noises. Occasional groans. Yeah. Right. You could listen through the wall at your neighbours. He does. I mean, that's why I save a lot of money. But I thought you were going to point out, Carl, that they could have had a braille porno. I hadn't thought of that. Feel the lumps on that. Exactly. Think about it, Carl. Think about it. You're excited now. Yeah. yeah. Your girlfriend's away, Carl. Yeah, the cheese grate is only under the cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> now she's a good looking lady. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we've got a uh, white van Carl. All oh, right. Dar uh, Sailor, poor misguided fool. Well, it's time. Well, go on. That time, isn't it? Yeah. Play go the on. jingle. Yeah. 
What in Van Man? Carl. <laughs> Brilliant. We called it at great expense, that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is where we just uh, hijack an idea from The Sun, which is um, White Van Man, where The Sun asks, um, in this instance, a cabbie by the look of it. Oh no, um, a fruit and veg shop owner. Ours is, ours is, uh, ours is slightly different because The Sun sort of like, um, uh, pick on a perfectly normal member of the public. Exactly. So that's where we've got the, yeah. <laughs> the upper <laughs> hand. Yeah. And, uh, they ask him about the, uh, you know, the hot potatoes. Uh, um, this week, Carl, my first question to you, well, you're just, your thoughts, please, on the criticism of the BBC over their coverage of the Queen Mum's death. What do you make of this? You're aware of all the criticism that Peter Sisson's Not asked and just probing questions? It, uh, no, I thought it was... wore a burgundy tie. I thought, uh, that's it, yeah, he just had a, it didn't show respect, he just had a burgundy tie on. See, that, that's not really not showing respect, is it? No, it's not. You know, you show your respect by sort of doing the news on it, giving her a, a, a bit of coverage, <laughs> and showing, you know, what a, what, what a good woman she was or whatever. Yeah. And then you move on to sport news or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I totally agree. I, I don't like the way everything's morbid. I was thinking about it. Um, it's like, um, you know, the way in birthday cards and that, people always put funny things in them. I think you should save things like that for funerals, for like, funeral cards and that, and and try and cheer people up at times when they're low. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Because on your birthday you're quite happy anyway, so you don't need a, someone putting a funny comment in a card. I think, you know, when you send well, what, a card- what would you- what would you suggest? Well, you know, uh um, Whoopee cushion but on the vicar's chair, what- what- how would you liven up the funeral? Just, just little- little things in the card, I mean, just writing stuff like, well, you know, at least you're still alive, or whatever. So as you're giving the eulogy- So, oh, that'd be good. So when- so suppose you know, someone's husband's killed in a car crash, you go around with some flowers and a little card and it says, at least you're still alive. Well, maybe something funnier than that. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe, like, if you got up to give the eulogy during a, a funeral, just wear a pair of comedy tits. Yeah. Or those glasses that are eyes on sort of yeah. springs. But why- have, why has everyone got to be so sad about someone dying? No, what, you know what annoys me is that when you see the people on television, they start members of the public, and they're crying about the Queen Mother, who was sad when anyone dies, sad when anyone na na dies. She was 102. And, um, what- you know, I mean, it's sort of like- I think they think they should cry. Well, I, there's a picture in the paper I today. I understand it. There's a picture in the paper today of uh, various people who were lining the pre, you know, the uh, the funeral uh, kind of route yeah. yesterday. And there's a picture of a, a very young child, maybe sort of five or six, on the arms of her dad, and her head bowed, and it says a, a, a young girl there weeps for the Queen Mother. And I was looking at it, and she, you can tell she's just tired. Well, she's just she tired and bored. It's so cry? transparent that it's not crying. It's Most just what are we doing? When their nan dies, exactly. You know, it's sort of like. Uh, but what is a five-year-old girl going to be? Why is she going to be crying? The Queen Mum said, oh, "I can't believe it." <laughs> yeah. Tiny tubbies? No. The <laughs> Queen Mum. <laughs> oh, not the tweenies. No, it's all in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like. <laughs> oh right. dear. I mean, yeah. I, I know. I'm sure you know. I don't know much about her. I don't know if she was a great woman. And obviously, you know, it's always sad when someone dies. But it's like it's interesting that there was a lot of tourists in that long line of people mm. that are now queuing for hours upon hours to see her yeah. lying in state, because it's clearly just people who want to be a part must of history. Must be gutting if you're over from Sweden and you find out that, you know, the Queen Mum's like, Oh, you well, must be devastated. You probably don't want to carry on with your visit. <laughs> exactly. Really. Okay, listen, Carl, um... I think we've covered that. What do you yeah. make of the, uh... <laughs> well, that bootleg's going under the name of, uh, um, Nothing Miss Jackson, I think, by, uh, Meats and Poultry. So there you go. I do love these bootleg things, because they're so pointless, but they're so enjoyable. Yeah, it's great. It's fun to do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're they're, really they're, good they're fun. great. But, um, not as much fun as White Van Carl. White Van Carl, absolutely. Um, do you want to explain the premise? Well, um, we take some uh, the son, ask someone else, and ask Carl. It's simple as that. That's the right. son have just taken a normal person, we flipped it. <laughs> We're gonna ask Carl the same questions about the week's news. Yeah, just basically your opinions, Carl, as ever. Um, what do you make of, well, obviously the big news, David Beckham's broken foot. Is this uh, a big concern for you? No, I mean, it's sad, you know, um, it's sad, it's sadder for him more than anyone, cause you know, to, to like, be in the World Cup is like the main thing for him, isn't it? Yeah. But he's still a young lad, and, uh, I don't think he'll give up, I reckon he'll still turn up, uh, he'll be alright, and, uh, yeah, good luck to the lad. You're not yeah. like David, I'm not gonna slag him off. <laughs> what <laughs> is <laughs> words? <laughs> he says that like he knows him. <laughs> like he's popping round for drinks later. <laughs> yeah, like we tried to stitch you up. Go but, on. But, um, obviously yesterday, was it yesterday, I think, maybe th maybe Thursday, uh, The Sun printed a big picture of, uh, David's, uh, foot mm -hmm. and encouraged everyone to touch it at midday, because hoping that this would somehow, um, if we all thought and prayed together, somehow that would help his foot heal. Do you, do you believe in that? No. Do you have any belief in that? No, you're going down the old, like, you're a gallery, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Sure. I know, it's, it's stupid. Yeah. I'm sure, I mean, it's nice effort and everything, it sort of 
cheers everyone up. Hold no. on. <laughs> you believe in ghosts and warlocks yeah. and um, licking toads. Uh, uh, wh why Why is that any more stupid and all those things? It just, it, it's not gonna work, is it? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Fine. It's rubbish. <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, what about this then? There's, uh, apparently now available 1.5 million pound apartments available on an exclusive ship which sails around the world. Yeah, it's like, uh, make of that? it's a huge thing and you just, you, you live on it and it's, I mean, in theory. How big, how big is it? It's, um, it's mental. Do you it's know like huge a town island. in the centre. Do you know how like people said that the Titanic was the biggest ship? Was that only then? They've got yes. bigger ones now, haven't they? Yeah. A lot bigger. Oil tankers are much bigger and... Yeah. No, but actual line is a big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was the biggest then, yeah. Because my mum told me that there was one that that was that was that big that it had like rough areas on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, 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 God! <laughs> oh. Don't go starboard. Oh God! No, but do you know That's what I mean. Right. It was like we're, a, we're thinking of moving. We're seeing yeah. the captain. We're thinking of moving to a nicer <laughs> area. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I've heard they're very rough in aft. <laughs> oh God! Oh, that's they fantastic. steal your tires. That ship's so big that was rough areas. Oh, how how big is this one that, that you're talking about? <laughs> uh, well, I don't know. It doesn't give me the spe specifications here, but they stay huge. huge. They're huge. Um, in theory, I mean, it's it's that thing with um. Uh, it's obviously marketing, but um, they're gonna um. Uh, solve uh, the uh, um, overpopulation crisis where soon we'll all be just be floating around the sea. Yeah, but yeah, <laughs> I can see that because I mean, <laughs> think about it, right? I've been talking to Ricky about it. I was hoping to buy somewhere in London, but there is no way in this world that I can afford it, right? Um, and you look at all the all the wasted space, like with the Thames. All it's doing is like collecting crisp packets and stuff and yeah. coke cans, and people have to clean it up. Whereas if you think if you got a load of boats on there, yeah, problem Perfect. solved. Yeah. Would you live Problem on a solved. Uh, what's his name did it, didn't he? Uh, what's that program? Is it Bergerac? Noah. Oh. <laughs> Bergerac? There was one where, where he lived on a boat. I think it's quite- was That it was a shoestring. Yeah, I, I'd give it a go anyway. <laughs> Noah! I'd like to see you, um, living in, in the air, maybe in a giant hot air balloon. Yeah, alright. But, um, no, the boat thing, um, cause it, it, it is gonna get bad as well, isn't it? They're saying that the water's melting or whatever. The water's melting, the, yeah. The ice is melting. Yeah. And, and it's gonna be more life. water and less land, so yeah. in the future it's probably gonna be the way we're gonna be living, isn't it? Have you seen that film Waterworld? Nah, I don't fancy it. Because that's that, what that's, that sort of predicts that, yeah. What, are they saying that the ice thing is exactly. out? yeah. But at the same time, um, I was thinking about this a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> if you get, I mean, I think I read that like, a big chunk of ice, uh, fell off one of the ice, uh, what do you call them? Caps. Ice caps. Something like, the th I think they said it's the size of the Empire State Building or something. Right. It, it snapped off and went into the water and it's melted. And they said, oh, it's bad news, you know, that, that, that something that size is melting. But the way I look at it, if something that size falls into the water, it's like a big ice cube and it's gonna freeze it up again. Do you, are you with me? Not that, really, Carl. Go on. Right, you get a giant ice cube yeah. the size of the Empire State Building, yeah. stick it in the water, yeah. it's gonna make, uh, that, it's gonna, Stick back on again, isn't it? Well, no. It uh, only on if again. it freezes up again. Yeah, well, it will it's freeze up. The water's well, gonna get cold again because you've just put a giant ice cube in the water. Well, so when you put <laughs> when you put an ice cube in a drink, the drink doesn't freeze, does it? No, the ice melts. If you put one the size of an Empire State Building in your glass of Jack Daniels, <laughs> it's gonna make it freezing. <laughs> It's not going in a glass of Jack Daniels, it's going in the ocean. I know, but I'm, that, you see, that I'm using my fables. Imagine a world. <laughs> Use your brain instead! Imagine the world, <laughs> imagine the sea, yeah. like the Arctic or whatever, as yeah. a glass of Jack Daniels. Okay. A big ice cube falls into it. Yeah. It freezes, it melts back on again. So it's, we're all right, I don't know why everyone's worrying. <laughs> oh, please, God, thank God for that, I was getting panicked. Oh, fine. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, that will happen. <laughs> Should we play some more music and then come back to work? <laughs> yeah, this is, this, this is better this, than ever. This is this dynamite, this week. My name here, yeah. on XFM 104.9, we're doing White Van Carl. Got another one there? Uh, well, it's just uh, another, your thoughts really on uh, the Queen Mum's uh, very British send-off that she was given this week. Yeah. What do you make of all those people queuing up to see her? Did you think that was incredible? Right. Well, what we said last week, you know, there was a, I, I don't quite understand why there's so many people there, um, who were like getting really upset. Do you know what I mean? Really upset crying and stuff and, you know, you can lose someone who's, r like, related to you and you don't, you don't cry like that. You sort of sit there and you think back to what you did with them and stuff and, and then that's it. But, um, <laughs> the Q thing, it was, 
wasn't it like miles long and stuff? Yeah. It was, yeah. Right, I was sat watching this with Susan. 12 hours, night. Kieran. Yeah. He never got to I'd, 12 hours. It did, but it that did. was the estimated time. No, but How long is a queue when they're just like, you know, walking along? Think how far you can sort of like, st you know, stagger in 12 hours. Incredible. It's been ridiculous. God. Yeah. But, again, you know, if they want to do that, it's their time and that, isn't it? And it's, yeah. It was at the weekend, so they, they could have, it's not as if they got out of work to do it. No. You know, I mean, they use their own time, so good on them. But I thought, right, what they could have done, remember when I studied Che Guevara? Yep. Yeah. Right? Um. And don't be offended by this, it was just an idea, because they did it with Che Guevara. Remember when they cut him up? Yes, they, they cut him up, yeah. What was the reason for cutting him up? Uh, well, they cut up Che in order to try and, um, would they, you, you, you told us that they were gonna send bits of his body to Fidel Castro and various other people, wasn't that right? Uh, uh, as, as a warning, wasn't it, though, to all the, the people, like, one to... Yeah, uh, my, my understanding was that they cut him up in order to, um, so they could bury him in different places so that there'd be one no shrine, there'd be, like, not, what, not one place that you could go to in order right. to... Well, to a little bit like that, a little bit like that, have, like, I six think cues. I see where this is going. Six cues, and it's like, number one, you can, you know, go and pay respect to her head, or whatever. Oh, God. No, but think, I just was thinking the way of, of speeding it up. I'm not having a go, I'm not, because they haven't done it, so it doesn't matter. God. But, they did it with Che Guevara. Yeah. Everybody would have felt like they've got close to her. Oh, and God. it would have speeded it up. No, I mean, but I can understand Can I just say that genuinely, Carl is not being disrespectful here. This is his best idea to, to cut down the queues. So don't phone in, he's not suggesting we should have done this, he genuinely he is. is. It's, well, but I mean, he's not doing it to be nasty or wacky or, or, you know, he thinks this is a good idea, so... Can just I just try to thought with Che Guevara, who was like a, a powerful man who did a lot for the world and what yeah. have you? Yeah, yeah. And... Have you, are you aware that I, I feel slightly responsible for this, because have you heard of the quote, um, a little knowledge is a dangerous thing? Yeah. Okay. Steve, next one. No, just, just, just a very quick question. I can understand those that have queued for 12 hours to see the head. <laughs> I'd be a little bit annoyed if I got there to find a toe. I'll tell you what, though. I'll tell you what they could do without chopping her up. They could put about nine queues. Each could see each hip she had. That's <laughs> true enough. Because she's, she's had about nine of them. Yeah. So it'd just be, uh, the, if you want to see the whole body, it's 12 hour queue. If you just want to see a couple of the hips. Here's another suggestion for you, I just <laughs> thought. Right? <laughs> but instead of everyone queuing to see her, why not put her on a trolley? <laughs> And wheeler past everyone else running. So <laughs> yeah, you could have you could have some students on rag week that you can buy it. <laughs> but when they're always pushing a bed, yeah. you know they could just run it along the oh, queue. No, that'd, that'd be, be that, fantastic. That'd be disrespectful. <laughs> right, as opposed to the chopping up. So sure. Right, but, but just just an idea. Just I apologise now. Anyone yeah, yeah. offended? Anyone offended? I'm sorry. But yeah. <laughs> okay. Finally, um, this is more frothy. Liz Hurley lying low apparently at Elton John's house to try and avoid the press. Now that she's had a child, that's a good mm -hmm. place to go to avoid the press. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Elton John's house. Yeah. Everyone seems to be friends with. Elton John. Yeah, what every they, celebrity they, they, they pop into Elton John's house? What is he running some sort but of? But it was like when Robbie Williams was a drunkard and a drug addict, he went to Elton John's. Yeah, yeah and it was the other fellow that went there as well. Was someone to you know to recuperate and uh, quite shoulder the crime? Is he, is he giving out false yeah. f passports? But I don't like, know if people have seen his history. He's not the man of you know. I mean, I know he's cleaned himself up now, but you know, and maybe yeah. that's it. Maybe he's got this kind of insight into uh, how to deal with celebrity. Yeah. What well, do you well, think? I think it's just genuine oh. mates with him. I think he's I just like, a friendly bloke. She's been doing too much lying low in the first place. That's part of the problem, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that, was five, five, Carl. that was a genuine joke from Carl there. And he's so proud of himself. Look at his little face. Too much lying low. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was no, my man, Carl. You, why, why can't she just go around to her mum and dad or something rather than Elton John where everyone's looking? Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's the point, isn't it? Yeah. So that was good, yeah. Very good, oh. yeah. Right, what music we got? We got, uh... Got a Flaming Lips. Flaming Lips, excellent. There's the, the classic Race for the Prize. Should have been a big hit, never was, sadly. Sadly. The Flaming Lips and Race for the Prize. Just playing that rich for everyone who emails us thing. We get a lot of emails every week, but uh, obviously don't really respond to them because we're very lazy people. But uh, we obviously appreciate it. And I play that particularly for uh, Claire, who's emailed in saying uh, her friend Sarah Prosser would like some Beatles. We're not going to play the Beatles this week, but uh, Sarah apparently loves us more than words can express. More than Carl could express. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm going to stop you there. <laughs> what turns you on, creatively, spiritually, or emotionally? Uh, learning. That's a nice answer. Yeah. Learning. Excellent. Learning Will you fun. say that? Yeah, but I, I've, I, I, everything you teach me, I take it in. It's just that sometimes I go, I don't, I don't get it. But that still counts as far as I'm concerned. Well, no, it doesn't. Learning is, uh, the knowledge is, uh, the, there must be some sort of retention. You can't say I've got a great memory for a second. 
You can't say that. You know, it has to stay there. And then, then knowledge has to be, uh, you know, uh, uh, applied. You can't just have all this knowledge that isn't applicable because it's useless. I mean, trivia is useless to a large extent. It's not real knowledge because it, it doesn't really help you in it, it, it practically. No, but there's a lot of that going on. You're always reading stuff that you go, I've just read that. It's got me thinking for a minute. It's not going to help me in any way, but it gets a reaction, doesn't it? Well, that's good, yeah. That's, 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 what, yeah, that's, 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 that's what, what art mean. does. And yeah, sometimes education's good for its sake if it really does inflame. But but then sometimes, like I've said before, you can know too much where it gets you down. Go on. Uh, I just was reading something about an octopus. That's that's like a killer octopus. Mm. And it annoyed me that this was knocking about now. Because <laughs> I didn't know, I thought they were quite friendly. <laughs> you, whenever you see them in cartoons and that, they're always happy, aren't they? And then suddenly, like, they've, they've sort of brought the whole sort of, uh, creature down. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> no, what do you mean? Well, just, just, you know, when, when you see them in films, they, they're running about and that, and everybody likes an octopus. <laughs> but this one that's on the, it, it was, it was your fault, really, because you told me about that frog that's going about killing people. No, I didn't say that. Uh, so I looked it up on the internet at, like, other creatures and stuff. Dot and com. there's, uh, yeah. There's, uh, some octopus that's in the sea, uh, and what it does, y you don't even have to, like, threaten it. It just spits in the water, and if that stuff gets on you, does you in. Again, I'm, I, mm. So in a way, it's good knowledge, because, I mean, I don't go in the sea anyway, because it's full of stuff like that, but that's <laughs> just reassured me that I'm doing the right thing. If they're knocking about, just gauzing everywhere, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you don't even have to be near one. You don't even know if it's been spitting and stuff. It can kill you. It just seems unfair. I haven't harmed it. I haven't gone near it. Why is it getting annoyed with me? It doesn't seem right. So that's where a knowledge has, has not helped that octopus out. Because now, when you eat them, I just think, yeah, have another one. Do you know what I mean? Get rid of them. <laughs> another conversation with himself. Another conversation with himself. What is your favourite curse word? Um, I don't, I don't think I, I do anything like that. I just, I think people can tell by my face when I'm like fed up. Uh, well, they know you're fed up because you're always whinging. Uh, I don't think I've got one. Uh, knobhead. <laughs> That sums everything up, and I think it's. But it you wouldn't call your nan a knobhead, would you? What would you call a nan? Uh, but she doesn't do anything to annoy me that much. But if she did, what would you say? If she really annoyed well, you. Well, knobhead's all right, isn't it? Because she, she, she sort of gets it. It's one of them things that everybody understands, but it's not too offensive. Right. What a knobhead! All right, you're getting into this, aren't you? It's, so that sums it up. But I don't, I don't really. Do you need one of them? What's that doing for you? It's better to think, in it? Like, okay, I've just slagged off that octopus, but at no point was a, a effing and jeffing about it. <laughs> After, you, you know how annoyed I am with it. I don't have to start swearing about it, and th that's, that's... What would you do, though, if you were swimming, right? It was a nice little thing, you were on holiday, right? And there's this octopus there, and you're going around, right? And, it, and you just see it start spitting at you, poison. What yeah, would you say well, to it? Yeah, well, it's too late then, isn't it? And I'd kick it. <laughs> and I'd say, you knobhead. I, I would, uh, but what's the point? What's the point in getting annoyed now? Because it's done its, it's done its stuff, hasn't it? <laughs> I don't know why you kick it and call it a knobhead <laughs> under the water. What is this octopus thinking? Oh God! Oh, okay, you fucking eight-legged shit. I'm you, not bothered. I'm not bothered. You, I don't know what you're you saying. Fucking, fucking cunt yeah. of a mollusk. I'm gonna just spit at you again. It's not bothered. You slimy little fucking boneless wanker. This is why the face Are you is still good. talking to the octopus? <laughs> it's a slightly truncated show, isn't it, today, Carl? We've got I don't like it. Trust. I don't like change and that's what's happened. I'm not you don't do you? You like Rain Man. Yeah. It really is like Rain Man. Uh, anything change? It, 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 it's got to get in a little routine. You can't. Uh, no, uh, I don't like to. I'm not like Suzanne's mum and dad and what have you, where routine cannot change no matter what. Like what? Well, we've talked about it where, you know, if it's a Tuesday, I'm having sausage, egg and chips no matter where I am. <laughs> that's, that's what they're like. Right. That's, yeah. what that's what they'll remember, actually. When I'm saying about stuff about Live 8 and all that, you know, people will remember 
If people said to a dad, you know, you remember Live 8? Okay, what day was it on? Tuesday when I had sausage and chips. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing changes. But the thing is today, normally we have a bit of a, you know, I know what we're doing where and all that and it's all sort of messed up. We don't usually know what we're doing where. We no. say, what should we do next? No, you but, go, what? but I know, like, Rockbusters has been done early. Right. So that's, that's normally done at that's really that throwing you, I think. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. I just uh -oh. don't, uh -oh. I don't like all this change and that. It's messing about, isn't it? Rain Man. Sayings and that. <laughs> um, stitching time saves nine. Don't, don't, uh, you know, I'm never gonna use that, I don't think, anyway. <laughs> okay. Suzanne You're doesn't. never gonna understand it fully, are you? Suzanne repairs me stuff anyway. It, <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't really matter. But what about the one, um, <laughs> about the one in, in greenhouses and that? that People who live one? in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. Yeah. What do you, what, that? Does that confuse you? You've never understood that one? No, that's, that's a lot clearer, isn't it? It's sort of saying, don't be chucking stuff about if you're surrounded by glass and what have you. Yeah, but don't forget, it, it's an analogy, it's a metaphor, it, it's not to be taken literally. It's not really just talking to people who live in glass houses. It's saying, uh, uh, uh Hang um, on, sorry, before you say that, Rick, I just, I'm intrigued to know if he's fully got to grips with this. Okay. Just give us your explanation again of what you'd take that to mean. Well, just don't be chucking stuff about. Really. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, if that was it, they'd just say no, no, that. No, no, but, but that saying's been around a lot longer than we think. That's when people probably did live in basic glass houses and stuff. No, no, whoa, 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 what, whoa, what, what do you mean whoa. now? Who now has ever what? lived in a Sorry. glass house? So this, they went, cavemen went from rock to a nice crystal structure, did they? That, what, what are you talking about? When did people live in glass well, no, houses? what they mean now, when, when that saying's used now, they mean sort of, you know, plasma tellies, <laughs> uh, ornaments. No, they don't. They're saying don't chuck stuff about because no, you'll break no, it. No, it's not about uh, damaging your own property. They don't mean you're inside the glass house throwing rocks inside your own glass it's house. It's a metaphor. It means don't be having a go at people if you yourself have got uh, uh, more to lose. Do you know what I mean? It, it means it, it. It could be. It could be anything. Don't don't start a war where you could come off bad as well. It's about how fragile your situation is. If you live in a glass house metaphorically, don't throw stones at someone else, because when he throws it back at you, your house is more easily damaged than his. Again, metaphorically. It doesn't mean that if you're living in a glass house, or in a house with other precious objects, you don't, in your own home, throw bricks about. Because that would be a very specific audience that I was trying to reach, that phrase. I mean, let's be honest, okay. what kind of a mental case? you know case? what, I think we've got the crux to this, right? I, I think I can answer, right, right. Carl? What is an analogy? Uh, it's sort of like a little story told quickly. <laughs> Isn't it? Alright, here we are then. Oh, oh. oh, Scorpio Rising, Death in Vegas, on XFM 104.9, about five past one, Saturday. Here we are again then. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. <laughs> I can't believe our luck. <laughs> oh, alright, Carl? Alright. Yeah, so what are we doing today then? Producer. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> well, sorry, I always laugh instinctively when I hear Carl's name and that word. Yeah. It. Right, well, why is that? Because it is, I, I had to come up with some new features again for this new year. Okay. I'm excited. What have you come up with? <laughs> what what we Oh. We, we are the backbone of this show, Carl. Yeah. We're gonna, we're tell, we're tell you, we've come up with some pretty, what's yours first? Right. Go on. Right, well, Rockbusters. That's old, that's not a new feature. Yeah, but we'll keep it. Right. Another, so another you're bit. just keeping an old feature. Okay, okay. okay. No, it's an old favourite. I'm sure there's a lot of people that are going, phew, I was worried that you'd lose Rockbusters. Rick, I've just come up with a new idea. Why don't we just play some records that we like? There's a new idea for the 2003. Yeah. Oh. oh, you know what we can't, Steve? Because the live was out of order. Oh yeah, the record live, but we can't get in there. We're we, not allowed to get in there. We had to scrounge something from Capital Gold. So anyway. Right. Go on. So we got rock busters. What are they doing with the library? Are they put getting some records in that we want to play? <laughs> Is that their new idea? I know. Let's get some records in. Yeah, they they're sending play. out the uh, the Gina G. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Four non blondes. Goodbye. <laughs> Give that to Foxy. Go on. So sorry, Carl. We'll do. Um, <laughs> we started. Do we need them in two thousand and two? Do we need them? Do we need them? Yeah. We'll, we'll got, continue that. Got a new one, haven't you? Explain that later. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, and then the new stuff comes in. Ooh. Right, um, as always, I like to sort of get words and tweak them and stuff. Sure, yeah. So, I was thinking of either doing something <laughs> with, um, there's a lot of weird rituals, <laughs> isn't there? 
A lot right. of weird rituals. Yeah, there's weird stuff going on around the world. Okay. There is, yeah. Um, and I was gonna tweak that to Rick Chules. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Again, start with the title, the pun first, then working out what it is. And well, then, I found some weird stuff. And, oh, right, so it's, it's specifically... Just stuff what? that goes on, like, um... Rick Chules. It was, uh... Most of the weird stuff I've heard about happened to you in Manchester. Yeah. In your early years. Well, in India, apparently it's good to have uh, a flat head. <laughs> so the, uh... <laughs> Again, just <laughs> flirting, just bordering on the racist, <laughs> yeah. but never really gets there, always... Well, no, because there's no, there's no intent. There's no hate, there's no hate, it's just clumsy, it's just stupidity. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. go on. What Sorry, do you so mean? What do you, what mean, do you mean, mean, it's mean? It's good to have a flat head. What do you mean it's good to have a flat head in India? We'll, we'll talk about it later. Brilliant. That's, that's rituals, <laughs> so... Uh, you've, you've hooked a few people, you've hooked a few in, go on. Alright, so I'll have that later. So, it's essentially like educating Ricky, only is specifically about rituals. Is that... Is that strictly speaking what it is? Okay. I suppose so, but then again, yeah. you could say radio is all the same because it's people talking. <laughs> okay, Carl, brilliant. Yeah, brilliant no, comeback. Yeah, so, brilliant comeback. Not all talking nonsense, though. Well, so that's where we're different. Go on. Um, also, right, I like teaching you stuff. Yeah, and you've yeah. done well. So what I'm what I'm thinking is rather than just touching on a topic. To sort of giving you a few bits of information on one See, topic. See, this is what I like to do, because the last thing you taught me, I remember, was there was a blind girl, she hit her head and she could see, and that's all I got. Yeah. So if you could go into that a little bit more, that would have been educating me. Well, today, we're featuring, uh, stuff on World War One and Two. Blind right? Oh, So that's, that's, uh, that little title for all this little thing is, uh, <laughs> what do you think of that, then? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of that then? <laughs> Play a record. So Rick, can I have a sort of a joke? Go on. What's the similarity between Lord of the Rings and this show? They're both rubbish. Watch that man, David Bowie, off of that insane, my favourite David Bowie album. What's yours, Carl? Yeah, that one, that one's good. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. So, um, right, we've got, um, Rockbusters coming up. Do you want to say what we've got to give away there, Steve? Not really, Rick. Is it really bad? Well... What's the film? What's the featured film? The featured film's not bad, I have to say, actually, you, you've excelled yourself there. Again, it's just one of those things where I think, what kind of XFM listener would want this particular goodie bag? I know before Christmas, Carl, you explained that the reason Look, you were Carl's giving away- Look, Carl's face, he's disgusted, cos he- he just said, I do a lot of work to get, to get these prizes, and I went, no you didn't, I saw you, he went over to a drawer and went, I'll give that one, that one, and that one. That's what work you put in, you nicked- you nicked some- there's about twelve Jerry Halliwell videos, one of which we're giving away. It's oh, really, like, you've given it away? Oh, no! Yeah, if you'd like uh, Jerry Halliwell's, uh, body yoga DVD, DVD, uh, then, you know, that's one of the treats you can win. Um, but it does it like, if you notice, if you remember before Christmas, he said that, um, he was giving away a kind of bumper pack of, uh, gifts that you might want to wrap up and oh, give to one various for people. Uncle, one, one for Uncle, one for Auntie. Yeah. But obviously Christmas has passed, so I don't know really what your well, excuse is this you time. E you eat a lot over Christmas, don't you? Get a bit fat. Fair point. Yeah. So, uh, we, yeah, Jerry Body Yoga is one of them. Um, the <coughs> recent, on DVD, the recent series of, of Weeders Ain't Pet. Uh. <laughs> yeah, well, no, that I mean, reaction. Could you give me that reaction again? Well, no, I just no, just uh, give me that reaction again. No, yeah, yeah, brilliant. Um, and actually, I have to say this this isn't bad at all. This is the uh, very best of the Stone Roses CD. Well, you can't knock that. Show. You can't knock that. Fact, I'll tell you what, we should we should play Elephant Stone at some point. Yeah, today, play, yeah we'll have that. Go on. Um, Madness. I think this is actually tunes from them and not from the musical, although it is uh, tied into. He the went musical. to see that musical. Really. Yeah, on New Year's, uh, you know what it's like on New Year's Day, there's nothing to do. Sure. So, so you go and see some people doing madness songs? No, I took Suzanne out for a walk, right? Yeah. Went round, um, Covent Garden. Right. Past the place where it was on. The stage door was open, you snuck in. <laughs> <laughs> well, I said madness are alright. And, because when you think about it, madness songs are quite sort of musical anyway, aren't they? So you can't- They're quite do musical. Do you know what I mean? They sort he of- means they're oh, like a musical, right, they're like yeah. Musical musical. Knees up Mother Brown. I thought yeah. it was alright, enjoyed it. So Blur, like, the, Blur the musical would be good, wouldn't it? Blur the musical would be excellent. Yeah, so, um, Cockney so you, what, you bought tickets there and then and just went in? Yeah. They're not selling, are they? Um, <laughs> it's fairly, it's fairly quiet, cos no. we only paid the, the lower price and we got upgraded for free. Nice. So- You I enjoyed it, did you? Yeah, I'd loved it. And it's would anyone amazing. like to come on stage with us? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the little bald fella. <laughs> yeah, go on, I'll give you a go. And what home are you from? Where are you- what are you doing tomorrow? Well, I'm going, well, I've heard, no, you're coming here tomorrow. <laughs> Come here tomorrow. <laughs> is it not, is it not doing well? That's a disappointment. I don't, I don't know. I mean, it was New Year's Day, so maybe that's why it was quiet. Okay, well, well if, uh, if anyone hasn't seen this or didn't receive it for Christmas- I said, all is quiet on New Year's Day, Carl. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 
Also, we've got the giveaway Minority Report by uh, I like that. Steven I Spielberg that. with uh, Tom Cruise, um, which is on VHS. It's a good Rick Roaring sort of film. It's that. not bad. That's probably the best thing we're giving away, but uh, as I say, we can always leave some out if you don't I'm want. arresting you for the future murder of Sarah Marks. Yeah. Brilliant. That's the sort of uh, excitement and drama you'll be getting, isn't it? It's not brilliant. They'll taste you. it there. I did, I got that off Paul Anderson. He right. said there's something to watch over Christmas. So watched you've actually it. watched this already? Yeah. Alright. I've rewound it. That's probably added to it though, though, isn't it? It's touched by the great man himself, yeah. Carl Pilkington. And it's alright, I'd say. It's worth, it's worth a watch. Yeah? Yeah. Do you want to give us a quick film review? Just give it a wipe down there, maybe some tripe on it. <laughs> yeah. Um, bit unrealistic. Sure. A bit unrealistic! <laughs> yeah. Genius. <laughs> a man yeah. who can fight, who finds people who can see into the future. Whereas, our house, that really <laughs> happened. Yeah. <laughs> God. Anyway, anyway prizes uh, giving away. What? What's the competition? Rock we're still doing rock busters. We're still doing rock busters. Oh, well, look forward to that. Do that in like fifteen minutes. I need a bit of Coldplay first. I'm yeah. doing honestly. Really? Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Coldplay, the scientist. I think they wrote that about Carl. Yes. Uh, yes. On XFM one hundred four point nine. Right. Uh, I'm Ricky Gervais. Steve Merchant. Carl Pilkington. Can I just ask Carl how he got on uh, over Christmas? Because oh, no. the last time I spoke to him, you hadn't bought a present for your girlfriend. Yeah. Like, I have to say, I was on ten turks all Christmas. Well, you changed it. Uh, after that show, I felt bad, even though I shouldn't have done, because <laughs> because I, you hadn't bought your girlfriend a Christmas. Yeah, but present. I said to you, I booked a table at a hotel in Covent Garden. Had Christmas dinner there, which was nice, right? Mm. It's good food and everything. Um, mm. Didn't feel like enough to me. Well, then I went out and treated to some stuff, and then no, 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 the a couple of days before Christmas, he went. Uh, I took to Suzanne to that hotel we're going to go to for Christmas dinner. For, we had tea and cakes. And I went, oh, you treated her? He went, no, she paid for it, but I was just showing her what it was going to be like. <laughs> that was her extra treat. She paid for it. I love that. Brilliant. Yeah. Well, it was a bit, it was like 150 quid for a meal for two, which is pretty dear. So I'm not going to buy her cakes as well. <laughs> <laughs> I love that! All right, love, have anything you want. You pay for your own pudding, I'm not mental. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so, so yeah. You, but, so you, you did, you treated her to some other yeah, stuff? some didn't? bits and bobs. What, so you, she bought, she chose them and you paid for them? What, the presents? Yeah. No, or no. you chose them and she paid for them, but, you know, it's, it's the door <laughs> no, that counts. I, I, I got them on the way home that Saturday. Well done. And what did you want? Well, just some bits. It might be personal, Steve. Well, I don't care. Just some bits. Yeah, just but bits and bits. So leave out the personal bits. What, what bits? Uh, just little things. And then yesterday, right? A monkey wrench and a new washer for the shower. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some recordable CDs. <laughs> <laughs> that you need for your job. <laughs> oh, so, dear. Uh, now, did, now, when you gave those prisons to her, did her fi face light up? Right. I, I don't want to tell you what they were, right, but she wasn't that impressed. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to tell us what You're they are right now, tell Carl. Us what they are. You even know what they are, she told you, on Christmas Day. Hold on, wait a minute. But right. it doesn't matter what they are. It does matter what they are. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. It does, Carl, it's you, mate. It no, course it, it does. doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, God! Have you just remembered? Yeah! Right, but don't... There's I've no got, need. I've got to tell him, Carl. I've, I, I really, I really want your permission because I don't want to be a, you know, I know it's not, but we know it's not that embarrassing. It's really quite sweet. Yeah, but in a way, right, <laughs> the way I look at it is, right, Christmas, even when I was a little kid, right, it's not- Please let me tell him, Carl. Well, let me just tell you first, oh. now. Let me tell you why I didn't go all out on the okay. whole present front. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Justify yourself. Right. Oh, first God. of all, I've covered it up since then anyway. Right, with that present, because I bought her some shoes yesterday, and she did say I'll give you the money for them, but when I get home I said it's alright. <laughs> I said you can have them. <laughs> right? So, so, not only, not only did I buy her some food on Christmas Day, I got her shoes, she's probably had a table. And you feel like yeah. a horse! <laughs> yeah, it's sort of like, yeah, there you go, there's your shoes, there's your food, right, bed yeah. down, yeah. see you later. Yeah, but I, what I'm saying is she's done- fed and clothed Yeah, did you, did you comb her hair? So. She's done well this year, right? Uh, uh, so, <laughs> The thing She's is, so well this year. <laughs> it's like you're a single parent and you've got a council estate with a smack problem. <laughs> and you still manage to buy them <laughs> some right. Lego. When I, I was a kid, oh, it God. wasn't about what you got. I remember one year when I was about eight, right? <laughs> oh, that, it's gonna make me cry, isn't it, this? It's no, good. it's not. I'm just Go saying on. the way it is, right? I woke up at about four in the morning and I was like, oh, what have I got? And I couldn't sleep, I was that on edge. Mm. It's the excitement of Christmas, isn't it? It's like, yeah. oh, what's wrapped up, I need to know. Sure. Yeah. And it's the fact that people are saying, no, you won't know until tomorrow. Yes. Sure. That annoys you and winds you up. Okay. So, so I got up at four in the morning, yeah. opened my presents, and then went, right, I know now, I went back to bed, had a great sleep. Yes. Right? So it's nothing to do with the excitement of what you get, it's the excitement of not knowing what you've got. 
And then what happened when you got up to go down with the so what you're, Hang on, so oh. what you're saying to me is that you could wrap up a brick because the thrill of Christmas is in hoping and it's being excited about what it is, not the actual gift itself. Yeah. Is that, is, is that what you did? <laughs> That's the brick. Did you, did you get a brick? No, let me tell you now what he got. He got her a present, right, and she said, she had to came, I said, uh, yeah, he got me. It was, it was an industrial sized packet of condoms. It was a joke gift. No, it, no, wasn't, it wasn't a, a joke, wasn't a joke. Gift. It wasn't even a joke. I yeah. went home that Saturday afternoon, yeah, past boots, <laughs> thought, might have something in here. They were on, like, some value. Right, you, you passed the well, makeup. Well, they used. <laughs> <laughs> you right, passed anyway. the makeup. You passed all the other. Yeah. Passed the makeup. Stuff. Passed the lovely vanity cases. Yeah. Yeah, the foot spas. Exactly. Yeah, the yeah. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. How much are these, love? For a hundred? <laughs> yeah. Four ninety-nine. <Is> it? <laughs> yeah. Do I get them reduced if I buy in bulk? <laughs> so how many did you buy? What was it? I don't know, probably about hundred. Right, okay. And is she allowed to use those with anyone? <laughs> <laughs> Did you wrap them? Can she yeah, just go out and have a wild Well, you don't need to wrap them, they're already wrapped, aren't they? Oh. And then what did she say so when she opened them? I'm no, just... wait, wait, I'll, 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 what did she say? <laughs> right, play a record and we'll come back to this. <laughs> You're worse than my father, that's genius. <laughs> Made famous, of course, by Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. That's all along the watchtower as originally done by Mr. Bob Dylan. On XFM 104.9. So, Carl, just just take us through the moment where you gave this gift. Firstly, so you, so you, 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 you went into Boots, right? You thought, all right, 100 condoms. Brilliant. Mm. Okay. Did you wrap it up? I don't know if it was 100. Probably 80. Right, okay. Yeah. Right. You so, gotta go mad, do you? <laughs> <laughs> wrap them up. I'm just, I, you know, I'm just resting easy knowing that he's not trying to breed. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> no. Yeah. So, uh, I got all them. I got her, uh, Grease on DVD, cause okay. she's always watching that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, so I just think of, uh, when her mum said, what did Carl get you? Some condoms and grease. <laughs> yeah, I was just so glad he said on DVD. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. and, um, she was surprised anyway, right, because... <laughs> yeah, I bet she was. No, when, when she got... <laughs> she, she was, she was thinking, like, jewellery. No. <laughs> so right. that, that showed her. <laughs> that surprised you, wasn't it? <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, so hang on, wait a you minute. You thought it was a holiday, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, look at your face. You don't know me at all. <laughs> um, so well, hang on. So did you give these on Christmas Day? Right. What <laughs> happened is she got in from work that Saturday, <coughs> right? And I said, look under the tree. Knack her door. Right? At least it's Christmas. <laughs> yeah. At least I'm gonna get a little bit. <laughs> yes, I, said, I said, look, you got some stuff under the tree. Right? <laughs> So, uh, she, and that did you give her a sugar it. lump? Right, she was really chuffed with that. But she said, she was a bit, a bit puzzled because I didn't know we had any wrapping paper, right? So I ended up using wallpaper. <laughs> you didn't take it off the wall, though. You had no, some. No, it was some left over, right? So she said, why have you used wallpaper? I said, well, I didn't have any paper and you were getting in in a bit and I wanted you to have a surprise. <laughs> so she said, can I have a feel of them? <laughs> As <a> present. <laughs> she thought, right, I've got the right thing. Yeah. Right. And, uh, then Christmas Day. Um, I said, no, don't get carried away, it's nothing really good, you know, we said we weren't gonna buy each other much. Uh, so there you go, open them. Yeah, go on. And, uh, Can I just ask, had you received your present from her yet? Yeah. So what had you received? Um, what did they have? Had some shoes. Nice. Right. Um, getaway game for PlayStation. Nice. Just just I'm just tightening up just the value of those. Yeah. Yeah. And right. just also think about how much fun and pleasure you get from them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although, yeah, yeah. of course, condoms, I can see the, well, you see yeah. the appeal. Well, right. Okay, um, yeah. So yeah. I think but I can... also add to that bit 150 quid for a meal. <laughs> if you're gonna start <laughs> totting up, 150 quid for a meal, <laughs> I bought some shoes 72 quid. <laughs> Yeah, that was after the event, though. <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> All right, so you received these, dare I say it, thoughtful and nice gifts. You handed over the box of uh, condoms. They were wrapped up. She well, unwrapped them. Uh, yeah. Go on, take us through it. Walk well, us through it. Well, it's not. It's not something you play with on Christmas morning. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Oh. But, right. But when she opened them, what did she say? What did she say? Well, I wrapped them twice. As well, so she thought it was something really good. Extra like, protection, oh. right? And, uh, so she thought it was something really good. And then, and so then, the disappointment would be doubled. <laughs> oh yeah, go on, yeah. And then she just opened it and went, "Oh yeah, so what's on the telly?" And that's God, that. ungrateful! That was that. What an ungrateful woman that is. Well, fancy, not, stuff. fancy not wanting 
I told a, her- A I told box her, of economy condoms from Boots. I said to her about the thing about, you know, it's all about the surprise and that, innit? Yeah. You explained um, that to her? Yeah. What, after she'd unwrapped it? Yeah. Four, and four. she was- she was alright about it. Yeah. She understood. Rick, you know I suggested to him that he buy his girlfriend a gift. I'm worried I've done more damage to the relationship by suggesting that than if he had just forgotten. Next time you've got to go shopping for yourself, Steve. I think I might do. You've better to go shopping for yourself. It's, I'm glad it's all over though. It's it's mental. Yeah. I, it annoys me. The whole thing <laughs> annoys me, and she knows that as well. Yeah. <laughs> she should know. What? She, she still insists on having Christmas once a year. Well. Wow. Well. I'm, 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 you know. No, but, uh, well, anyway, what did you get? I can't think what you, what you bring to the relationship, <laughs> Carl. I don't know what it is she's getting from you in this relationship. It's like uh, she's I doing all the know. work. Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> 80 times. <laughs> oh. oh, God, Carl. I love oh. it. You're brilliant. I know what she's getting. He's the, he's the, he's the, uh, what, though? No, he's not thoughtful. No, he, no, but he's, he's thoughtful. He's the best he can do with the brain he's got. Do you know what I mean? Right. He's doing his best. Mm. He's absolutely mm. doing his best. There's no- <laughs> He's working at the limits of his powers. Do you know what I mean, though? He's done as well as he can with what he was given. Sure. Yeah, I, and that's- that's admirable. Yeah. It's like, I think he's done better than you'd, you'd expect. I bet his teachers didn't even think he'd get this far. Do you know what I mean? What, find a girl? No, well, yeah, a job, a girl. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Clothed himself. He's done, he's done really well. What do you think, Carl? You think you've done well? I, I think I've done all right compared to some of the mates. What are they doing now? Probably not that much. Mm. Do you mm. know what I mean? The, the Mrs. Matthew said I wouldn't be an eye flyer. I think I'm doing all right. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I have a holiday every year. <laughs> uh, got somewhere to live and that. Yeah. yeah. Got a new flat, haven't you? Yeah. So. So where are they then? The condoms? Are they? Did she show them to her family and friends? No. Taking no. it to work. Look what Carl's I'm surprised got she told Ricky. Actually, I was a bit disappointed in that. Yeah. Because I didn't go shouting. Well, she was so excited, Carl. Clearly, <laughs> she's just so pleased and proud. Yeah. <laughs> All right, play a record. We come back to it. No, that's it now. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, no, that's it, that's Streets, Don't Mug Yourself, XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington, a regular Santa Claus. <laughs> I'll, leave <laughs> I'll leave it I'll leave it. Oh, dear. So, Rockbusters? Rockbusters, uh, first one of the year. Um, Do you want to explain it? In case we've yeah, got some new listeners. Some new listeners. Like might it. have, might have, like you never it. know. Like Chance to win some stuff. Um, I'll give you, like, a cryptic clue and some initials. And it sort of makes up a band, so an easy one that we did at the start was, uh, an exploding pet, AK, atomic kitten. Yeah. Right? That's how it works. So there's three of them, um, it's email only, you email in ricky.juvace at xfn.co.uk and, uh, you win all that stuff Steve was talking about. Right, first one, uh, £42 for a torch. <laughs> £42 for a torch, that's a bit pricey. Uh, that's D. Right. That's D. Yeah, so right. just give us a- give Write us that again. down. So, forty-two pounds for a torch, that, that's a bit pricey, isn't it? Right. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of enhancement. <laughs> yeah. Digging up his growth. Oh, okay, God. That's, that's D. Uh, the second one, um, he'll fit some chocolate to your feet. Say that again? He'll fit some chocolate to your feet. Is that he will fit some chocolate to your feet? He'll? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He'll fit some chocolate to your feet. And the initial there is A. That's A. Yeah, and, uh, the third and final one, uh, do you think your kid will get that strawberry for me? <laughs> do you right. think, say again? Do you think, uh, do you think your kid will get that strawberry for me? That's <laughs> WP. Right, now, I'd better warn people, um, you really gotta get into the mindset of Carl here. These are not real cryptic clues. These are not cryptic clues that you do in the Guardian or the, the Times crossword. Um, there's usually something wrong with them. Uh, it is usually, um, uh, what's the word? Um, completely change the word in order to make it fit. Yes. Often. <laughs> yeah. Um, so just be careful. Don't be surprised. Exactly. Mm. Okay. Um, do you want to give us a, them again very quickly? Alright, uh, first one, 42 quid for a torch. That's, that's a bit pricey, isn't it? Alright, that's <laughs> D. Uh, second one, it'll fit some chocolate to your feet. Can't think of anything. I can't a. think. That's A. a. And, uh, do you think, uh, do you think your kid will get that strawberry for me? W.P. Right, so, uh, Ricky Ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk, some great prizes to be won. Yeah. <sighs> right, Rockbusters then, uh, wrapping it up, um, It needs some work, that game, but I see it's got a lot of mileage. Um, <laughs> right, here we go then, the first one, uh, £42 for a torch, that's a bit pricey. Go on. 
That was D. Yeah. That was Daylight. Wait, I thought delight, and I thought um, it doesn't work. One. It doesn't work. I actually thought delight doesn't work. Second one. There's um, no one. No, no, wait, wait, wait. Dear light, it doesn't work. It's delight. Second one was. No, no, Carl, it doesn't work. Yeah, but if we're going to continue with this feature, you've got to tweak them a bit, right? <laughs> People have got it. We've had loads of emails, more than ever. So, do you know what I mean? Let them decide. Mm. If they don't like it, they won't email in. But they lo they're loving it. They've right. all come from the same institution. Um, <laughs> go on. It'll fit some chocolate to your feet. That was A. That was Aerosmith. No? Aerosmith. Yeah. You've heard of a blacksmith. But a smith is just yeah. a workman. It doesn't um, necessarily- No, no, you can have anything. You can have a locksmith. You... A smith doesn't just mean it does shoes. Right. Do you think- you... Aero Cobbler oh. would have worked. Unfortunately, there isn't a band called Aero Cobbler. Get ready, get ready with a winner. Um, do you think your kid will, uh, get that strawberry for me? That's Wilson Pickett. <laughs> it's it a little though, story it? told quickly. To yeah. what end? Well, it depends what the story is. Okay. Depends. Give me a, give me an analogy. Well, for me, I thought a one with the greenhouse. Yeah. Right. Um, it's no, it's a greenhouse. It performs just a glass <laughs> house. Yeah. Yeah. All right, then a glass house. Okay. Right. You, do, do what I mean is that glass house is metaphorical. <laughs> it's about the fragility of your situation as compared to your aggression or your- You see, I, I just prefer sort of, you know, what you say is what you mean, so people in- who live in a glass house have to answer the door. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I mean, because you, you, you because may be a genius, because I don't get that. People who live in glass houses have to answer the door. Okay, let him, let's hear his explanation. Because the people knocking at the door will be able to see you because it's a glass house. But what? Eh? But you literally mean, don't you? There's no analogy there or metaphor for you. You literally mean if you live in a glass house you and someone the knocks door. the door. So there's no, there's no hidden meaning there, is there? Well, no. Couldn't that also? You don't. But you have to add a number of other things. Uh, another other caveat. Surely, if you live in a glass house, don't walk around naked. Yeah. If you live in it. <laughs> th these are literal. See, if you now you could make you could actually make that into quite a nice. Uh, um, uh, uh, saying there, because if, if that meant, if someone said that to me and they weren't a shaved chimp, right, <laughs> if they said people who live in glass houses have to answer the door, I think that means, oh, yeah, it means that, um, there are no secrets, you can't hide behind anything. If you're, if you're very open, if you've chosen to be totally open all the time, you can't go back on it. So people, if you wear everything on your sleeve, if you shout around and you tell the truth, and uh, you can't go back on it, they can see, they can see through yeah, you. You can mean that as well, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, that's handy. But I just the idea that in your head there are you need that there should be sayings for people who live in glass houses. Who is it that's living in a glass no. house? Well, it, I I'm not talking about them. It's just that if everyone else is bringing up about these people who are living in glass houses, let's let's get to the real problems they've got. <laughs> 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 still hasn't got to grips with the idea of the Nobody's metaphor or the simile. People who live in glass houses should live near a glazier. Right. Well, here's another saying, right, that I, that I learnt recently from a mate, right? Um, well, there's an elephant in the room. <laughs> okay, I, don't, I haven't heard that one, but explain it to me. It's like, um, when you when something's going on in a room, right, but no one's mentioning it because everyone's a bit too... Sort of, but in a way, it's better that it's out. It's like how you know you. Whenever we go out for something to eat or a drink or something, mm. it's normally after about five minutes the sort of topic gets onto the shape of my head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, right? I can't resist the shape of your head. Right. So you're you're happy. It's not just about the shape it. though, is it? It's the state of it as no, well. But what I'm, what outside I'm, and in. But, I mean, it's a fascinating <laughs> little objet d'art. <laughs> his what, head. But what I'm it's re perfectly round. Uh, it's got no hair where it should have. Um, and it's oh, hollow. <laughs> <laughs> the features are slightly too small for the face. Yeah, no, unbelievable. No, but what I'm saying is, it's interesting how, like, I'm the elephant in the room, right? Nobody's talking about it. You mention it once, suddenly it's the talk of the town. <laughs> it's, it's what I mean, everybody starts joining in going, well, yeah, it's round, but it does suit you. And these are people who I don't even know sometimes, <laughs> and they're all dipping in. And that is an elephant in a room. <laughs> Um, so you you don't want people to discuss the shape of your head or the or the lack of hair. Um, you would feel better. You would feel happier that they didn't mention that. Sometimes I think it's better that it's out there. It's made me a stronger person, though. It's the same way you know we we're talking about religion and that. Samson Delilah. Yeah. He got weaker without hair. Mm. Whereas with me, I think it's it's made me stronger, because 
you know, it's almost like it's treated like a disability. Everybody's sort of mentioning it and talking about it. What's it like having a bald head? And you know what I mean. <laughs> so it's made me stronger. But would you ever wear a wig? Um, not really. What I was mean, a long wig like Samson? Well, the only time I wanted a wig was when I did jury duty once, right? And it was annoying that I was sat on the jury right in front of like these criminals, right? Everybody else has got disguises. The judges have them wigs on, right? <laughs> It is a disguise. That's a disguise. That's why judges wear them, right? So no. Well, then, what if they print their name in the paper and have a picture? What do you mean it's a disguise? Well, it's a disguise, isn't no, it? No. If it was a disguise, they'd go in with one of those um, glasses with a nose and the beard attached. If it was a disguise, all judges would look like Groucho Marx. If it was a disguise. Well, th I'm just saying that's that's what annoyed me when I was sat there on the front row, right? I couldn't have been any closer to the criminals, right? <laughs> right? I was sat there and I thought. Why didn't I just pop a little wig on or a pair of glasses? <laughs> I would have loved to have seen you in the front row at Crown Court. No, because I'd love to see it because uh, in this country you're not allowed to show pictures of jurors. Uh, you can't take photos <laughs> in a courtroom, so there's always these sketch artists that draw drawings and it's on the news. The idea that we'd have seen eleven people and a sort of crusty the clown figure would have been amazing. Yeah, uh, uh, I would love to see the, uh, the artist do an interview because it would be like complicated people. Oh, hey, he looks into the character for, and then just a little round head. Charlie Brown. <laughs> Charlie Brown sitting on the end. Went home and looked up Freud on the internet. Didn't find him that interesting, so looked at some other philosophers instead. Socrates, Aristotle. Why have you just listed some philosophers? Just to show that I'm learning. Well, that's not learning. That's just that's learning a, their names. That's a list. You might as well write one to a hundred. <laughs> yeah, but if someone says, "Oh, what's your favourite philosopher?" I'll go hang on a minute, and I've got them written down. But what, uh, why? Why? <laughs> wait wait a minute! One. I'll go home, get my enormous diary out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get a wheelbarrow, bring in my workings, <laughs> and say one of the la names I've written down. But when they say, "Well, why do you like him?" Yeah, why you, do you, you like, just why, run away? Why, I, I noticed you put um, Socrates first. Why is it your favourite philosopher? You throw the diary at them and leg it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and then you go on to say, it's weird how names have changed, but then there's no other point there. <laughs> it is, isn't it? When you think about, like, Socrates, I've never heard that on anyone who I know, <laughs> is what I mean. It's just, in a way... But you're not Greek, are you? But how did that go about back then? I mean, it, when, say if you were phoning someone up and he said, uh, I'm booking a table for two, the old name, Socrates, did he ever go, cheers, without going, can you spell that for me? But I don't know what point you're making. <laughs> I'm just saying it's it's a name that's awkward. You're always going to have to go. Can you spell that for me. You go, and it's not just him. Look at all the other names that are on that list. But they're <laughs> from a different country and a different era. Yeah, I know. But the names I've been to Rome and stuff, and you sort of go. Well, ancient Rome. Just just Rome. <laughs> it hasn't changed, has it? Rome. So it can be ancient Rome or Rome in 2006. It's yeah. The same buildings. Oh, I used to love Nero going around in his Fiat Punto. <laughs> Lao Tzu from years ago came up with some good stuff. One, he know he who knows does not speak. He who speaks does not know. Not entirely true. To lead people, walk behind them. Yeah. And of course, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. Yeah, yeah. did that. Uh, his favourites. Maybe maybe this is why people are at the start line spectating at the Commonwealth Games. Well, I, no, it's just that I, I've never understood why in Olympics and stuff like that. If you're gonna watch, don't stand around the start line. Go to the end, where you see the winner. But because of that saying, it actually makes sense, doesn't it? It's like, well, every step starts with a step, or whatever. Say uh, again? Uh, every race, you know, you've got to start with a, with, with a step. Yeah. So, um, uh... Which is, to, who am I talking to now, you or your brain? Well, I was thinking about it a bit, so I think I was in control of it a bit more. So, and what have you come up with? Just, just, if you want to stay at the start line, do. <laughs> what does that mean? I'm just saying, if, if you're into ra I'm not, I wouldn't watch a race, right? Okay, but is this you or your brain I'm talking to now? This is me. Okay. I wouldn't watch- Are you using- are you gonna- are you, are you gonna bring the brain into it, or is it- there's no- I don't just... know, let's just see what happens. <laughs> okay. But all I'm saying is- Right. If I was to watch a race- Yeah. I wouldn't hang about the start line, cause- well, I, you just said you would. What, did I? Yeah, you said that's the place to start, because every, every race starts with a step. <laughs> no, but I wouldn't normally. <laughs> right, I okay. I wouldn't watch any race. The brain definitely hasn't been used yet. No, is this you or your brain you're talking about now? 
it was- I'm just saying about me, if I was on holiday- Yeah. And Suzanne said there's a race going on down the road- Yeah. I'd go, well let's go- keep going down the road and stand at the finish line. Okay, but, but now what have you thought? Lazoo, yeah. I'd say, well hang on a minute, every s race starts with a single step. Yeah. How many people are around the start line? Is there more room there? She goes, yeah, I'll go, let's go there then, it's less busy. Right, and what would you see there then? I'd see people starting the race, but I wouldn't be that impressed with them because I'd go, well, I don't know if any of these are any good. So would you start at the start or the end then? <laughs> I'd, I, if it was down to me, I, I'd just probably stay at the finish line. Okay, so you wouldn't want to see the first step then? So what do you think of Lazoo now then? Uh, it's not what- but I wrote down three of his, that one isn't my favourite, that was the third. I preferred the leading people from behind. Okay, and what would you do to lead someone now then? Um, well if you're behind, you don't have to take responsibility, do you? You can go, well I didn't send you where you went there. That's not really leading them, is it? Yeah, because I've made them think. I've gone, uh, they go, oh I've just walked into a big hole. I'd go, oh, should have been looking where you're going. <laughs> I haven't led them in that hole. But they've learnt a lesson, they won't go in a hole again. <laughs> New Order and Here to Stay on XFM 104.9. Well, we're here to stay, aren't we, Steve? True enough. Well, for another four weeks anyway, then we're, uh, then we're off. The four right. more shows. They'll have to order a new DJ. Or <laughs> <laughs> Alright? That was genius. <laughs> hey? Oh, wow. oh I'm Ricky, as simple as that. I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve Mitchell, and <laughs> oh. Carl Pilkington. <laughs> oh, man. Did anyone, uh, read the, uh, Guardian yesterday? It was Steve's big chat. We, we were interviewed together. Steve I've never been interviewed before in the paper. I've certainly never had my photo in a national. We were very paper excited. Before. We loved the interview. It was talking about our top ten albums between us. We loved it. We talked really fast, like school kids. We were excited. It was a great interview. And all the way through, it was Ricky Gervais, who is <laughs> writing for. Steve Mitchell. <laughs> Stephen Mitchell. It's he not even gutted. like Merchant. He phoned me up the night before and he was gutted. And I know if it is, it's awful. And it was big letters and just all the way through in the caption. And it's just like, oh God. But it's embarrassing. Do you know what I mean? It's embarrassing because it's like I was trying to get in the paper. I couldn't believe my luck. And then that just draws attention to the fact that I'm not a celebrity <laughs> and consequently they can't even remember my name. Uh, but the worst thing was that, um, uh, one of my favourite albums of all time, like I said in there, was, um, uh, Blood on the Tracks by Bob Dylan. And I said, because, you know, I think one of those beautiful songs ever is if you see her say hello. And of course these people were sort of transcribing it from, you know, a dictaphone. It came out, um, my, my favourite song of all time was If You See a Sailor. <laughs> <laughs> if, you see if You See a Sailor. <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> Fruity. Oh, Bob, Bob Drillboids. Uh, <laughs> up on the trab with, uh, where's the sailor gone to? <laughs> uh, with Ricky Gervais and Steve Mitchling. <laughs> Oh. I don't know. They must have thought my name was, was Mitchell all along. They obviously well, never uh, knew. Uh, the evidence is there. <laughs> but I, I don't know why. It was thought. like they, they reported in the paper that we'd be nominated for a Sony, and it said, uh, Ricky Gervais, who hosts the breakfast show on XFM, and it's that sort of, it's just guessing. It's like, uh, uh, presumably someone's gone, does he host the breakfast show? Someone's gone, yeah. And that's, that's their research done. <laughs> yeah. But there was a thing about, um, uh, The Office set in Swindon. That's someone going, I'm just writing an article about The Office. Where's it set? Swindon, I think. Is it? <laughs> yeah. Okay, that'll do. Yeah. Yeah. Even <laughs> we research the show now and again, don't we? Yeah. Even we look things up, well actually people phone in. Usually yeah. that fella. What's that fella's name that calls in who's not got the website? He's got a funny name. Oh. Gilwell <laughs> or something. James. Phone in if you remember, uh, what his name is. Yeah. James. James at Lose Control. Yeah, what's his surname though? Oh, for goodness sake, this is just oh. gonna be interesting to him yeah. and his friends. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you we remember? Better, we better play another record. Yes. Come, oh, I'll tell you what, if Johnny you like- Johnny Mango. Mango, that's it, yeah. Now, if you like Alvis Costello's Allison, <laughs> or maybe <laughs> Rick, Freeze, Freeze, um, My Brother Jake- One of my favourites. Stay tuned. Badly Drawn Boy, Silent Sigh. Cracking tune. XFM 104.9. Maybe there'll be a few silent sighs around London on the 4th of May when, uh, that's it, we're off the air for we three are months. Yeah. Wow, you're really getting into the DJ patter today. Yeah. It's brilliant. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> yeah. D d d <laughs> it's only things. taken, what is it, five years? <laughs> yeah. Now you're finally uh, as good as Foxy. Coming up. Yes. That anecdote that Carl didn't get to last week about Neil Armstrong. <laughs> oh, right. I can't <laughs> wait. It's because he took three links telling us about the horse. Yes, of course. Of the course. horse. Think yeah. of that. Oh, yeah. Um, I went out with Carl on Thursday night. Right. Right. It was one of the most enjoyable nights. I, 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 we just, I like went out for about what five or six pints, a little crawl, and adventures happened around Carl. Yeah. And just me sitting talking to him was just incredible. I'm thinking that a competition would be win a pint with Carl. Yes. 
just, you know, they just idea. have to go for a pint and they can ask him anything they want. Yeah. He's just, <laughs> he's just great. Um, we met my friend, didn't we? Tell him all about that. Oh, yeah. Yeah? What? Yeah. Did you enjoy it as much as Ricky, Carl? Um, yeah, there was things I learned as well, like, which was, which was good. Okay. You, you know his mate Robin, don't you? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, uh, You'll I'll, discuss that later. I'll tell you later about He's got all his near-death experiences to come. Win a pipe, and of course, coming up, um, uh, Carl, so homework was uh, the quotes, and Carl's come up with a great idea to show that anyone can do quotes. He's he's invented a thing like faking it, where he's got two real quotes, right, right and he's made one up. Okay, and he's going to fall us. I I bet we won't be able to. Oh, <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> Sorry, what was the challenge? Look at him looking at us. What's the matter with you? It's just that before you were like, no, this is good for you, but what? now it's turned into a game. <laughs> <laughs> At your expense. Yeah. Have you only uh, just, have you just dawned on you? <laughs> <laughs> Carl, well, I'm joking. It's great, honestly. It's really good. What was the Carl challenge last week? You said it, I thought we did the quotes last week. No, but, um, it, 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 I gave him a, um, a happiness. Gone, happiness. It's all about happiness right. and what, the, 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 you know, pursuit of happiness. Mm. And it's in sort of like quote form and everything. But, um, Carl's gonna do a couple of ones and faking it just to show. I mean, cause he's been coming up with fables all week as well now. He comes up with something, he goes, that's a fable, isn't it? <laughs> and he tells me the other, so he's, he's getting good. <laughs> now. Go to it all. Should we play another track? Or have you got something, you got something oh, I've brought in, um, uh, I saw, um, uh, Alvis Costello and Jonathan Ross a couple of weeks ago, and he did just an acoustic version of Alison. And I forgot what an amazing song it is. Mm. And it, it's just, he's, he's fantastic. He's, he's, he's the man. Listen, this is a guitar sound. It's so beautiful. My aim is true to provide quality <laughs> entertainment <laughs> of a Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was awesome. Alvis Costello and his attractions, and Alison on XFM <laughs> 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. Steve Mitchell here, yeah. and, uh, Carl Pilkington. Oh, I, yeah, uh, isn't it? it's going all right, it's going all right. I, um, obviously been doing some acting, as you know, I mentioned it last week, doing this, uh, this sort of comedy pilot. This week, Carl, you're gonna be loving this, I've been doing stunts. <laughs> I swear to God, I've been doing my own stunts with the guy that once made Christopher Reeve fly as Superman, right? And I was doing stunts. I had to do a thing where I, that my character has to, commit, <laughs> has to commit suicide. <laughs> I don't think we didn't bring that up. <laughs> Were you anywhere near that horse? No? Fine, let's carry on. <laughs> and, um... <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we, I had to, my uh, character has to commit suicide and he has to sort of, uh, leap off a building. Mm. So the first shot- I don't think that's a, for something for comedy. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were up on a roof and, uh, obviously they had the crash mats and stuff and I had to kind of leap off, um, and land on the mats and stuff. And obviously I was petrified the whole time because I was wearing my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> petrified that they might get broken. So I was like not really doing it properly and kind of leaping like, like, what, you know people when they can't dive into a swimming pool and so they put that one foot out first to sort of is break it you, Was it you that told me that, that you, you could never get into fights? No, I could never get into fights or go in a mosh pit because of my glasses. <laughs> I've missed out right. in life because I can't, I because right. if, if I was in a fight and I say, come on then, you are, you know, and, and I was in a pub or something, they just have to whiff, whiff off the glasses, <laughs> just knock them off, I'm done for. <laughs> I, I got, I love you nothing. really uh, short-sighted, are you? Yeah, but, if, uh, but anything's an advantage in a fight, isn't it? And the fact that they're just a blur <laughs> is bound to hamper my otherwise brilliant, you know, ninja skills. Uh, so, yeah. um, so yeah, I've never got into a fight, I've never been in a fight at all, I've never Sorry, been, been in the on, on the wire. So this was making me sort of a bit worried, um, yeah. uh, and anyway, so then I think, well fine, I've, got, I've done my stunt, and I did it, and everyone clapped, they were pleased with it, and the guy who said I was very good. So then they drive us to the next location, right, I'm thinking I've done my stunts now. There's a crane, I think, what's going on here? Now they need to shoot me, like, I've already done the stunt where I've sort of f let off the building, now they've got to actually see me falling, right? So I have to get strapped in with this huge belt, and they click wires onto me, and they hoist me about 30, 40 foot into the air, on this wire, and I have to, and then they drop me at great speed, and I have to scream and shout. You know, it was partly acting. <laughs> <laughs> and, glasses um, on. Glasses. Uh, by this time, I managed to get some wire fixed to my glasses so they wouldn't come off my head. I sure. Well, they, they were stunt glasses. <laughs> they were stunt glasses. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So um. So they hoist me into there on this thing. They do a couple of sort of, uh, sort of demo versions, you know, and just gradually ease me up higher and higher so I can become acclimatized to it. And, um, they get, they get me about 30 feet up and they've got these huge crash mats, like those great big ones you always see because stunt people have. And they set up the camera and stuff down below. And while I'm up in the air dangling there, they remove those crash mats and they replace them with those really thin ones that you always see like, um, teenage gymnasts using on Blue Peter. Do you know what I mean? The really yeah. thin ones they used to have at school, right? And I'm looking down at this and I'm thinking now, they may as well have shouted up, if you fall, you're done for, but we might be able to protect the equipment. Do you know what I mean? It was what, so rubbish. But you weren't gonna land on the floor, presumably. 
Well, the idea was that the wire would stop there. Oh, yeah. I see. But yeah. there was no safety. That, that was their safety. That was the safety net. Why did they not leave the real ones in? Because they they had to. Do, I don't know for the, the shot the and stuff. I they see. had to. Oh, uh, wow. They had to be able to do it. But anyway, what was particularly joyful is one of the other actors pointed this out. Right, this is the. Um, <laughs> this is the health and safety statement from the stunt guys, right? And they, they obviously have to write up this health and safety statement about how they do it. And it says, We confirm that we have proper safety policies, procedures to comply with the Health and Safety Act 1974, and that we will not do anything which compromises the health, safety and welfare of your production crew, actors or members of the public. If the above situation changes, we'll advise you immediately. <laughs> I mean, if they think that maybe they do want to hurt members of the public, <laughs> look at that fat one over there, just try and hit her yeah. and bring him down. Don't worry about that one. Don't yeah. worry. She can take it. She can take it. But, uh, so that reassured me, obviously, and, um, now my whole body's racked with pain. Limbs, arms, head, neck. Uh, well, unbelievable. Well, is the shot worth having? I you, mean, you, probably you, not. you, you wish you had- You want the cameraman whispered to me? The cameraman whispered to me, he'd probably never use it. <laughs> I love that that Carl can confuse the scientist. Yeah. Yeah, because all systems of logic break down. I know, I, even, I, even the scientist was going, well, oh, get rid of Olympics. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, who brilliant. was that guy? Uh, I think his name was Chris. And where was he from? In a uh, place called Megavissi, where I went one year. Megavissi. And is he a, uh, he's a scientist, is he? Uh, I think he's got a fish shop or something like that. He's got a fish shop? No, he doesn't. Well, like an aquarium type place. Oh, right. So. A <laughs> fish shop. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't have mentioned him. It wouldn't have been asked him that he, uh, uh, a, a yeah. winkle store. <laughs> He's got a winkle store at Paul Arbor. Yeah, that's an expert. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. But What's, uh, what have you learned from that then? Well, the, uh, we don't know whether they're deaf or not, because the scientist, the bloke in the chip oh, shop yeah. couldn't confirm it. <laughs> um, they eat their own legs. Yeah, Look at that. That's a bit weird. Yeah. It? They that's eat weird. their own legs? They eat their own legs if they get hungry. Right. Um, and they grow back, don't they? Mm, I think so, yeah. If, if you if you eat one, they'll grow back. Yeah. And, um, yeah, you can put them in, in little jars and that. Uh, if you wanted to. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's just a bit weird, isn't it? It's like, um, <laughs> no, but do you know, like, you know, people have a go about being cruel to animals and that, but what he was saying there is, right, what they've watched an octopus do, they've, they've got hold of a crab, right? <laughs> So that'll be being stressed out because it's out of the water. <laughs> yep. They've then stressed it out even more by putting it in a jar. Right. Which you didn't like. Uh. Which you didn't like. And then an octopus is crawling about on the jar. Yeah. And the crab knows that the octopus wants to eat it. Yeah. Right? So then it's having more frets. Yeah. Because of that. And then they let the octopus eat it. Yeah. I think that's, that's pretty... Do we need crabs? Uh. See them next week, yeah. Well, I want to sort out snails first. <laughs> right. <laughs> What's your pitch with snails? What do you know about snails? Um, I know that, um, bats eat them. <laughs> um, they can sleep for 13 years. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you can you believe that? Okay. <laughs> they said, said to me, snails can sleep for 13 years. And I went, right. He went, oh, thing is though, if it was a scientist, and he was, you know, he was looking at it, and he put it in a quiet place, it might well doze off. <laughs> he said, it wouldn't be the same if it lived on the streets. <laughs> and then we went on to a whole thing about homeless, he wants to do a game show with celebrities being homeless for a week. What do you think? Actually, I've got to say, that's not bad at it's all. It's not bad, is it? No. Do, do you know how, like, Lenny Henry went to the jungle? Yep. Right? And you've got, uh... You've got, what, what, who else did it? Um, uh, John, uh, John, John, John Lee, Lee, Lee made slippers out of a bra. <laughs> right? <laughs> so I'm thinking, like, get a celebrity and say to him, no, just because, I'll tell you why, right? I'll tell yeah. you why all this came about. When I was walking back from that Christmas meal that I bought my girlfriend for 150 quid. <laughs> <laughs> Lest we forget. Right? <laughs> Um, I was walking down Mortimer Street and there was an homeless fella there and it was like, oh, you know, it's really, really bad. But the weird thing is, it was, it was about, I don't know, probably about eight, eight o'clock. Yeah. No, about, about nine. Right. And he was asleep. And I just thought, do homeless people ever think, do you know, I think I'll, I'll have an early one tonight. <laughs> right, that's, that's what got me thinking, it's a bit weird, the whole lifestyle of it, the yeah. fact that he had an early one. So, the fact, what, what, if it's a bit weird that he's sleeping not in a home, but on the street? No, it's just that if it's I interesting. if I was homeless, I'd probably stay up quite late because it's not nice. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? What are you talking about? 
Just being homeless isn't a good thing, is no. it? No. People forget how bad it is. Yeah. Right? But surely sleeping gets you out of reality. They sleep because they're tired, they can't sleep very well, so they need all the sleep they can get. Yeah, but sleeping's nice if you've got a nice big bed. What, you think they can go, I'll stay up, I'll go to bed at two, I'll go straight to sleep and I'll pop up at eight <laughs> when the alarm <laughs> clock goes off? Well, that's just what I was thinking. Right? <laughs> so, I was thinking how bad it is and it's, you know, especially this time of the year, you know. Yeah, uh, it's terrible. It's the, uh, it's it's the really worst nice. thing. And to sort of give it some publicity and get a bit of help behind it, get celebrities, yeah. someone like I've... Phil Mitchell, <laughs> maybe, yeah. off, off his standards, yeah. who's a big fella, he can look after himself, put him in a shop doorway, right. have some cameras set far away in a building or something, Yeah, they can film him, right. and it's up to him how he raises money for food to eat. He could sign autographs. <laughs> well, they wouldn't know him though, would they? Because the, you, you never look Who at a homeless get? person. You get, uh, what's her name? Gail you Porter. Yep. Gabby Roslin. Right, yeah. Narinda from Big Brother. Yeah. Uh, who else would do it? Um... I got a game show Les idea Dennis, called... I reckon I got it. a game show idea called On The Game. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, what happens here? You get Narinda from Big Brother. Sugar Cane. By Sonic Youth on XFM 104.9, Richard Ray, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Go on, Carl. What, what's what's next? Are you going to do your um, war feature? War. What is it called? War. Do you think of that then? You do that now. I just it annoys me a bit, right? Because we said before Christmas that we'd come back with new stuff. Yeah. Um, gave you a title to work on that ridiculous. Right. You came in today. I so said, have you sorted it out? You say no. Steve, you're having a go at me for getting, wanting to get music out of the library for you. Yeah. You haven't got any new ideas. Sure. But you're dissing mine. I'm not dissing yours. Well, well I, I'm a massive fan of them. Good vibe off you. <laughs> oh, I think that's very harsh. I, I just asked you when were we going to have war, do you think of that? I'm a big oh. fan, I'm excited. Well, it's not that good, to be honest, with you. <laughs> well, I disagree, it sounds brilliant. Right, well, it's, it's a bit of a tweak of educating Ricky. Uh. Right. Just some information on, on wars. Yeah. Um, okay. World War Two. World War Two. All right. Um, the world champion chess player. Um, he helped uh, someone out. Um, <coughs> in the war. <laughs> it's the detail I like. <laughs> no, he helped. You know, it's, n it's nearly a history program, isn't it? <laughs> he I was watching <laughs> those repeats of the World at War. Yeah. That were on in the mornings. You know, incredibly. Did detailed, you like? They got nothing on. Cars. Did you write a lot of that David Sharma series? <laughs> <laughs> he, he was able to use his skills that he has to play chess because apparently chess is all about probabilities of like where, you know, where a piece will be put. Right. And uh, they got him in and they said, can you help us out? He said, yeah. And uh, he said, right, where, sh where should we like- <laughs> Hitler has just moved his queen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, that's yeah. A, that's a he sent in a bishop that ran diagonally <laughs> yeah, exactly. through the troops, <laughs> knocking him over. Sorry, wait a minute, Carl. So they got a chess Sorry, that's, that's it. Well, yeah. It's just like, oh, what do you think of that? Again, that's not a story. But uh, it angers me that he says that I'm down on the ideas when that. I mean, that's beginning to shape up as quite interesting. I thought you were going to tell me which battle or which event World was you. World War II. There's not a battle. But which bit of you, World War II? Like the, the middle bit. It's <laughs> six years worth. Yeah, well, probably about a bit in. Guessing. Thought, let's... Guessing. Well, all right, yeah, there is a bit of guesswork, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> but that could have been an interesting thing if you told me it had an impact well, on the normal landings. Well, when you look at these things, do you go, uh, bloke wants help chess, oh, use that, and run away from the computer? No, or I run out it. of the bookshop. I read the first line where I get enough information. I just think. What do you mean you read the first line where you get enough information? Imagine if you were someone's defence lawyer, <laughs> yeah, <exactly>. and he <laughs> was like, he's on death row. Yeah. And went, oh, I don't think he did it. <laughs> yeah, I read the first line. I didn't read the file it's completely. A, he was in a hotel in Texas, right? Go on. It's enough. Oh, some other it's stuff. Enough. It's enough. enough. It's, it's enough. enough. It's enough. It's enough. Yeah, know, no, I just thought they always took ages on deciding where to go. It's just like. You know, but there's a better. I way. don't know what you're saying now. I don't know what I don't know what you're talking about. Well, takes, I actually, when, don't when know what you're talking about. People play chess. They take ages to make the move. So I'm just thinking, there's probably a quicker way. <laughs> of what? Than finding where a boat is. Than getting a chess player. In. I don't know. I don't know what you mean now. Right, Are you talking about battleships now? They should have got an expert battleships player in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, but Carl? Right, what, forget that one. Or no, 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 no. I'm not being funny. But what is that? What are you telling me there? 
Someone who's really good at risk. <laughs> I should have brought them in. <laughs> yeah. Cluedo. Right, yeah. another fact. Oh, oh, no. That's enough then, is it? Well, they use expert Cluedo players, um, but the police use oh, they, they players. do use, yeah, 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 yeah. If ever there's a murder in a country house. Do you think they use that old Chinese fella? Um, on the front of, um, uh, Mastermind. The mastermind, yeah. 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 Yeah, for logic problems. <laughs> the, the Enigma code was broken by top Mastermind <laughs> exactly. players. Yeah. Right, second fact. And a guy who's had a couple of rounds of Yahtzee and done very well. <laughs> yeah. Second fact about the war. They, um, for engineering, they use a lot of Jenga players. Absolutely. Yeah. Whenever they want Will the building collapse? Uh, I don't know, let's pull this, let's see. If yes, they it wanted will. to identify, um, <laughs> What are you doing? If they wanted to identify spies, yeah. bring me the champion of guess who. <laughs> Was it warm with glasses? No, right, sit <laughs> Has down. Has he got a beard? Is it Bernard? <laughs> <laughs> right, Carl, sorry, right. go on. An another war fact. Go so on. You're saying it's rubbish, but look, you, you love that. Yeah. Right. Yeah, Second you're one, absolutely right. Um, the first bomb that was dropped on Berlin, Yeah. it didn't kill a person, but it killed an elephant. <laughs> I think that's true. That is true. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, and the last one. Is that all you know about that? See, that's interesting, isn't it? But what that's was the enough. But, but no, it's not, it's though. Not cause I, no, because, I mean, listen, most people want to go, oh, what was the elephant doing there? Did oh, it land on a zoo? Was it a pet? Oh. Was it a lost elephant? Did they aim at the elephant? How did it kill it? Did was it, it, it hit, hit on his favourite elephant? <laughs> yeah, yeah, was it hit his favourite elephant? Did it then have one ball? Yeah. I mean, these are the things, you know, why didn't he catch it with his mm -hmm. trunk? Did it have an effect on German morale? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. elephant is kaput! <laughs> Um, oh, Jumbo! <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to play anymore! <laughs> <laughs> <Don't be honest. laughs> anyway, listen, Rob's question is this, Carl, and it's specifically to you. Carl, if you could have a superpower, like Superman, what would your superpower be? Can I suggest consciousness? <laughs> yeah. Can I have the power of thought? Remember, you've already got opposable thumbs. <laughs> so, that, cross that one off the list. <laughs> oh, go on, Carl. There are so many to choose from. Telepathy, x-ray vision. Flight. Invisibility. Choose it wisely. Strength. Intelligence. But, but why have I been picked? Oh, <laughs> for God's sake! No, no, but I'm just saying- It's say, Rob's question no, for no, you. But I'd just say, does anyone else want this? Or, do you know what I mean? No, oh, I'd what just, would you- what because, do you wish you no, could do that's no, impossible because, is the question? No, because, or, uh, uh, out of- what? Because, what do you mean? Because with that comes a responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> With I'm enormous saying. power does come great responsibility. So, would it- w well, would you like spidey senses? Is that what you're saying? Uh, would you like some senses? Would you like some sense? The power of sense? Um... Come on, Carl, you know what these superheroes, because they can- they can- I know, but it always- freeze they, things, they're never they... happy, are they? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Spider-Man wanted to tell that girl that he had- he could climb walls and that, and he's like, I can't. Superman didn't never tell Lewis and that. Who's <laughs> Lewis? Who's Lewis? Lewis? Who's Lewis? Yeah. Ah. Uh, it's just a pen pal of Superman. <laughs> <laughs> Lewis! His little secret <laughs> chum! Yeah! yeah. yeah. Alright, Superman. Hello, Lewis. What are you doing? Uh, uh Superman. Uh, uh, who are you? I can't tell you, Lewis. Yeah. Brilliant. You know, Hulk. He wasn't happy. <laughs> so... But you're being allowed to choose the superpower. You mm. don't have to get it forced upon you like the Hulk. <laughs> happy! <laughs> it's true, he's got a theme! <laughs> he has got a theme! There's not many happy superheroes, are but there? leaving aside the superheroes you're already aware of, yeah. what superpower do you want? You don't have to fight crime with it, Carl. Everyone around the world now uh, uh, is thinking, what can Carl choose? Let's, let's, let's deliver it to him now, Carl. Think about it and give us the answer, please. Just, let me just remind you of some of the other things. Invisibility. All the time, though, or can I sort of turn that on and off? Let's say you could turn it on and off. Would that interest you? Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Right. <laughs> okay, and what would you do with this power of invisibility? Just sort of wander about and that, just not get seen. <laughs> Brilliant power! It's a brilliant and, and, why, it's put, and it's put to such it's brilliant really, use. It's really well done. And why? Why would you want to walk around and not be seen in that? Uh, what would you gain from that? I don't know. You could sort of go in, go in shops when they shut, so you don't have to go. How would you crowds. get in? Just get in just before they lock up. Oh yeah. And How would you get out? Wait till the morning. 
Brilliant. So hang on. So <laughs> that's your use of invisibility. Yeah. They found the power of invisibility. <laughs> you want to sneak well, into? Bear in mind. No, hang on. Let's just. You want to sneak into HMV, right? Wait for twelve hours <laughs> and then buy something. <laughs> ah, I love it. Just so that you don't have to be in there with other people. Do you know what? I don't want it. I don't. I don't want a power. Why not? Because I, I just don't think it'll do me any good. <laughs> I think it's more of a hindrance. <laughs> I love this! It's like, uh, just think of his presence. We've given you a go, a trip into space, and the chance to be invisible. Oh, Not no. happy with any of them. Yeah, he, uh, what he wants is a voucher for HMV. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he just wants some tokens for a record shop. Right, when are the exams? June? Something like that, yeah. We're registered, we're trying to register next week, and I reckon you can get an A or B. I'm in busy, history. I'm busy. In history. No, I'm don't worry about it, it's just easy. I get your Brody's notes. If Heat, Heat magazine, they, 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 they love you, Carl. They could probably sort some out. They could probably pay for a tutor. They got a lot of money. They sell a lot of magazines. I mean, it is always, almost always, and you found that out. I discovered this. It's always the tutors and stewards. There's no fear for that. They're not coming up now. What do you know? What do you already know about them? You must know already know stuff about Henry VIII and Elizabeth. No, because it just is too long ago to even get interested in. Do you know what I mean? You can't. Is that why you did it? Okay. You, the Anderson thing. It was like. God, you know, I bet my mum and dad were in an Anderson shelter. You know, this is interesting. What, when they... Oh, my granddad would have, like, had something to do with this. <laughs> but the Tudors, it's like, I don't know even if they had a family back then. God! <laughs> 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 Play record! He's got... Uh, the problem with the moon is... <laughs> Here's a statement. The problem with the moon is... Dot, yeah. dot, dot. Yeah. The problem with the Earth is there's too much water. Yeah. No, the moon... It's been, been around ages, hasn't it? Yeah. But it's got no history. It's got nothing to show for it. <laughs> Just a load of old rocks and stuff. Yeah. And for me, history is created by stuff happening on it. So really, the moon, even though it's old, in a way it's new. <laughs> because it's untouched and that. But uh, we, don't go, we don't go to the moon to visit museums <laughs> <laughs> or arcades. No, but, but say, or say, say like Henry, Henry, Henry VIII, right? Uh, you watch Antiques Roadshow or whatever, and some woman goes, Oh, this plate you've got, this was, uh, Henry VIII's. Uh, and y as you can see, you can see the knife marks on it. Uh, oh look, there's some chicken on it, right? And you go, oh god, yeah, that's amazing. Then someone goes in and goes, here's a plate of Henry VIII's, but it hasn't been used, it's still in the box. You'd go, well, it's not as good, that. No, <laughs> it's got no, no history. No, because very often on the Antiques Roadshow, they have Henry VIII's plate with a bit of chicken on it. <laughs> they kept that. Don't throw that away. Why? Arthur oh, Negus are like that in a few hundred years' time. No, but do you understand what I'm saying? Things are only good if stuff's happened on it. The moon, you're up there, you're having a look, you're going, no one else has even been here. If but you go to the moon for research purposes, for scientific research. There, Steve. This what is do what you mean I'm there's saying? nothing there? They're examining the soil and the environment soil, and the air. Uh, it's, it's, it's just a lot. Well, they're not doing that, are they? Nothing. They're just they're just not doing that. Well, well, they're not, are they? Because last time they went up, they were playing golf or something. There's golf balls up there that they've been whacking about. What sort of research is that? That's what I'm saying. There's nothing up there. So wh why why else would you go all that way and go? Oh, nothing. Here. Fancy a knockabout? <laughs> why are they knocking golf balls about if if there's really important stuff to look at? You don't see people in museums going. Fancy having a knock. Uh, knock some golf balls about now. I'm looking at this vase. Oh, right, that's interesting. But on the moon, nothing. Nothing to look at. What other games have you brought? That's what I mean. And then we went, went and had a look at the volcanoes and that. They've got 36 of them to look at. <laughs> How many did you look at before you realised that you've, you know, pretty much, you've seen one volcano, you've seen them all? Probably about six or seven. Really? And yeah. then when you go to the eighth, you thought, no, I know what this is going to be, Suzanne. This is going to be like a mountain with a hole in the top. Yeah. Really? But it happened years ago as well. It's like, just keep a couple, fill the rest in, tidy it up. <laughs> fill the oh. rest in! Yeah, no, yeah. Well, okay, some builders. No, seriously, though. Okay, four million trap. tons of concrete, please. They're an absolute death trap. <laughs> yeah, what, yeah. What do you mean, fill them in? Do you know what a volcano is? It's a hole, isn't it? That's happened. Well, it's more than the hole. It's more a portal to the magma in the centre of the earth. Back in 1730 it happened, and they still haven't sorted it out. Well, when you say it happened, volcanoes were made a lot longer no, ago no, no. than 1730. No, but the one that did Lanzarote in. Right. Sort it out. What do you suggest? Well, How can they up. fill it in? It's joined. It's all joined. No, but what I'm and saying the, is... Uh, it was the a, big it was plates of the earth are all joined. It was all the magma's disaster, joined. With the, with the trade centre thing, that happened. They cleaned it up, sorted it out, they've moved on. 
That's what I'm saying. Whereas Lanzarote have just gone, leave it. It happened back in no, 1730. You misunderstand me. How, in the name of God, can you fill in a volcano, you ignorant twit? No, but it's not just the, the holes. They've actually left the lava everywhere. That's what I mean. It's not just the big holes. There's lava everywhere. But it's m molten rock. They can't just p pick it up like they're like a carpet. Put it in the holes. The holes are there ready. Just push it all in. <laughs> the world's oldest tortoise, a 250-year-old tortoise, died last week. Yeah. Did it? Yeah, in a zoo in India. 250 years old. So would th would that have had that thing that they say about how you get a, like a flashback of of your life? <laughs> <laughs> you mean your life flashes before your eyes? Yeah, they say, don't they? Just like on your last breath or whatever. You like, like see you coming out of the womb and everything. Well, well, one, I don't believe that's true. I don't believe your life flashes before you. I don't know. I don't know what evidence we've got. People who die say, you know, you never guess what's happening. No, but there's there's loads of things that have happened where people go. Oh, that's that's weird. That's that goes to show that we've been around before or No, it doesn't. There's none that I have no evidence for that. Of well, reincarnation. I, I told you that time when it happened to me when I was younger. Go on. Your life flashed before your eyes. Well it wasn't like a flashback, but it was close it's the next next thing next to flashbacks. It was um <laughs> I was having a bath, right? And uh my mum had like run the bath and that and uh she said, Is that is that too warm? And I said something like, No, it's it's all right, this it's a lot better than when he used to have a, have a bath in that wooden bath in front of the fire. <laughs> okay. And she was like, what? And I said, you know, well, it happened years ago. <laughs> and she was a bit like, oh. And I, I can't remember that now, but she talks about it and, you know, that just goes to show that. Because I, I was at an age when I wouldn't have known about wooden baths years ago in front of fires. No, but you talk rubbish now. So you, all you were doing, you were talking rubbish from an early age. Where's the problem? No, but you can only talk rubbish if you're aware of knowledge. <laughs> Well, you- I didn't know about wooden baths, so why would I have invented that? But Carl, that? we've only got your mother's word on this, and she thought you might one day be a doctor. Yeah. So- She put a rock with a feather on it to keep a parrot company. <laughs> Lest we forget. Yeah, but I'm just- just saying. Well, it's all bollocks. Um, so have you researched this? You've tried to find out when little Carl Mark won and his wooden bath when he was- No, around? I don't want to go there, because that's when you start digging out all sorts it's of- It's rubbish. Trouble, isn't it? It's rubbish. No, it's, it's not rubbish. Well, what, it is rubbish. What sort of stuff There's might you There's no discover? scientific evidence No, just like I've said about family trees and that, don't- don't be looking at them, because you you're only gonna find stuff you don't really want to know about. It's the same as that, innit? Leave it. Let it be. Do you know what I mean? If- if you- if your granddad was Einstein, you'd know about it, because your family would be shouting about it. If he was a badden, you'd go, oh, keep that quiet. So right. don't look at family trees and it's the same, don't be looking back in your past lives. <laughs> There's no God past knows lives. What you've been up to. Well, Carl on the wooden bath. Proof. If Carl proof Bilkington uh, live on air talking shit again. <laughs> right, next one. Uh, which one's the next one? Oh, what about your paper round? Right. Can I ask very quickly, did your life flash before your eyes like they say it did? No, I just sort of went really calm and like, I'm ready for this now. Right. I wasn't bothered, you know what I mean? I you had no scared. regrets? No. No. Um, it was weird. It was really weird. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, the paper round one. Uh, paper round, I'd still say it's the best job I've ever had. <laughs> and he means it! No, I really oh. enjoyed it. It's like, you know, oh. you, you, you don't have to work with anyone else, right? Oh. So you make your own rules. Just think of that. Um, yep. you know, um, <laughs> You sort of You're around. spreading information well, yeah, to people, yeah, vital information. Giving a service, yeah. and no one else is around, you know, you can just do what you want and think about stuff whilst you're cycling around on your bike, it's really good. Yeah. So, um, so anyway. Imagine the stuff he's thinking about when he's riding around <laughs> I know, I can't. Oh, so, <laughs> getting in the head of a salamander. <laughs> so anyway, I, I loved it, and even though I only got like 50p a day, right, no matter what the weather was like and stuff, I used to get up at half past four, and uh, go and do the round, and um. Why did you get up at half past four? Because I wanted to watch the Pink Panther at 5.30, so I wanted to get me paper round done. I said, why didn't you watch the Pink Panther? And then, and then the he, went, he went, oh, I can't sit there thinking I've got my paper round to do. <laughs> He'll ruin it for him. Yeah, so is it a good job or not? So 4.30 4 I was up, up and about, and this morning it was like winter, really bad winter, bad snow, you know, freezing cold, really windy and all that. And my mum said to me before I went to bed, she said, don't be getting up tomorrow, I'll give you the 50p. I said, it's not about the 50p. 
<laughs> so, you know, people want the papers and stuff. <laughs> so, um... Conscientious. <laughs> so, anyway, I went to bed thinking, you know, that's it. I'm, I'm, I've told her I'm still going, so, you know, whatever. Go to sleep, get up in the morning, and, uh, put all my kit on. Uh, I used to have layers of clothing on because it was really cold. They had, like, a big anorak on with the fur on. I had, like, waterproof pants, and I got my paper round bag. And, uh, I went downstairs to get out and tried to open the door and it was locked. I thought, oh, God, so she'd locked it so I couldn't go out. So I'm searching around the house looking for the keys. She must have hid them somewhere. I thought, oh, God, you know, I've, I've got the papers to do. So I thought, how can I get out? So I went upstairs, climbed out of the bathroom window. God. Right, and to try and jump out of the bed bathroom window onto the porch. But the problem was, I had so much gear on, I was like the Michelin man. <laughs> so I could hardly, I could hardly move as it is. Yeah. And I'm trying to get out of the window, and I'd, I'd, I'm like, trying to stretch down like that, get me foot on the, on the porch. And my bag got caught on like the hook of, do you know like how you have a hook so you can put the window open? Right, yeah, The yeah, little yeah, arm yeah. goes on. My bag had got caught on that. I was holding onto the, like the, the wall and my foot on the thing so I couldn't sort of pull it, pull it away in case I pulled it away and then fell on my head. Yeah. So I'm stuck there. Dangling. Dangling. My dad comes back from working nights. Yeah. He thinks I'm a burglar. <laughs> Gets out his gun. So, he, <laughs> so he's shouting and stuff, going mad and going, Dad, it's me. And he had to give us a hand using a- <laughs> He's heard that wily trick in Manchester before. <laughs> <laughs> he had to help me using a washing prop thing, a big stick. What did he do? Well, he said, just that hold on for your dear life and I I'll sort of push the paper bag off the hook. Why didn't he go upstairs and sort it out? It was at that point where I was in the middle, there was nothing you could do, do you know what I mean? Mm, it's right. at that point where you've just got to make a decision. Yeah. And by the time you go upstairs, who knows what might have happened. Sure. Do you know yeah. what I mean? You've got to act there and then, don't <laughs> listen around. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so- And you could hear downstairs, now here he is, the Pink Panther. <laughs> yeah. Dad! <laughs> Pink Panther. Hurry up! Panther. Ever so pink. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so that, that was close to death, cause that, I must have been about 30 foot in the air. Yeah. And I would have, you know, that would have been nasty if I fell. Fell to the concrete pegging, sure. so. Well, and, um, there's more, there's more to come. Should we play a record and mm. come back to this? Cause he's got more. Oh yeah, no, no, no. There, there must be one of them where you did fall on your head. This is the one I'm waiting for. There's gotta be one. That was explained so much. Yeah. I nearly did. I nearly broke my back. Jeez. Once. My dad said I better can't kick me out. And I said I better can. And, uh. <laughs> I, I don't remember this. You didn't tell me this one. You no, I better can what? I was in the garden, summer's day, and uh, it was that era when like doing kung fu and all that was really popular. Sure. And I was like messing about in the garden, punching the tree and, and stuff. <laughs> and my dad said, <laughs> "What a kiddie must have been." <laughs> my, my dad said, "I bet you can't kick your height." Kick and, your height? What yeah. you mean, kick as high as yourself? Yeah. yeah. So I must have been like five foot or something yeah. then. And uh, I said, "Of course I can." So I bet you can't. But instead of doing it on the grass, I did it on like the the concrete bit. <laughs> Kicked it. Actually did it. I went there. You go. But then like. Get me foot down quick enough and land oh, on you, the back. Oh, you pause to, pause to say there, I've done it. <laughs> yeah. As opposed to putting your foot back on the ground. And, uh, landed on my back and uh, I, I'd still get back trouble now. Do you? Because you say that, don't you? So, he th I, I'll just cut a long story short, he gave me about four or five near death experiences and he went, and the whole point of this, he went, so that's why I think I'm gonna die of something horrible, like cancer. And I went, why? He went, right, you ready for this? Yeah. He said, well, I don't check my balls. <laughs> Right? <laughs> he said, I don't like the feel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Carl, always check your balls. Do you I check don't like the feel. Why don't you like the feel of your own balls? They just, I mean, you know that I don't like bodies anyway. Right. Do you know what I mean? It worries me a bit that you've got all that going on in your body, right, and your skin's keeping it all in place. Right. <laughs> Stop, 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 stop. We're going down a whole other avenue of discussion. Let's play a track, let's come back to it. Oh, right, I've brought in this, uh, this is, uh, free, um, you know, uh, you'll know from the Jeans commercial. Yeah, all right now. Long time ago, yeah. all right now, yeah. But this is a great little track. This is, uh, My Brother Jack. Stereophonics, Vegas two times, XFM 104.9, into the last hour. Yeah. And then three shows to go. That's true enough. Until we're off the air. I'm Ricky Gervais. <laughs> With him, Steve Merchant. Carl. Well, yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's go and tell you. Um, you we we cut short last week, weren't we? You you had a you had an amazing story about Neil Armstrong, didn't you? Well, we've been doing quotes, haven't we? Like famous quotes. Sure. Yes. I've you know gone down in history. Yeah. And um, I was saying you know quotes don't really matter. Um, <laughs> it's, it's more the situation that you're in than than the quote itself. Go on. So like Neil Armstrong, yeah. if he'd have said, what. <laughs> 
um, a, you know, tie bacon round your head. I'm as happy as a pig in dust. Yeah, that would have yeah. still gone down in history as like being the thing that Neil Armstrong said, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. But space is driven but, in mental, probably. But, but, been, yeah. but, but, but he chose to say something profound <laughs> and yeah. meaningful uh, to uh, befit the situation. It's well, he got it wrong. Actually, it's uh, uh, a small, small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. But it was meant to say. Yeah, we discussed this last week. Well, really. Yeah, Stop yeah. Showing off. Well, no, but people might not have listened last week. Yeah, it doesn't I mean, matter. I can't imagine. Well, people we better tell them every week then. Yeah, but uh, he said uh, he should have said this is one uh, small step for a man. Yeah. But anyway, he had a good effort, and that's quite. And, and that's that's an example of, of what I'm saying. The fact yeah. that he got it wrong, but it still went down in history. Right. But anyway, the bit that uh, and it didn't happen anyway, did it? <laughs> What do you mean it didn't happen anyway? That's what a lot of people say. That no one's actually been on the moon. Ah, yes, of course. They they filmed it in Teddington Studios. Well, they were saying something about there was shadow on the film and you won't get shadow on the film. And uh, there's, uh, there's all sorts of things. You know, these people that you always quote as they. <laughs> Who are they? Are, are they living in jars? Are they little fellas in jars? Look. Go on. You know, do they appear to you in dreams? I've spoken <laughs> to different people about it, and there's loads of little things that, if you watch that program, there that you know of of them being on the moon, there is no way they could have done it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> done. Fine. Yeah. Done. Anyway. That's put to bed. Yeah. But Good. anyway, as he was getting back in the spaceship on the moon, or whether it be a TV studio, yep. he said, uh, "Good luck, Mr. Croucher." <laughs> right. Have you heard this? <sighs> no. And the reason he said that was because when he was a young kid, and he was pl I think it was Croucher, but when he was playing as a young kid in, in his garden, he was playing baseball with his mate, <laughs> and he chucked the ball to his mate, and his mate hit the ball, and the ball went over the fence to the next door neighbour, right? So he goes, right, I'll have to snip over and get the ball. And as he was getting the ball, the window was open to his neighbour's house, and he heard, like, the woman shouting at her husband, saying, I'm not gonna be giving you, uh, a bit rude, so if you've got a kid in the car or whatever, Turn it down. What, yeah, that's covered that, yeah. Right, um. Genius. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, um. No matter how many times you ask me, I'm not gonna be giving you oral sex. <coughs> the day I do that, man would have walked on the moon. Right. right, yeah. He grows up, he gets on the moon, and he remembers all that story, and as he gets back in the spaceship, he says, Good luck, Mr. Croucher. <laughs> now, do you know, now we'll have to say, I've heard that story before, but when I heard it, the woman said, the, 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 the day I give you a blowjob is the day the boy next door walks on the moon, which makes it all the more profane Impossible. and enjoyable. Yeah, and unlikely. Yeah, but yeah, no, I've heard I've heard the same story, Carl. Yeah, <laughs> look how pleased he is. I love that. Right, so not only have you remembered that anecdote, which may or may not be true, but of course you've also proven the that day uh, I give you a blowjob, even... that kid in the garden's probably going to walk on the moon and say something about <laughs> giant leaps. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, you must have heard the thing that it never actually happened. Yes, we've all heard yeah. it. We've all dismissed it as nonsense <laughs> <laughs> and moved on. Yeah, yeah, and got on with our lives. Right, Carl. What? Should we do uh, White Band Man? Well, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't prepare me for that. We better play a track and then I'll uh, okay. I'll fish out the newspaper and stuff. Oh, oh right. this is uh, oh, this is a good little um, a little bootleg track here from um, uh, Meats and Poultry. Here they've um, mixed um, um, A with uh, Outcast. Right, of course, it's great. Is it highly illegal? It is. So people shouldn't rush to their tape machines now and press okay. Play and so whatever you do, don't don't record this now. If you're recording, hold on, don't say anything. Cheering breaks, painkiller, on XFM. Carl's getting a little bit stressed, aren't you? No, I, I just, I just, you know, got to keep focus, got to keep the show good and that. Yeah. You know, and in the yeah. new year, the idea was come up with some good snappy stuff. Yeah. And today, I just think it's it's been a mess with you, to be honest. I mean, this is the sort of thing I'd prefer to do after the show as as the producer. Yeah. But. You know, I, you know what, I think it's a discipline problem. <laughs> is I'm it because sure is, is, is it I just put sellotape on your head? Well, that that's a bit to do with it. But just, you know, let's, let's just focus well, on- I didn't put it when there was any hair on your eyebrows, I put it across your forehead. Right. What do you think of that then? Yeah. We've got one more bit left. Brilliant. One more fact. Um, the French, right, when they were at war, um- <laughs> <laughs> David Sharma, I just imagine him just introducing it, it's amazing. Which, which war was this? It was still the World War, uh, one or two. We'll go on. It's fifty-fifty. Go on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. right. World War Two. Uh, what the French did. Uh, did everyone needs a code. <laughs> everyone needs a code. <laughs> yep. A code. When you when you're in the army. This is a Disney song. Right. <laughs> um, 
and, you know, to sort of give the go-ahead if you want to go into battle and stuff. Okay. Right? So, uh... Um, <laughs> But the weird Game thing is, show. right, the weird thing Everyone. is, do you know what, do you know what theirs was? Go on. Do you? Yeah, yeah, I, I know what it is. It's so what was the, the French code? For what? To sort of say, right, yeah, go on. But they had more than one. <laughs> on, on this day. But I don't know what day it is. <laughs> on All this right. day. Um, what, it's, it's like saying, what am I thinking of? <laughs> what was the battle? What was the... Okay, right. so all right. Well, look at him. Look at him. Look, he's genuinely confused that I've asked this question. Right. It was no, it was... no, no. If you ask me a question, ask me the question quickly. Um, what was the what was the code for battle during what battle? World War Two. No, that's not a battle. That's a war. Yeah, it was in a war. Yeah. <laughs> it, uh... I don't know what to do. He right. confuses people. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Okay. What was it, Carl? What was the yeah? Code? What, what, what was are the you thinking code? of? Right. John's got a moustache. <laughs> <laughs> ah, what oh, are you talking my about? Lungs are that, burst. that was was a code that the French used. You know, like I mean, I, I just think it's a bit daft, right? Uh, because you could come up with that by mistake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Two French blokes talking in the trenches, and they see they see a major walk past, and they go, "Oh look, John's got a moustache," and they all go and go, "No, I was just talking." <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, the way I, I don't think that's a good code. I, I'm not. I don't know. believe it is the code. No, it is seriously. And what? Uh, and it's would just it, like would it have been, would it have been it. said in French? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Guessing. The, guessing. The, yeah. 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 No, but. What? You see, I can't even be, be bothered. <laughs> what? what are you saying, Carl? Because it's not a very good code. Do you know, like, we've talked in the past about, you know, things you don't see, and I said, an old man eating a Twix. <laughs> yeah. If they use that, that wouldn't, that's safe. Because no one is ever gonna see a man having an old, you know, an old man having a Twix. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, use that as a code. Don't use a saying, <laughs> John's got a moustache, that could crop up. <laughs> it's like the war's kicked off. Why did, how, how did that happen? Well, I said John had a moustache. Oh. <laughs> Two French folks would never be saying, John's got a moustache. Why well, would they? they? Because what? back then they were fashionable. <laughs> <laughs> he nearly makes sense, doesn't he? I assume it would have been Jean. Yeah. No, probably John. And I, I, how would this, how would this code have been... <laughs> I mean, who would have announced know, this to read everyone? It. I read it like that, Steve. That's what was on the internet. This is a code <laughs> that was used. John's got well, a don't be angry with me! I know, but you're always asking questions. It's <laughs> because I'm interested in history. <laughs> yeah. No, it's genu you're genuinely interesting bloke, Carl. We'd like to know- I'd like to film you, secretly. You know, like they do, like, Nature Watch, when they put it in a, uh, like a, you yeah. know what I mean, a badger's <laughs> sort of thing, One, right? Yeah. And they just, they just watch it. I'd like to see what you do, pot around with them. <laughs> I wish I could download the music in your head, cause it'd be wah 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 and you see something weird, you go wah 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 and then you read that and you go wah and you write it down and that's what comes out. John's got a moustache. They I'd like to see next Christmas. Imagine the French, right, for their battle cry, for their battle code, no, it's going ahead, they're going over the top, is you never see an old bloke eating a Twix. <laughs> Imagine that! Yeah, but they, all these things are things that I think in my head. Right? <laughs> yeah, keep them in there! Do you know, Please. like before, before when I was talking about going out on, you know, Christmas Day, yeah. having a meal on the way back, seeing a homeless person. Yeah. And then I think, God, that wouldn't be good. I don't know, TV show. Right? <laughs> you can think of things like that. When I saw the homeless fella, then I got talking to Suzanne about when I had to sleep in my car. What do you mean? Go on. Let's play a record and come back oh, to any sleeping in the Oh, God, I can't wait. Let's play a song for the lovers. I was watching last night uh, <sighs> on cable TV, 1987's amazing Sign of the Times Prince in Concert film. It was dynamite. I thought to myself, how brilliant he is. It reminded me of the gig I went to see last year. He played this tune. It's from the album Parade. Okay, I don't want to discuss whether or not Prince is acceptable on XFM or whether he's a genius. He is a genius. That's the end. That's the end of the discussion. Play the tune. He's dynamite. It's a song for the ladies. I, was, I remember, um... I was gonna tell you, um, I was on the way here. You know, um, do you remember John? He's got a moustache now. I can't believe it. What, lads, no! <laughs> Don't- <laughs> It's not on! It's, it was- <laughs> The battle's not on! <laughs> Look at your face, Carl. The, the elephant did die. Yeah, no, I'm- I believe that. Yeah. 
Sometimes it snows in April from the lovely Prince. Brilliant. Uh, from the album Parade. Uh, he doesn't always have to get up and have a rock about. He can just sit there at the piano. You can't argue with that. After the, the break, Steve, a brand new feature I've just done, <laughs> That's Ridiculous. That's Ridiculous. You see, you say Ricky Gervais doesn't put any work into this show. He's just done that. I'm gonna tell song. Carl some amazing facts from the world of science, nature, politics. Four are real. One is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> Cat Stevens from the Catch Bullet 4 album, Sitting. Little interesting fact for the nerds. We got it down to two songs to, uh, do this intro music to The Office. It was that one, and How about and Glad Rags, we went for How about and Glad Rags. Interesting, isn't it? It is a fascinating fact, except yeah. of course we want- I still feel we should use that one, except we couldn't, cos, uh, Cat Stevens' people wouldn't let us. Or it was too expensive or something. I don't know, we, we recorded, so was Stuart one, that I, it was I, too expensive. I still- I still prefer that one. Yeah. Difficult. <laughs> Difficult. Decision. Anyway. Decision. That's ridiculous, right. Five facts. Right, one is totally made up. Alright? Just do three. Three and Oh, well there's- okay, right, um, um, oh, let's see, what should I do then? Uh, there this are more moves- carefully planned. There are more moves possible in a game of chess than there are particles in the universe. Um, you can't get any colder than liquid nitrogen. I think it's minus two, seven, three. You can't, you can't, it's impossible to get colder than that. Um, the honey badger has got skin so loose that if you grabbed it by the neck, it could uh, come away from its skin, turn round and bite you out of its anus. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Right, Rockbusters then, uh, wrapping it up, um, It needs some work, that game, but I see it's got a lot of mileage. Um, <laughs> right, here we go then, the first one, uh, £42 for a torch, that's a bit pricey. Go on. That was D, yeah. that was Daylight. Wait, I thought Daylight, and I thought um, it doesn't work. One. It doesn't work. I actually thought Daylight doesn't work. Second one. There's um, no one, no, wait, 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 Daylight, it doesn't work, it's Daylight. Second one was- No, no, Carl, it doesn't work. Yeah, but- if we're gonna continue with this feature, you've got to tweak them a bit, right? <laughs> People have got it, we've had loads of emails, more than ever. So, do you know what I mean? Let them decide. Mm. If they don't like it, they won't email in, but they lo they're loving it. They've right? all come from the same institution. Um, <laughs> go on. It'll fit some chocolate to your feet, that was A, that was Aerosmith. Right? Aerosmith. You've yeah. heard of a blacksmith. But a smith is just yeah. a workman. It doesn't uh, necessarily- no, you can have anything, you can have a locksmith. You... A smith doesn't just mean it does shoes. Right, do you think- you... Aero Cobbler oh. would have worked. Unfortunately, there isn't a band called Aero Cobbler. Get ready, get ready with a winner. Um, do you think your kid will, uh, get that strawberry for me? That's Wilson Pickett. <laughs> <laughs> Wilson Pickett. Have you got one? I'll give you that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I have to say that I don't know if these guys have won in the past, but they were the first people to email in. They, I mean, normally I just give it to anyone, but these guys, literally, you'd give them the How clues, Carl. Get I'm amazed. Everyone seemed to get Aerosmith. How? Everyone got D-Light, Everyone got Wilson Pickett. I, I'm absolutely stunned. I, I just, I, you know, they deserve it. They deserve the junk. <laughs> Prizes, right? <laughs> so we'll give it to Jonathan and Louise, who, as I say, may have won in the past, but as I say, they were very, very quick. You've got oh. to be them if you want to win. Yeah. Uh, and they're from Wrexham. Brilliant. So good luck to them. So that's I hope that, they then. enjoy uh, Jerry's yoga diet. Back next week, then. Yeah. See you later. See ya. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> but this, this tortoise, so if that's- And also its flashbacks would just be, uh, you know, the same wall. I mean, it basically spent, <laughs> I don't know how many years, in a cage. It was in the zoo, so, uh, it died of liver failure. Which is a problem if you're a tortoise, because with us they can cut you open and have a look at the liver. With that, it's going, forget it, we're not getting in there. It's like you when you didn't want the plumbers to knock through the tiles to check out the piping. It's around with the tortoise. If it's a liver, we're not going through that. It's not worth it. If it's your head or your feet, we'll have a look, mate. But we're not looking at internal organs with a giant tortoise. Why not? Because, what do you mean? Well, can't, get... can't you drill into those things? It's only, it is only a shell. That is easier to replace than, than skin. Carl, I was joking. You can't do a liver operation on a tortoise. Why not? It's got all the same parts, hasn't it? All the same body parts and that. Well, I don't think that's the point. Well, not really, but, um, yeah, it's just But, but better speaking. ones, in a way, because they live longer. So they're doing something right, aren't right. they? If they can live 250-odd years, our, our art can't do that. 
Right. Which is what I say about how a tortoise has got it right in a way, that it's, it's taking its time on everything. We're rushing about, getting stressed out. That's just, you know, getting on with it. It's not rushing. Uh, it eats healthy, doesn't it? It eats lettuce and stuff. Yeah. So that's, that's probably doing it right, but to be honest, it's too much. I wouldn't <laughs> want to live 250 years. Just eating lettuce. Let's not forget that all a tortoise does is eat lettuce. <laughs> it's not like it's jet skiing weekends and then getting its lettuce on a Monday. That's all it does is eat lettuce. Yeah. And that appeals to you, does it? Uh, no. I'm just saying that it must be doing something right, though. Of course it's doing something right. Because it's living 250 years. But all animals do something right, however long they live. Mayflies live a day, but they're doing something right. Well, they're not, are they? They haven't got a chance to learn how to do it right. And then, and then they're dead. It's, you know, that's from one extreme to another, isn't it? That just mm. seems a bit mental to me, that living a day. I wouldn't bother, so forget it. <laughs> <laughs> Could you be bothered? You know, just as you get to know someone. <laughs> yeah, another mayfly. <laughs> yeah, but I'm just saying if we had that, if that's how we lived our lives, you wouldn't have a chance to make a mark or anything, would you? It's just... It's would just you try and pack a lot in that day? Uh, Disneyland, whatever. No, I'd prefer to make it miserable so I don't miss it, <laughs> if you know what I mean. But I was thinking the other day about, um, you know, your body and everything, because it is amazing, isn't it? How it works. Oh, yeah, yeah. Does the brain control you or are you controlling the brain? I don't know if I'm in charge of mine. <laughs> <laughs> Nor do I, There's Carl. a surprise. Nor do I, Carl. No, do, do you know what I mean, though, by that? Does well, the brain control you, or do well, you control you, the when, brain? Well, when you, like, don't you ever sort of think sometimes? Say if you're making... But you I, are I was the making, brain. No, no, but I was making a shopping list, right? Going, right, I need some, uh, rice, uh, kidney beans, uh, and I thought I had everything, and I sort of was rolling up the paper, and then, then something went, oh, an onion. Your so brain did something that. went an onion, was it yeah, Suzanne? No, well, my brain, my brain <laughs> sort of went, you forgot something. Yeah. I, I didn't think I'd forgot. I no, no, you that. are your brain. No, no, but don't you understand, the brain, my brain was in, I was in control of my brain <laughs> when I was writing down rice and kidney beans. But you're not in charge of the onion, that's another part of the brain that's in charge of the onion. <laughs> onion, the onion sector. Yeah. No, but I put the paper away. Put in my coat, I'm ready to go. Ready to go and get the rice. But yes, but yes, but your onion lobe kicked in. <laughs> what, so you, you put the paper in your pocket, you got the coat on, then you just suddenly hear then from it nowhere. Was just like, it was onion. Like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not even thinking about that shopping list. It's in my pocket, I'm thinking, do I need my gloves? It's cold out. Yeah. Suddenly, onion. And it was like, oh yeah, onion, yeah, I had to get the paper out. So like what I'm saying is, it was, in, the, it was in charge. The brain, the brain, the mind, the brain is the- what are you dreaming but who's in that's charge? just, you forgot, you forgot the onion and you remembered the onion. You must have forgotten things in the past. No, but not, not like that, not where, like, it just made me think, that was weird, who, who reminded me of that? You did! <laughs> yeah, but I'm not- <laughs> No, you are your brain. It's not like there's you, then there's a brain, then there's an extra one looking down at it, uh, oh, the, the, you know, the, the, the meta brain, the thing above it. No, but your brain, your, how does your brain work? <laughs> you give it information, don't you? Well, it takes- Do you mean you give it information? Well, it's if I, if I sat in a room with nothing, not feeding it anything, it wouldn't know anything. No, but it, it, there's this thing but that there's two yous, it's this thing that there's- There's, there's Carl this, and Carl's brain. Yeah, there's, there's not- there's not a duality in this. If you- if, if you go- if you go, come on, come on, now think. That's the brain saying that to itself. It's- it, it's not- there's not two people in there having an argument coming, come on, brain. And the brain's going, oh, don't you start, I was thinking then. And the other thing's going, brain, onion. And the brain goes, Carl, onion. You are your brain. If you are anything, you are you are your mind, your brain, your collection of memories, your personality. You're not what you look like. Does that answer your question, Carl? Uh, what do you think of then? You were thinking of a tortoise on a skateboard then when I said that last <laughs> sentence, weren't you? <laughs> it's last yeah. week we promised people that you'd research yeah. Sigmund Freud. Yeah, but I, I had a look, but uh, I didn't find him that interesting. So, but well, that's not. But this is this is what irrelevant. I mean. This is what we were talking about. You you say you wish you could go back and learn stuff in school because you didn't. You want knowledge. You always say about you want to learn. Yeah, some I want to learn something interesting every day. Yeah, but you've got that. <sighs> I gave him. I had a look at the website. It, it just oh oh sigmundfreud dot com. Yeah, he started that. I just didn't had he? a look. I just did a search on like famous quotes from philosophy. quotes. Brilliant. That get you everything you need. A quote. That's well, I, don't, a, I don't need to know his history. That sums just, up a man's life work. A quote. No, but that's what you remembered for, isn't it? Churchill, 
we'll go on the beaches and all that. <laughs> uh, Sigmund didn't really have any any sort of catchphrases is what yeah, you mean. Yeah, that's, yeah, things that you hear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. sound bites. Yeah. He, he wasn't good with the press. <laughs> oh, brilliant. So you weren't well, bothered to learn about him. Well, you didn't even pick up a book. I wouldn't know where to start. Do you feel like you're thinking in your head? Sometimes, like then I was, but I don't know if I am because it's got a mind of its own, hasn't it? <laughs> I did look at some of the things that he'd said and the one Do it now. Do it now. Right, what have you learned about Freud? Okay, here we go. This is Carl Educates Ricky and Steve. Number one, Sigmund Freud. Carl, tell us what you learned about Sigmund Freud. Right. All I remember oh. was that he said a baby, you, know, you look at a little baby having some milk from its mum's breast, right? He looks well happy. Uh, it has enough. It's full up. Uh, it goes to sleep. It's got a smile on its face, right? He said, <laughs> "That's what happens when you're older as well." That's all I remember from all the things <laughs> that he was saying on his thing. He just said it's weird how like it's, absolute. It's like, now, to be fair, Rick, that is obviously in translation. Yeah, I know. From the original, so I don't want you. No, I'm not having a go at Freud. But, you know. I mean, Freud has been discredited on on some issues, and we've moved on with experimental psychology and and. But, but and that's what that's the you. one that was interesting. I don't quite follow. So, what do you take from that? Explain that to us in layman's terms. Um, I don't know. You, well, that's pointless. Without application, knowledge is pointless. But it's not knowledge, is it? He's just saying drink milk all your life. It's good for you. Can't no, he's see not it. saying drink milk all your life. What <laughs> is this? Is, is this an advert he's doing he now? He also came up with go to work on an egg. Yeah. Oh, Christ almighty. But but like I said, I wasn't that impressed by uh, by his by his work. So unbelievable. Carl is allowed to vote. <laughs> I know, he's yeah. allowed to cast a vote That's in this country. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, no. I wish I hadn't. I've only done it once, and look what happened. I got called up for jury duty. <laughs> not doing it again. People do what they do anyway. It's, I think they only let us vote, so they, so we feel like we're having a say in what's going on. But really, it just carries on, doesn't it? I haven't seen a big change. But that's exactly why you vote. No, the best thing you can do is look after yourself. Get on with it. Brilliant. Okay, well, I, I hope that's a quote. I hope someone out there who's, uh, you know, maybe making a, a dictionary of quotes or an encyclopedia and they, they've finished with Freud, they've done Freud, they've done Pavlov, he hit a dog on the head with a stick, next Carl Pilkington. Carl Pilkington, what would, what do you say about the world? Just get on with it. Mm. Well, we're, not in, we're not in charge of it is what I'm saying. That's it? nearly as good as let's go to the beach. <sighs> Winston spoke, Churchill. I spoke to my dad about it and he, he called up saying, oh, I'm sick oh, of Oh, well, we're going to get some, some quality thinking here. Go on. <laughs> go on. <laughs> no, he was saying uh, about global warming and that. Yeah. He was saying he's sick of hearing about it. Right. Because at the end of the day, that's just the world and it. We're all getting old and the world's getting old. That's, that's the end of it. Brilliant. What an, another amazing quote. Well, it is. What, what, what we're trying to do. This is what I'm saying about we don't like people to get old. We're always saying, oh, we can change that face, we can lift your chin up, we can put a wig on you. And Why are same... you so annoyed about people wanting to live a little bit longer? Because enough's enough, is what I'm saying. The world, the world's the same. It's just getting old and, <sighs> you know, it used to have more green on it, but now it's going a bit bald. So it hasn't got as much green, it's got more soil. Treat the world like a head. <laughs> <laughs> That's an amazing quote. Treat the That's world so like a head. You've actually come up with one there. <laughs> Spread your love on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Mitchell. <laughs> and now it's Carl's bit. It's Carl's. It's the re-education of Carl. He's like Liza Doolittle. And now he's, uh, he's coming to, or Lawnmower Man, if you've seen that film. More like Lawnmower Man, if you've seen the film. You know what I mean. Um, uh, and uh, his homework was to just study quotes, really, on, on happiness and stuff and general well-being. He's not a big happiness uh, quote fan, are you, Carl? Not really. So what have you done? You've, you've come up with something, haven't right, you? Right, yeah, I told you, right? Because a lot of these are just things you say every day. They're nothing special. <laughs> um, so what I'm doing... Well, you say them every day. <laughs> well, the sort of things you come out with and you don't even think about it, do you know what I mean? Yeah. They're, in, they're on the TV all the time, people on the radio are saying these sort of little quotes. Sure. And, um... What I've done is, remember that programme on Channel 4, Faking It? Yeah. Where they got some, like, posh kid to be on a door and all that? What I've done, <laughs> I've, um, 
<laughs> Imagine if that was the pitch <laughs> for the show. Dear Channel 4. <laughs> just gonna get yeah, a bucket on a door or something? Yeah, yeah, Yours come in, Carl. come in. Yeah, TV yeah. producer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, go on. So, what I've done, <laughs> this little book of quotes, uh, happiness quotes, I've, um, I've picked two that are real. Okay. And I've made one up. Right. <laughs> and we've got a guess. And you've got a guess. Okay, what then. Go on. Well, I'll tell you what, Rick, why don't we, when we've heard them, we won't confer. No. You'll write down yours, yeah. A, B, or C, and I'll yeah. write down mine and we'll sure. see how okay, it Okay, Carl, off you go. Right, and just because I'm, I'm looking at this book, it doesn't mean I'm actually reading. No, I know. Don't no, worry, no. We're, we're clever. No, no, no we, know, we know, we know, we can't see, yeah. Uh, I yeah. call my bluff. Yeah, okay. go on in. Nothing is worth more than this day. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Alright. Yeah. The way I see it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh God! My head's gonna burst. No, hang on. My head's gonna burst. No, hang, hang no, on. this might not be Carl's. Oh, it might not be. How do you know I haven't tweaked them a little bit? Yeah, good okay, point. Good enough. point. No, good point. The way I see it, if you want the rainbow, you got to put it with the rain. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Okay. No. Come on. Cat food. <laughs> Cat food, come on. It stinks a bit. But if you don't put up with the smell, the little kitten will die. <laughs> Steve! Steve! I don't know what to say! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say. Imagine they're faking it. Imagine their faces when he says that, and they're going, "Oh my God, oh. Carl, play a song, mate." <laughs> oh, we'll have to confer on this one. <laughs> <laughs> well, that—that's just amazing, Carl. Just read them again. Two, two were real. One was fake. Go on in. Right. Uh, first one. Nothing is uh, nothing is worth more than this day. Excellent. Next one. What does that mean? Well, cherish, cherish yeah. now, cherish your yeah. time. Okay. Because you, you, uh, you can't get it back and, yeah. you know, That's the way um, I saw it. carpe diem, whatever it is, seize the day and all that. Okay. If you want the rainbow, you've got to put up with the rain. Yeah, of course. Yeah, rough with the smooth. You know, it's not all plain sailing, but, you know, rainbow is beautiful, but it comes because of the rain, which you might not like, so yeah. make the most of everything and, yeah, yeah. good. <laughs> Cat food <laughs> doesn't smell good, <laughs> but... If you don't put up with it, then the little kitten will die. <laughs> right, now, Carl, that is a good effort. Now, that one's yours. I mean, obviously, right? Right. right. No, no, but it's a good effort, right? I mean, it slipped seamlessly into the others. Yeah. I don't think it didn't. <laughs> no, but it's, it's good. I mean, we knew it, we knew it was that one, but, um, what I will say is, it's good, but what you don't know, maybe subconsciously, is, I mean, it, it, it's n very similar to, uh, the putting up with a, Rain and the rainbow. But well, that's why good. do you think that? Well, what what does mine mean? Well, uh, even, well, even though it smells bad, it's good for something. Right. So, see, so I, I didn't look at it like that. What, what did you look at? That? I, I I kind of thought. Was yours more specifically about cat food <laughs> generally? Because <laughs> <Right. laughs> you know, normally they like it's an analogy. Yeah, or a metaphor for something. You know. Well, food. well, no. The way I, I mean, Do it. Dolly Parton, I think, did the rainbow rain thing. She wasn't specifically concerned about weather. Conditions. No, it was a sort of general idea. Yeah, it was all about yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's what I've done. Go on. Okay. What, what, I've used an everyday thing. Yeah. And put it with today's problems. Right. Go on. So, like, um, <laughs> my girlfriend. Yeah. Um, she might like to go shopping for clothes. I hate it. Right. But because of because I love her, I put up with it. Ah, oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. So, you you love that little curtain. You can't stand the smell of the stuff you got to feed it, but because you love it, you go well. You know, I'll pull with this just for a few minutes, and then I can like squeeze its head later and give it a little. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. Can we can we go back? You know, stroke its head and stuff. Oh right. Yeah. Sorry, it was a bit of a slip, was it? <laughs> squeeze its little head. <laughs> no, yeah. 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 Well, that's just the thing that I do. With cats. <laughs> Put it in a bag and drown it in a lake. <laughs> I can feed it and then I can throw it against <laughs> yeah, the wall. Exactly. So you, yeah. didn't, you didn't see it like that, did you? No, that's very good. So it's about love, is it? It's about putting up with the bad things yep. for, for, for something you love. Yeah. Well, that's nice. But, but, but that's Carl, good. you seem now to be convinced and rather smug that you've tricked us and that you've fooled us and that we didn't understand it. Well, well I say that's your fault, not ours. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not, though. I mean, look, that man in Forrest Gump, he was a bit of a nutter. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of a nutter! 
<laughs> and he, he came up with the life is a box of chocolates thing. Yeah. yeah. Now, if that was in this book, you'd say, oh yeah, brilliant, you know, good bit of work. But if he was sat here doing the show with you, yeah. you'd be taking the mickey out of him. Sometimes I feel he is. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, Carl, I could, I could, in fact, if people are out there, we're too lazy, could you write down everything Carl's ever said? Cos I think we could publish that. Yeah. He said one today, he saw my, um, uh, salamander, it's not a euphemism, <laughs> he saw my salamander and it's just sitting there in the tank. Your exotic pet. Yeah, and he's worried about there's not being a lid on, and he said, I went, what were we worried about? He said, he said, well, he said it sits there for 24 hours a day, Obviously, planning to get out. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's got nothing else on his mind, and it's, the, the daft thing is, he has actually got the like the lid ripped up a little bit. Like, mm -hmm. he's got nothing else to think about. <laughs> and I'll be looking up there. Yeah, and it's going to get out. But what's the worst that could happen? What's Carl? it thinking? What do you think it's thinking? This salamander. It's got its eye on the DVD player. <laughs> 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 I can have eaten me down the market. <laughs> Well, oh, oh God! Are they, are they dangerous? Can I just say something? Are they dangerous? I think the salamander's thinking exactly the same things as you. I mean, to look at you, you've got the same expression on your face. You know what I mean? Uh, you're dressed in green as well. He's, you've got a little round sort of hamburglar type head, like the salamander, very similar. And yet, you, you know, you, I think, and you bonded with it, didn't you? You yeah, were... but I, I probably would have tried to get out, but my little paper round bag would just hang on the floor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, um, can we have more nepotism on the show? I know that we uh, did that earlier with the uh, teacher. We haven't got long, have we? We haven't. My uh, housemate, you remember I was working out with him last week to uh, Helen from Big Brother's Dancer Slides video. That's just frightening. Yeah, we, we, we've, we've kind of let that slip a little bit, I've got to be honest. But anyway, he's joined this band. They're called uh, Fujia and Miyagi. Slightly difficult to pronounce. But uh, anyway, this is a track that I think has been getting some play by uh, Nick Luscombe and John Kennedy on XFM. They've got a gig this week at the pool on Curtain Road. Uh, that's 18th of April, Thursday. Uh, let's play it. Can I just I've got a fridge freezer for sale? 400 <laughs> quid or nearest offer. <laughs> for Gia and Miyagi, performing live uh, Thursday the 18th of April uh, at The Pool on Curtain Road. Admission is free, Rick, so you'll, I imagine you'll be heading down there. <laughs> yeah, I will. <laughs> well, I've enjoyed this show. Yeah, it's been a good one. It's great. It's been great. Carl, any more? I'll tell that story that you were telling me about your dad when he was driving. Well, it's just that you were talking about... Well, I, I mentioned Forrest Gump. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, the Forrest Gump types. When my dad was a, uh, when he was a taxi driver. Yeah. You used to have to, uh, sort of do, y do your bit for the local area. Oh, God. By taking the, uh, the yeah. Forrest, the Forrest yeah. Gump yeah. people to, to Blackpool. Yeah. Is that what they're called now, the Forrest Gump people? <laughs> <laughs> Is that what the, uh, the organisations that support them are? <laughs> <laughs> for them to be referred to a like mini bus with exactly. um, uh, life is a box of chocolates. Yeah, exactly. Well, oh, right. scum type. Uh, it yeah. must be, so you work with these people. It these was, pe yeah, yeah, like, yeah. The people with learning difficulties. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and they used to get fired. Coming home must have been a busman's holiday. <laughs> 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 so he got five of them in the uh, in the cab. Yeah. And he had to go to Blackpool, and four of them were really good. You know, behaving themselves, didn't mess about, weren't fighting and stuff. But there was one. It was just causing loads of trouble and he couldn't control him. Oh and what you've got to be able to do with people like that, you don't want them to get stressed out because it's, it's not good for them. It stresses them out and, and you could end up with a bit Thanks, of- Thanks, Dr. Carl. <laughs> you could end up with a bit of a riot on your hands. <laughs> so, so he thought, I'll nip this one in the bud right now. And he pulled up just on the outskirts of Blackpool and um, he took the one out that was causing problems and put it in a wheelie bin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologise. He oh, did what? Oh, He God. did it for the good of the others. He put oh. it in a wheelie bin. He was having a good time. He thought it was one of the rides. <laughs> Could you stop saying it? <laughs> Him. Yeah. He, he, you know, he was having a good time, and and he once he calmed down, my dad went back and picked him <laughs> up, and it, it was fine. He had a good. What? Time. He left him in there the whole time the others were in Blackpool. No, he left him there not not the whole day, probably about an hour and a half. <laughs> in a wheelie bin. In a wheelie bin. Why couldn't he get out? Because like his arms were trapped on the thing. Some of those one. <laughs> what he tied him thing. up? No, do you know like when because he was a big fella, and like he managed to get him in so his arms were down the side like that. So it was he was a bit trapped. Wasn't and he screaming and crying and stuff? He was making a bit of no noise, but it, do you know what I mean? What you feel so <laughs> right? <laughs> well, but anyway, that's I didn't really want to talk about it. You just brought it up because of Forrest Gump. Did, did you did do his you know family know about this? Is this the first time he, they'd have he, heard about this? He didn't get asked to do it again. Because <laughs> yeah. he had another he had another problem similar to it where he had a, a little minibus <laughs> and it was his job to take a load of old women to the bingo hall and yeah. it was miles away and um, he took him there. There was no problem. About about ten old women in a in a minibus. One of them was causing trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so he pulled over. 
<laughs> no, right, so he took him there, uh, everything's fine, he dropped him off, they had a lovely night, yeah. right, they had a lovely night, won a bit of cash, coming back, it's a bit of a late night, and they all started moaning at him, going, I wanna be dropped off here, take me there, I wanna be dropped off first, I've gotta get up early, blah blah, you know, my husband's expecting me, I'm already late, take me here first, take me there, and he just pulled up, <laughs> in the middle of nowhere, to get out. <laughs> and uh, he made them get out, and they all called for taxis. <laughs> they charged that company who was meant to be taking them home in the minibus, and he got the sack. Gee. Well, a similar sort of story. You can't be dealing with it when people don't sort of just calm down and like solve the situation. Yeah. They're just all like, I don't want to be to dropped off first, take me here first, don't you? Yeah, so he acts like a madman. <laughs> 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 good. Oh, that was all right, great. We've got, uh, we've got to crack on, haven't we, really? We've got Says uh, so much. Yeah. Yes, uh, Nick Drake, a song for the ladies this week from the album Brighter Later at the time of a city clock. That's Goodbye. it. Yeah. Goodbye. See you next time. Bye.